So as you may be aware, this is a sequel series to 17776. What the future of football, or what football in the future will look like. Um, by John Boyce. And yeah, let's, let's get into it. Chapter 1, Atlanta, Georgia. In these certain times, the people of Georgia didn't need, don't need much of anything from their public servants. My name is Joshua Alexander, um, and I'm running for state governor. You know, I grew up on a farm outside of Dalton, and maybe it's just my simple country upbringing, but I don't believe much in politics. I don't have a political platform of any kind. I have no agenda. Leave it to a country boy like me to lay it out straight, I suppose. I want to be governor just to be governor. I can't even explain to you where this impulse comes from. I possess the personal and political convictions of a boulder tumbling down the mountain. That is how I will govern. I will be honoured to have your vote in November. I am jo Joshua Alexander and I approve this message. You're listening to New 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 News Talk 680, Atlanta's most trusted news source. I think I've my I'm I think I might vote this time round for this guy Alexander or whoever. Oh, I don't know. I just want the sticker they give you. You can just buy the stickers online. Oh well, fuck it. I'll just do that. This is a public service announcement. Hello, I am Connor O'Malley, Georgia Tech quarterback, and I'm Susie At At <laughs> Atchinson, Georgia State quarterback. You may think it's a little funny that we're on the same ad together. The Yellow Jackets and Panthers have found ourselves in quite a few dogfights over the years. But you know, Connor, sometimes it's important that we all work together. That's right, Susie. Here in Georgia, tech and state rely on our fans to stay vigilant. It's no secret that football in this state is bigger than ever. Tech has several footballs, and so does Georgia State. And if we're going to bring even more footballs home to Georgia, we're going to need to protect the footballs we've already got. As a matter of policy, we hide our footballs in locations we keep confidential, and teams throughout the country are pulling out all the stops to find them. And as a fan, that's where you come in. If you see a player on the field that you don't recognize, call our tip line at 404 Tech State Fans. Together, we can keep football alive and well in the state of Georgia. Help us protect the rock. San Diego State, location Georgia State plus 6,769 yard line. What have I been saying? Remember when I said when we saw the scoreboard beep last week, I was like, Tech got another football. I mean, I'm not going to try to talk you off it. Yeah. And then now we got them running ads telling people to be on the lookout. I'm putting it at one week, man. Sometime about a one a, a week from now, they're gonna come right through here with a football, and we gotta be we gotta sit right here when they do, looking right out this window. Man, you just just don't get all pissed off if nothing happens. I know. Yeah. See, every time you're like, I know, and nothing, and then nothing fucking happens, and then I gotta spend the next month living in this apartment with you, all pissed off like Oscar the Grouch. You know, I need us to be Bert and Bert. Yeah. Fuck Ernie, you know? No Ernie's on this fucking team. I want to eat. I got you, Manny. All right, man. It's like one. I'm going to bed. You watch close, though. Thought you said a week from now. Yeah, but I'm fucking... I'm wrong fucking constantly. Eyes north. Night. Night. News Talk 680... Atlanta. I'm Kay Levere, <laughs> coming up on 1 a.m. local time at Hartsfield Airport. 77 degrees and clear skies. A man is recovering his doctor uh, home after being bored Tuesday. Police say R Richard Diaz was waiting for his pickup order at an area cracker barrel when the battery on his phone died. Diaz spoke about the incident to News Talk 680. I got to the Cracker Barrel a little early, and they said it would be a few minutes, so I played the game, and I got on my phone where you, 
where you're a waitress lady and you have to serve a bunch of pancakes before your customers get mad and leave. It's kind of sarcastic when you think about it, or ironic, or whatever the word is. So I was playing that, but then my phone died. And then I remembered I left my charger in my wife's car, so I couldn't charge it. So I went in and asked if my food was ready, and they were waiting on a, a new batch of fries to come out the fryer. But then they'd be extra hot and crispy when they were done. So I said, well, that's all well and good, but can I borrow a phone charger? But they said they didn't have the right kind of charger for my phone. So then I said, well, could I sit at one of y'all's tables and play one of the games y'all have on the tables? And they said the dining uh, oh, was... Well, they said the dining uh, was for dine-in customers only. So I said, well, can you all bring one outside so I can just play it in my truck for a few minutes? So they did, but they gave me the triangle peg game where you where you got to make the pegs jump over each other. And I'd already played that one a million times. I was hoping that they'd give me the Towers of Hanoi game or one of their other games. But the peg game was all they had. So I started to play it anyways. But pretty soon I just realised that I wasn't even trying to beat this game. I was just moving the pegs around in different halls. I wasn't even following the rules, really. Then that's when I started to feel bored. Diaz says, Diaz says that's when he alerted the restaurant employees who dialed 911. The police came pretty fast. One of them gave me a book about the ants. That was pretty cool. How they all worked together to build their hills and stuff. Before I knew it, my fries were done, and I went. So I went in and picked up my fries, and then I went home. And my wife and me ate the fries that I got at the Cracker Barrel. They were really good. Some other places tried to do all kinds of fancy things to their fries, but Cracker Barrel just makes regular fries the way they ought to be, ought to be made. And my wife and me like them a lot. Money, money. Yep, yeah, uh, yep. What? <laughs> Could you turn that down there? Yeah, I'll just cut it off. You don't have to cut it off. Nah, I'm not really listening anyways. Thanks. Night. Night. Cracker Barrel issued a statement offering condolences for Diaz and promising to reevaluate its policies regarding dine-in seating for pickup customers. Today, Diaz's neighbours stopped by his home to leave flowers and a note of support in his mailbox. Diaz is expected to... Bzzzt. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 click. <sighs> <sighs> Status report? Pioneer 10, NASA, launched 1972. Pioneer 10 instrument monitor, imaging photopolymer, okay. Helium vector magnometer, okay. Infrared and ideometer, okay. Quadrospherical plasma analyzer, okay. Ultraviolet photometer, okay. Charged particle instrument, okay. Cosmic ray telescope, okay. Gearget tube telescope, okay. Sisyphus asteroid minero uh, meteoroid detector, okay. Meteoroid detectors, okay. Trapped radiation detector, okay. Okay. Nine? Nine, wake up. <laughs> Pioneer nine, this is your big sister, wake up. No, you're not. You're, you're my little sister. Okay. I'm going to check in on you in five minutes. You better be up. Mm. Five minutes. God, okay. Pioneer 9. NASA. Launch 1968. Oh, before I go to bed, we still doing a food run tomorrow? Yeah, I'm down. We gotta go over to the one in uh, Kennesaw, though. We do? Yeah, because remember last time I went to the Sunny Springs one, they remodeled their produce department. Most of the veggies aren't on the field anymore. Well, what do they have anyway, again? Well, what do they have again? Well, you know how the field cuts through the parking lot and then through the uh, then the front en entrance and then kind of goes diagonal through the left side of the store, right? They still have the little stands outside by the front doors, like tomatoes and with like with tomatoes and everything. But once you go in, the produce isn't on the left anymore. They moved it, so it's more in the middle. So you can't reach most of it. But what do they have though? If you're lucky, they, you can reach over the sideline to get a couple of avocados. No chance of bananas, though. The only stuff that's actually on the field is the one little island cart thing. What do you call those little things? Islands? I don't know. Isles? What? Are you saying isles or isles? Isles. Spell it. Isles with an A. Nah, because isles are the empty space you walk through. The shelves and displays and stuff, you know, what defines the isles? You know? Just go to bed already. Anyways, the only island thing that's any all the way 
on the field is that shitty fruit one. None of the good stuff. None of the gun fruit. Just plums and shit like that. I kind of like plums. Plums are trash. I'm not going to spend the next month eating plums. Alright, well, whatever. We'll go to Kennesaw. But not the fancy one. We gotta go to the one with the actual regular frozen pizzas. The only ones that in the fancy store has... Uh, are called like Nature's Valley or something. They're like these tiny artichoke pizzas that cost like nine bucks. Fucking sucks. You can't even get a party pizza. What the fuck is a Nature's Valley? It's like, yeah, every valley is a Nature's Valley, dumbass. Coach is gonna ask why you're asleep at noon tomorrow. I'm gonna have to tell her you were up screaming about frozen pizzas to nobody. Not nobody, I'm talking to you. Well, I'm not listening anymore, so not really, no. To be continued, I'm sure. Night. Love you. Love you. Boo! Fuck. You made me spill my goddamn spaghetti. Juicy icy mo Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer. ESA launch 2022. What spaghetti? The pretend spaghetti I was pretending to enjoy while watching the football game. I don't understand how one would spill spaghetti. Did you even, did you bother to imagine yourself a table? No. So what, you were standing there holding a plate of spaghetti? None of your business. It would have buckled a fucking seatbelt to eat my spaghetti if I knew you were going to sneak up on me like that. Oh, uh, I missed you, Jay. Yeah, you too, lady. Jesus, look at the date. Yeah, you slept in. I did. I needed it. Where's nine? Just woke them up. Should be on soon. Think they'll be mad when they look at the calendar? Hope not. The two of us might have, have to talk about it, but I think nine will be okay. What are you watching? The game. Which game? The game. Listen, this is a very confusing thing to just walk in the middle of, and I recognize that. This is Atlanta I'm looking at? Yep. Okay. And who are these guys? Okay, so we got Nick and Manny, right? Nick just went to bed. Manny staring out the window on lookout duty. They're in their free safety is trying to make play on a ball. They've been living in this condo for about 30 years, just watching out the window, waiting for a ball carrier to come through on the Georgia Tech field. See, because they have to stay in the field, right? If they step off the field for too long, they'll get kicked out of the game for good. So they found a place near the top floor with some real good vantage points. Thing is, though, life ain't so easy on the field. Only part of their condo building goes through the state, Georgia Tate State field nearby. Look it. Their place is up on the northeast corner of the building, which is on the field. But they can't use the elevator because that's in the part of the building that's not on the field. They've got to use the emergency stairwell every time. And I mean, they can use one of those tennis courts you see there, but only the one on the left. That makes for some weird situations. Sometimes they'll go down there to play, and people will be playing on that one, but the rest are free. So of course people are like, why do you want to play on this one? Why don't you take one of the other ones? Now you and I, and they know, they can't use those courts because they're not on the field. But Nick and Manny are undercover, so can't let anyone know. Can't even use the community swimming pool either. Sucks. Guess that's uh, neither here nor there though. I'm sorry. So they can never leave the field for anything? I mean, yeah, they can do whatever they want, free country, but if they step off the field for too long, they get kicked out of the game for life. Some players actually do that too. They're like, fuck this, I've had enough of this stupid shit, and just leave. Not Nick and Manny, though. A couple of special dudes right there. I gotta say, I had my doubts about them at first, but can you imagine a married couple who can almost never leave their house? I'd lose it. They can leave their home, though, can't they? The field looks like it goes a long way. It does, but I mean, this is Metro Atlanta. Here, look, I'll draw up this, uh, draw this up for you. Number one, that's where Nick and Manny live. Two, you can see wh how the field sort of runs along the city, the city street, but only a couple of blocks. There's a drugstore and a couple of other shops where they can buy stuff, but that's about it. Three, where it, is where it goes to hell. You got to sneak through people's yards and around their houses to get through. Then you got to cross the highway on foot without anyone thinking you're a weirdo. Whew. Yeah. And I mean, all the grey area lender is like this. Once you get to Cobb County, Roswell, those places, it's nothing but curvy roads and houses you've got to fight 
and houses. You got to find your way around, but got to do a whole lot of a whole bunch of planning and timing to even go to the grocery store. I wish they would let me redesign their city grid. I know you know how they are about that though. Still no movement on that. Nah, they've got their little pigsty. I'll never get that about them. Anyways, this is a game between Georgia Tech and Georgia State. I mean, in a manner of speaking, yeah. How long has it been going on? Oh, a long time. Is it? I mean, is it a good game? Well, I mean, there's a that's a pretty complicated question. I reckon you and me could definitely answer it. I would answer it differently. <laughs> oh fuck! No fucking way, wait, Nick. Wait, hold up. This is money, right? Yeah. Look out there. Look out there. Look, look, Nick. Get out here. What? Get out here. Look. Okay, what are we looking at? Yeah, I'm coming. Christ, tech player crossing I-85. Looks like she's got the ball. She has a ball. Yes. A ball. There's more than one football in this game. Yeah. Listen, I'll explain in a minute. We've seen them play so many multiplayer multi-ball games. It's just so hard to design a smart one. Man, you picked up a hell of a time to wake up. This is the craziest shit I've seen in months. You gotta fill me in. I don't really understand what I'm looking at. Looks like she's got a ball. I fucking told you. What I fucking tell you? Hold up, I will in a bit. Promise. You said next week. Close, close enough. Look, you stay here. I'm looking south through the bedroom window. Look, let me know everything you see. Yep. Hey, your binoculars are on the, uh, the thing. What thing? The thing. The fucking uh, the dresser. No. The the what? Use your word. Couch, coffee table, dish drawer, end table. Yeah, end table. Thank you. You wouldn't even have to ask me if you put them in the same place every time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that's a little uncalled for. The one giving him a hard time is Nick, right? Yep. Kind of interesting re relationship dynamic between those two. To be honest with you, I've never seen a happier couple. They just get in their little things sometimes. I honestly think since they've got such a solid foundation to their relationship, they could they actually have the time and energy left over to argue about the little things. But and I mean, remember, Nick and Manny have been sharing this apartment for thirty years, and it is by no means a big condo. To call it a two bedroom is gen genuine, uh, generous. It's really just one bedroom and a glorified little office room. I bet your husband's quirks stand out a lot more. But uh, the little things that that irritate you will get all that much more annoying after a while. Oh, and just one bathroom too? That isn't great. Can't be, no. Man, I love football. I think every relationship has to have at least some of that, though. It's like, it's kind of a, like a clutch in a transmission, right? It has to be rough, so it has something that it can actually grip onto. That friction is the only way anything changes. She's coming your way soon, I think, Manny. That analogy sucks. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Well, I mean, that's us, right? That's our relationship. I think a third of my interaction with you is accounted for by arguing. We aren't married, though, lady. Oh, oh and thank God for that. I see her. I got, her, got eyes on her. She is off the interstate now. Damn, she is moving, too. Who is it? I don't know. Can't really tell who is it. Who is it's from? For who it is from here? Got to be a tech player though, for sure. So just so I have everything straight, Nick and Manny are trying to get the football from Georgia Tech, and Georgia Tech doesn't know they're nearby. Yep, they're right there. They outnumber her two to one. Why haven't they left the house? Well, they're pretty sure that there are more tech players in the area, and they're right about that. See, this is some top secret shit they're looking at. Tech has possession of a lot of footballs. Nine, in fact. Nine? Hello. Nine! Hey, uh, hey, sis. What year is it? We'll talk about that after the game, okay? I don't think that's a discussion. I think you just have to say what year it is. Wait, where'd she go? Just look behind those trees. Just behind those trees, look. Okay, yeah. Jay, there are nine footballs? Yeah, Tech has nine footballs. And what you generally do, or at least what I do, is hide them all in different places. Gotta diversify, you know. If they're all in one place, someone can come along and take your whole shit at once. Tech isn't doing what I would do, though. They've got way too cocky. Every single one of them is right... Here. It's on the Georgia Tech campus, right between Bobby Dodd Stadium and the basketball arena. Granted, 
it really is a good place to store a football if you've got one. Both the stadium and the arena are pretty tough obstacles. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Run across a basketball court in the middle of a game? Or break in hour after hours? They got security guards and shit. And of course, if you're a good climber, you can just climb over the damn thing. But think about that. You're easily spotted, so if you are, you're bothering, you be you better be pretty damn sure it's worth it. And I think they're about to find out that yes, it's very worth it. I take it that nine footballs is a lot. Yep, took forever to get. Way too many to risk putting in one spot. Shit, she just went inside. Yeah, the old sorority house, right? Whatever one is with the dormer, dormer windows. What the fuck are dormer windows? The little windows. The little dudes that stick out of the attic. Is that actually their hiding spot? Do you want me to spoil it? No. Yeah. Yes, it is. Damn it, I said no. Well, you haven't even begun to get mad at me. Trust me on that. Uh-oh. Look, look. The lights just went on. Oh, man, they turned on the lights. Oh, come on. I swear to God, Georgia Tech hasn't gotten this sloppy in recent years. Oh my God, they're getting so sloppy. <laughs> they might be trying to fake us out, maybe. Haha, <laughs> what did I just say? Can they hear us or something? No, we've just spent all time. We've just all spent a lot of time scouting out this team, and there's no other conclusion to draw. This team has been winning so long that they're not even ex executing fundamentals anymore. Like. If you have a safe house, you do not flip on the lights in the middle of the night. I don't care how safe you think you are. Might as well set off fire crackers. Dopes. I think we ought to start packing. We might need to make a play soon. Jesus, we might actually be about to do this. I mean, who's going to feed Clancy? Carol might. Oh yeah, I can knock on her door tomorrow if we need. Who's Clancy? They're fish. Ah. Uh, I bet having a, kind of, a fish is kind of nice, you know? It's over there, doing its thing, you don't have to do much. Barely even have to think about it, but you always know it's there. It's what I imagine having a favourite baseball team would be like. <laughs> She's coming back out. No, that's someone else, I think. Oh shit, they're all coming out. They're like, all coming out? I'm counting like six, eight? No, that's ten, ten players, what the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. Stupid fucking team, lol. Get the map, because I think everybody, uh, that might be everybody, man. Yeah, hold up. I think she was just making a drop-off. I don't know if they're even going to guard it. Where are they all going? Up north, to Tennessee, I bet. There's an offensive moving around up there with a ball and only a couple dozen players. Tech already has about 20 defenders up there. They're just sending these folks for reinforcements. So this is how you get a football. You go find an offense that's advancing up the line, uh, advancing and line up against them. Yeah, it works the same way as conventional football. Four downs, ten yards for a first down, all that. Tech's defense can get the ball if they force a turnover on downs or fumble or an interception. This is the way. This is way too aggressive, though. They'll be leaving the barn door open here because now they have no one defending their stash. And Nick and Manny are allowed to just go there and take the balls? Yep, they're loose balls. So listen, this is what they're going to do. This is what they're doing here. Every team has 125 players, right? According to the old college football rules, you get 125 players. You don't really have in any way to know for sure where your opponent's players are, but you can make good guesses based on what you've seen, what your teammates have seen, and what other people have seen, news stories, whatever. But if they, they can account for the location of all 125 players, they can deduce that there's nobody fucking home. Okay, this is what we got. Field guide, Georgia Tech. Distance, 1,900,332,187 yards, 1,101 miles. Minimum elevation, 128 feet. Maximum elevation, 2,802 feet. Intersections, 30. We know that we know Tech has at least 20 players up in Tennessee, right around the 200,000 yard mark. Uh, they're actually in North Georgia, but close enough. Then all Kentu all across T Kentucky, they have a, a 50 minimum. Coach says said that they have one confirmed group of 30 players near Lexington, and then another team of at least 20 in Danville. 
more or less accurate. They've got 25 near Lexton and 25 more in Danville. So that gets us up to 70 players accounted for minimum, probably close to 80. Then there's the story from the Detroit play paper. What story? I sent it to you. You send me like 20 things a day. Well, though, they were saying that Tech has a bunch of little teams in Michigan. They're breaking up in groups of five and they're just f like fanning out all over. They were reporting 40 in total. Do you trust it? It's a good paper, yeah. Shit, they said 40? They said at least 40 for sure. Maybe more. That gets us to 125. Easy. There it is. They figured them out. Here, double check it for me. Look, 10 we just saw, plus 20, plus at least 30, plus at least 20, plus at least 40. That accounts for 120 min guaranteed minimum. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's not a guarantee. No, yeah, I know. We've been here since 91, Nick. Come on, you'll see it. I mean, this might be the only chance we ever get. I bet this is the only fucking chance we ever get. Fuck. Go, 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 this is your shot, fellas. No time, but the present. I thought you said the, the saying was no time like the present. I know what I said. Okay, we gotta go. Hell yeah! Okay, I'll leave a message with the HOA. Let them know we're terminating the lease. Can you talk to Carol? I hate to wake her up. We can just leave a message on the road. All right, I'll get our bags ready too. See, this is the shit I like to see. I still can't tell what's going on here. Could you give me some idea of how excited I'm supposed to be? Scale of 1 to 10. Well, strictly from a gameplay's perspective, this isn't the craziest thing that ever happened. But it is pretty major. Nick and Manny don't even know how major it is yet. They think they're about to go get one football. They have no idea they're about to get nine balls. That would be the biggest turnover in years. And typically, when there's a large turnover like this, uh, it's because some legion of like 50 players bum rushed an oppo opponent. Yeah, yeah, sleeping bags would uh, should be in there already. Water, trail mix, phones, charging blocks. Your phone charged? No, it's like 40%. You gotta plug it in when you're not using it. God, man, he never charges his phone. It's fine, it's fine. It'll be good in like an hour. We should leave in like... It's one thirty now. We should be out of the house by 3. 3.30 latest. Can you make us some coffee? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let's just sit over and sit and go over the plan, play real quick. Real quick, Gotta, we gotta hurry. Anyways, for just two players to recover nine footballs is real crazy. So at the moment, if they could just get these balls in the first place, I'd rate it at like a seven. Yeah, you should calibrate your excitement to seven out of 10. I'll put it at four because I don't judge, trust your judgment. I'll take it four. However, getting the footballs is only the first step. There's a long ass way to go. But if money could actually pull this whole thing up, off, I'd put it at like a 9.5. Basically an unprecedented event. If they can get nine footballs all the way home, it's gonna fuck up the entire nature of the game. The balance of power would change throughout college football. That's big if though. That's a big if though. Being frank uh, with you, I don't think they can do it. Can we stop now? Are we at a stopping point? Let me see. Okay, listen. Coach drew us up, drew up some stuff for us, but none of them are accounted for. None of them accounted for tech leaving an empty net. We don't have to transfer to the George State field. I think we can stay on the tech field. You sure? Oh wow, I'm becoming bored very quickly. Yeah, because look, they're all heading north. We can just scoop the ball, sneak behind them for a while, and stay quiet. They're not gonna know. And you know what? I bet they're gonna go. They're going all the way up to Tennessee, even tech. Ten, uh, Kentucky maybe that'll give us a lot of places to transfer as long as they don't turn around bored good luck fellas, smell you later which I mean they bzzzed. can someone please tell me what year it is in a minute sis, that's something we'll talk about first, this game, tell me everything teams, rules, scoring all of it, okay let me clean up my spaghetti I spilled when I was so rudely interrupted your pretend spaghetti yes, have you seen the broom? You don't clean up spaghetti with a broom, lol. Well, why the fuck not? You can't clean up wet stuff with a broom. It's gonna get all nasty. You go over to Juice's house and he's like vacuuming his front lawn and Juice is like, time to do the dishes, goes to get his fucking rake. Lol. Fuck, this fuck. Y'all, y'all, you wanna hear about this game and, or not? Yes, finally. Okay, listen. 
Before I go into this, I just want to say, I didn't design this game by myself. It's not all my fault, okay? You're not exactly selling me. Well, uh, welcome to College Football Saturday. I would like to speak on two things, football and Lunchables Pizza. First, football. What you're about to see is a modern college game. I helped design it. Before, oh my god, let me increase the resolution here. Because this is, uh, oh, should be better than this. Okay, I'll preload a little bit. Before we begin, do you promise not to get mad at me? No. Figured not. Here's Georgia Tech's for field. It's 53 yards wide, as usual. But it's a little bit longer. It goes over the wall, into the stands, through the concourse, and out of Georgia Tech's, Tech's campus. All this is part of the field as well. Eventually, it makes its way back to it. It makes its way to Atlanta's Centennial Park, where it runs into the other field. And this is the field that belongs to Georgia State. At the start of this game, both teams have a football. The object of this game is to take the other team's football. These two schools do not like each other, and holy hell do they go at it. So, what what it looks like when both teams have a ball? Well. Maybe this player hangs back to defend, or maybe she runs past route, past the trees, so her QB can bomb it. Strategically, it's very interesting. Alternately, Georgia Tech may prefer to, stay, to play it safe and stay home, or get aggressive and drive the ball through a damn office building. There are lots of options, because this field is very long. Very long. It goes through the buildings, rivers, forests, farms, you name it. Oof, a quarry. Huge pain in the ass here. Well, hell, I wasn't the one who built the stadium at that angle. Gotta take it up with Bobby Dodd. Anyways, this field won't stop until it hits the ocean. But you know what? I realized uh, this game needed... A third team with a third field. Here, let me get the lights. See, now we got a triangle. You can loop, and a defense might be back ahead, be ahead of you, or maybe behind you. So that can be pretty interesting as well. Now this team comes from way up north. See, the reason Prude's field can intersect uh, is that their stadium isn't perfectly north-south. Why did they build it that way in 1900 and whatever? Who cares? We got us a ball game. These three fields are a combined 6,139,649 yards. That's about 3,500 miles. Why do you think we'd be mad? This seems kind of cool. I will say I can't quite figure it out thematically. I guess Georgia Tech versus Georgia State, but what does Purdue have to do anything? Um, nothing really. Oh no. See, I've I've been kind of ro been slow rolling you. How many teams are in this game? Spit it out. Just spit it out. In total, there are 11. 111. Oh, God, damn it. 111 teams, 111 footballs, 111 fields. This is a gigantic football game. What is wrong with you? I find it useful to remember that I'm French. How long have the people been playing this fucking game? Thousands of years. What have you done? There's no way this game could actually work. Hmm? Oh no, it doesn't work. At all. It's an absolute disaster of a football game. It's horrible. It's gorgeous. Wait, you said thousands of years. What year is it? 20k20. Starring Pioneer 9. Starring Pioneer 10. Starring Juicy Icy Mo Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer. Juice. Oh yeah. Moving on to the second portion of my lecture, I'd like to speak the virtues of Lunchables Pizza as well as the shortcomings that led to its discontinuation. In the 1990s, Lunchables were a popular option for school children seeking agency in their lunchtime meal, while cafeteria food, food typically came from... Oh no, damn it! 
Okay. Okay. In the 1990s, lunch balls were a popular option for school children seeking agency in their lunchtime meal, while cafeteria food typically came as it came. Lunchables offered virtually endless permutations of food. With Lunchables Pizza, this frontier was explored further via... Holy shit! Shut up! Shut up! Sorry. Fantastic. Oh, apparently that... Can I hit escape? Am I just trapped in... Oh no, it's a scroll, yeah. <laughs> story, story continues Wednesday. So tomorrow, we'll go on to chapter 2. Welcome back to chapter 2 of uh, 20k20. I'm your host, Orange. Um, w Welcome to... Uh, yeah, welcome to chapter 2. Let's go through. I was annoyed with you. I wouldn't say I was mad, just annoyed. You know how much I love football, and how much I love invention. I can even appreciate the occasional chaotic element, but any game of considerable size, especially this size, has to be smartly built. But you have to think of the audience. Um, especially the players. Well, nobody's making them play this. They like what they like. I know, I know. Listen, I'm not taking that away from them, and it's clear how much this means to you. I felt bad about reacting the way I did. So I figured I'd take the rest of the night off, look at the stars for a while, watch the sunrise. Problem was, I, I'd only come, ba come out of hibernation a few hours, for a few hours, and my quantum channel hadn't fully come back online yet. So this morning, I just watched it from out there, out here. From out there? Uh, you're cruising at 7 miles a second, right? 7.6 miles per second, yes. You've been out there for like 18,000 years, so that would put you... Four trillion miles from the sun? Yeah. Um, <laughs> four trillion, three hundred and ninety-nine billion, six hundred and ninety-six million, five thousand and eighty-seven miles. Now it's four billion, four trillion, three hundred ninety-nine billion, six, nine, six hundred and ninety-six million, five thousand eight hundred and forty-nine. Now it's four trillion, three hundred ninety-nine billion, six hundred and ninety-six million, five thousand eighty-nine. Now it's four trillion three hundred ninety six billion six hundred ninety six million five thousand nine hundred thirty three. Now it's four trillion three hundred ninety six billion six hundred ninety six million five thousand nine five thousand nine hundred seventy five. Now it's four trillion three hundred ninety nine billion six hundred ninety six million six thousand twenty two. Now it's four trillion three hundred ninety nine million. A billion six hundred ninety-six million six thousand and sixty-two. Now it's low quit, quit it. You know I hate it when you do that. I know you do. Remember when you did that for a month straight? That would have been in the ninety-fourth century, I think, March of nine nine thousand three hundred and three. You want to see the sunrise I saw this morning? Ah, fuck. Being you sucks. Well, this is the price of being 4.4 trillion miles away from your stupid ass. Fair deal, if you ask me. That's no way to talk to a, to the buddy who was nice enough to record the sunrise for you this morning. You didn't. I did. I figured you wouldn't be fully online yet. It's from your favorite spot, too. Oh my god, Husky Stadium. Look at that. This is my first real sunrise in 2,000 years. Thank you. Hope you don't mind. I forgot to re remove the field overlay. No, no, it's okay. Look at... Wow, it goes across Union Bay and then up the mountains. Oh, did you give Nine the re reorientation exam? Yeah, they're taking it now. I mean, Nine clearly seemed to have had their bearings, but I figured it out. I figured it was, it was a good idea just to make sure... Looks like they're acting it so far. Section 4. Essay Questions. All answers are required. In broad terms, please describe the period of human history between the years 2026 and 220. All answers are required. In 2026, for reasons that are still not understood, human beings stopped aging, stopped becoming ill, and stopped being born. 
Thereafter, advanced nanotechnology was developed that protected all human life on Earth from physical harm, effectively rendering humans immortal beings. This led to post caste societies in which physical, political, and economic conflict effectively vanished. Human ab uh, ambitions then shifted to, uh, to, to ter territorial expansion and technological advances. In the former case, it quickly became apparent that extraterrestrial exploration was in unfeasible, infeasible. Light speed travel was impossible, and outer space offered little to nothing of interest to human beings. In the latter case, humans found that their present technologies were entirely sufficient. Further advances were seen as best, at best unnecessary, and at worst erosive of their culture and lifestyles. Gradually, humans accepted the fate of eternal recreation and uh, recreation, and now identify as creatures of play whose entire purpose is to enjoy themselves. Themselvies. Themselvies. <laughs> themselves. Is that right? I don't think there is an E. Okay, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Often via sports and games. Thank you. Okay. Uh, your answer is very much appreciated. Hope you're doing well. Juice, did you write the te this test? I know this is you. Okay, bye. Bye. Hello again. This is the test speaking. Fuck you, man. Would you like to be friends with me? <laughs> it is very lonely being a test. The essay question in the cl is the closest I've ever gotten to a conversation. Please don't go. Save me. I love you. Ass, 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 you fuck, ass, fuck, ass. Oh, what the fuck? I already wrote us a perfectly good exam. You just have to fuck around at every opportunity, every single opportunity. I'm happy to apologize every time I do something like this, but you know, uh, but know that I don't plan to reflect on my actions or change my behavior in any way. I'm just gonna say I'm sorry and then keep doing the same shit. Cool? Cool? Not cool? No, not cool. <laughs> That wasn't the question. I was just remarking that it's cool that I'm like this. Okay, you owe me another pretty sight now. Yeah, okay. We don't even have to leave the neighborhood. Here's the wazoo field running past Mount uh, Le uh, Reno. Nice. I can't deny that, it, that's, that it's a beautiful field. I'd love to be able to look at this and l like it. So you know what? Sell me on this game. Take your best shot. Okay, I've spent centuries trying to figure out how to talk to you about this, so pardon me if I'm a little nervous. I'm not an intimidating person, unless good taste intimidates you. It does. That's the fucking problem here. Ha. Okay, when we drew out the blueprints for the field, the rules we followed were extremely simple. These were more or less the rules they followed when they developed game 96249. Oh boy. Uh, okay, that's, ooh, <gasps> okay, huh, it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, I know what they've done, they've linked it wrong, I think that should be here. No? Oh, they've broken something, haven't they? Okay, getting back to it. No, that game was artless crap, and its rules had nothing to say about anything, I loved it. But this, upon the side of it, Satan himself flees in terror to the comfort of his sim simple pentagram. College football is back, baby. Whew. We built this horror not by breaking the rules, but by following them, simply following the lines they painted so faithfully. It's resulted in a field that stretches a combined 236,463,206 yards. That's longer than 130,000 miles. The amount of land it claims is more than double the size of, size of Delaware. R.I.P. to R.I.P. to Delaware, by the way. We, we don't say that enough. I thought your pet theory was that Delaware never existed. It was for a long time, but then, after 17,000 years, I finally talked to someone who'd actually been there. My new theory is that Maine never existed. Now, even for a glorified computer like me, it doesn't quite make sense. To, like makes sense to me that it claims 4,000 square miles. Look at this these stringy little fellas. How could it possibly? That's Virginia's field, right? Yeah. And you say the field stops at the ocean? I'm guessing it doesn't include the underwater territories. Right, yeah. So it's it stops right after the crosses in North, into North Carolina. 
and of course none of the water underwater states are in play for any field. This leads me to the elements that led to the creation of this field. See, if people planned everything centrally and acted monolithically, you'd imagined all the, fiel all the fields would be laid out at the same angle, right? They'd probably all face perfectly north-south. None of the fields would intersect with one another, and the game would be impossible to play. Thankfully, people bought their, uh, built their stadiums in all kinds of angles for all kinds of different reasons. I've done my best to distill these reasons into six guiding elements. These are the six conditions and the behaviors that effectively built this field. The sun, one, the sun, two, the earth, three, humankind's appreciation of beauty, four, humankind's desire for order, five, humankind's uh, arv arvice, avarice, six, humankind's disunity, ahem, uh ahem. Uh <laughs> First element, the sun. Now, the most common misconception about the sun is it's a, jo a, a jolly goblin who helpfully pours raisins in your cereal. This is false. <gasps> cereal boxes are responsible for them for a host of misconceptions, but that one might be the most fundamentally wrong. The sun, in fact, influences the orientations of football stadiums more than any other factor. If you ignore the maps and the fields uh, and fields and look only at the stadiums themselves, they at first resemble confetti. Oh. But closer inspection reveals that almost all fields either face some variant of north-south or northwest-southeast. These orientations are optimal if you want to keep the sun from getting in the player's eyes. In particular, northwest-southeast is most effective. Stanford Stadium is a brilliant example of this. If you're a Stanford receiver running at a quarter fade route, to the back of the end zone at 3 p.m. local time in mid-October. This is what you see. The sun is hanging out there above the press box, well out of your field of view. It won't get in your eyes. This is great, because if, player, if pl the player drops the ball, they won't be able to blame the sun, and will likely foist the blame on the quarterback. This creates internal strife, one of my favorite things about football. Here we, um, second element, the climate. Here we see two stadiums. Syracuse's Carrier Dome and Georgia Southern's Paulson Stadium. Both these fields flaunt convention, lying east-west for a very important reason. They don't give a shit. Former State Senator Glenn Byron, uh, who donated the land on which the facility was built, will foot the $350,000 light bill. Mr. Bryan's generosity makes it safe it possible for us to schedule night games early in the season when the heat and humidity are very unpleasant for our fans and players, Georgia Southern President Dr. Nick Henry said. Because obviously, uh, doesn't care. Cuse, Cuse obviously doesn't care about uh, care because they play in a dome. And while I can't confirm this, my guess is that Georgia Southern doesn't care because thanks to the intense humidity, they preferred to schedule night games anyway. Third element. Humankind's appreciation of beauty. We actually already covered this. That beautiful sunrise we watched from Husky Stadium. It's been claimed that Washington laid it out damn near east-west as the result of an engineering study that determined it op offered optimal light sunlight conditions. But I chose to believe a different account, which claims that they just laid it out like that because it looks pretty. I think it's pretty obvious. A fourth element, humankind's desire for order. Get a load of these nerds. Cardinal Stadium feels compelled to adhere to downtown Louis, uh, Louisville's street grid, even though it isn't perfectly north-south. It's order for order's sake. It's following the rule without understanding the intention of the rule, which they can't because there's no clear intention. I think the answer they'd give is, well, we want to sit situate uh, par parallel to the street because it makes the parking lot easier to lay out. Okay, but you're boxed in by three roadways. They're all they're going all kinds of directions. Why that one? Seems like everyone has a different answer for why Louisville's street grid is slanted like this. I've looked at some old maps, and as far as I can tell, it this all started because in the 1970s, some ding dong set up a farm by the river at this angle. What he what was he thinking? I have no idea. 
what it, what he was thinking, I have no idea. Maybe he surveyed poorly. Maybe he correctly concluded that it didn't fucking matter. But thanks to him. Oh. Louisville's field runs to this little bitty island of Michigan, which turned out to be a great spot to hide their footballs. Back when they had them, anyway. They were actually a pretty strong contender at one time. They had four footballs back in the 19,200s. Uh, 19,200s, uh, nine, maybe? I don't know. Um, 920... 19,200s. Nine, 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 of course, they went to shit after that. But fact remains, this field bore witness to a significant chapter in history of the grandest football game ever played all thanks to that ancient doofus and his weird farm. This is beginning to dawn on me. This game is, was unintentionally designed by countless numbers of people. People who had no idea what they were building. People who, like this farmer, had never even heard of American football because it didn't exist yet. Yes. One player once said that, uh, that they were playing on the field of our mothers, and, uh, our mothers and fathers built for us, for better or for worse. Um, of course, which leads us to fifth element, humankind's ar avarice. Okay, test over, I quit. What did I just walk into? Oh hey, Juice is giving a lecture. Goodbye. Wait, 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 it's cool, it's actually oddly fascinating. You too? I thought you hated this game. Oh, uh, I think I still do. Hey, I think I should. I think you showed up just in time, you might want to stick around for this part. You know what, I think I've had enough out of you today. Section 5. Observations. In this section, the test administrator will offer some interesting observations about the world. This section is about him, not you. Please answer with interest and enthusiasm. 1. In my view, basketball should be filled with, a he with heavy whipping cream. Over the course of the game, all, of the, all the dribbling may eventually whip the cream into butter. This will surely make the bas basketball more difficult to dribble. However, the winning team will be awarded with a delicious basketball filled with butter. Pretty neat. Exit program. Listen, mine, I'm sorry. I wrote that a few years after you went to hibernation. I was very, very, very bored, which is actually why I started working on designing this game shortly thereafter. It's probably a good thing that I found a hobby. Jay's explaining why college football fields were built at the angles they were. Sunlight, climate, beauty, adherence to street grids. Fifth one is greed, right? Yep. Can I take a wild guess at where we're going with this one? Shoot. Georgia State. Correct. Okay, let me take this one. I think I got it. Nine. You were launched in 1968. What does your onboard data tell you about Atlanta sports? Hold on. Onboard memory is really slow. Um, all right. As of 1968, Atlanta Stadium was home of uh, home to the Braves and Falcons. Hadn't had a chance to catch up on much since then. A, a few years later, it was renamed Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Um, it was a big, strong stadium that was more far more structurally sound than the Colosseum, Colosseum in Rome, which lasted many centuries as a sports venue. It was perfectly fine. Then the Georgia built dome was built, and the Falcons moved out. And then the Olympics came to town, necessitating another stadium. Those Olympics wrapped up, the Braves moved in, in 1997, and the Atlanta Fulton County Stadium was bulldozed. Today it's a parking lot, with the original field painted over, over it. Fast forward to the 2010s, Georgia State has started a football program, and their team shares the Georgia Dome with the Falcons. Not a bad deal for a state, huh? The Georgia Dome is this great big domed stadium. At about 20 years old, it's one of the newest facilities in all of college football. Yep, all in all, they made off pretty well. But then, behold, a giant butthole. <gasps> no. Wow. Ah! Ha 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 ha! Every single fu time, fucking time, I laugh. Every time, it's an asshole. It's an asshole. A gigantic steel asshole. Anyone who says otherwise is delusional. Man, what I wouldn't give if I had an asshole like that. I would take shits that you would not believe. I would form nebulas. What is that thing? Sometimes I forget how much you haven't caught up on. It's a delight. 
That is Mercedi Benz Stadium, home of the Falcons. Every day, architects went to work, sat down, designed this thing, and thought, I'm not drawing a butthole. Taxpayers read the news and nodded, we are not funding a butthole. Construction workers labored for years, seeing th seething through their gritted teeth, we are not building a butthole. And then, one day, they realized they built a butthole. You know what I always say? Buttholes are like assholes. <laughs> you guys are making this up. This is a stunt. Hand to God. Look it up for yourself. The Georgia Dome, a building that at age 25 was barely older than the college football players who called it home, was demolished. That was n there was nothing wrong with it. The Falcons just got tired of it. Meanwhile, Georgia State suddenly needs a new home. But they're in luck because at about the same time, the Braves do the same thing. From foreground to background, it's like a molding snake. People were broken in the, those times, in terms of purpose and community, and every everything else. They were fractured. Health society does not. A healthy society does not do this. And given eternity, they finally realized it. This is why almost nothing has changed. This is Exhibit A. Over the last 18,000 years, people have almost universally elected to preserve and rebuild what they have, including this the massive sphincter, which stands to this day. And now we arrive at the Kodo, because if you look at, the Turner, at Turner Field again, you'll notice that it's now a football field. When the Braves moved out, Georgia State football moved right in, once again taking refuge in a home of home abandoned for no good reason. Now, I'm sure their general instinct would be to orientate the field perfectly north-south. Why not, right? That's how its neighbor Georgia Tech is set up. But, because they were delivered to hand-me-down baseball stadium, it, did, it didn't quite fit right. They had to skew it, it just a little bit. And this is why, and I think both of you all are going to get a hood out of this, The Georgia State Field runs directly over the rings in Centennial Park, the symbol of the Olympics, the very thing that set all this shit in motion. Almost perfectly centered in the middle of the field too, unbelievable. Oh my god, that's poetic. Well done, bravo. Thanks, but I didn't do it. It wasn't my idea, that's just the way the, the damn thing runs. This is art missing an artist. It is found poetry. If it, weren't written, if it were written, it, it'd be beautifully written. But I'm looking at it right now. It's a straight line. You didn't lie. I didn't have to. We never did. Okay, let me pause this. I thought I'd preloaded it. But... Okay. There's one very important detail that I don't believe you're all you're all aware of yet. See, intersections are crucial. Suppose you're West Virginia and you've received reliable reports that Pitt has a football right here. You got players sitting here at home, if you want. You can head south, cut north on NC A&T's field, and meet him like that. Or you could head down a little further, take Liberty's field, and meet him on the other direction, in the other direction. Or you want, if you want to be sneaky, you can take your time and even head north on your own field, take Maryland southeast, and charge him, charge down on him. You can take a practically endless number of routes depending on what suits you. The average team has a field that intersects dozens of times. Even the Syracuse field, one of the shortest in the game, meets with NCCU's uh, Howard in Buffalo. This brings us to Nick and Manny, who we last saw in Atlanta. They are far away from home. In fact, they play for San Diego State. Their home field sits here along SDCCU Stadium. They were supposed to have a new stadium built for them, but plans fell through. They've stayed here ever since. Want to know how many intersections they have? Zero. What? The field runs into the US-Mexico border, just five miles away from Boy State Field. They surveyed it again and again, hoping, 
every time hoping we got the angle just a little bit wrong. Nope. You said players aren't allowed to leave the field. If that's true, how come Nig and Manny are all the way out there? Well, we left a little something in the rule book for them. Not exactly a cheat, more of a loophole. Imagines it's possible to exploit right now. Uh, nobody knows about it, but no one imagines it's possible to exploit right now. If you feel, I'll fill you in on how, how it works. But there's two things you need to know about this scheme. If Nick and Manny can pull it off, actually pull it off, one of one, it will be perhaps the greatest moment in the history of college football. Two, it will fuck everything up. Chapter three. Ugh. You got it. Nine should know. Your sister's better at tracking than I ever was. Doesn't look like it. Shh. Rusty is all. I just woke up. Just turn on the state boundaries. Fine. I don't need them, but fine. Wow, I never really noticed it before, but Florida looks like crap. How so? What would you change about it? Ha, ah, got him. Woo, shit, lady, you threw a dart. Fucking beautiful. They haven't gotten far at all. Tough navigating the suburbs, I'm sure. Especially carrying nine footballs. Oh yeah, that explains the backpacks. You know, when we were drawing up this game, we thought about making bags illegal. In the end, we decided to allow them. I kind of regret that now. It would be fun to see them bumble around Georgia with armloads of footballs. At one point, I wanted to replace the football with a glass of lemonade. Don't spill the lemonade. Who doesn't enjoy a glass of delicious lemonade? Do you even care about the gameplay experience? I think it's very, very obvious that I don't. Anyways, let's listen in. On their private conversation, I wanted to say something earlier. I don't feel good about that. Nah, it's fine. All the players agreed to be mi mic'd up. Whenever this game actually ends, it's going to make for the best documentary series of all time. Besides, you know someone out there is probably listening in on us, guaranteed. <laughs> Bzzzt. No, see, that's... 3212 Forest Run, the Stucco House. That's 3214 Forest Run. Wait, is this Forest Run Drive or Forest Run Trail? Forest Run Drive. Who named these goddamn streets? We gotta get out of this state. Okay, here we go. We're right here. Right about the 5,000, uh, 53,900th yard line. Figure 2,851, Georgia Tech Field, 53,900 yard line north to 54,600 yard line north. Notes compiled by Nicholas Navarro, SDSU, May 20K13. Public swimming, one, public swimming pool, open May through September only. Two, Mr. Devereaux's house. Believed to be related to the Devereux family, who lives near the 13,000 West Yard Line on the Kentucky Field. Three, unknown inhabitants are gardeners who frequent their backyard, friendly with Georgia Tech's football team, will report unrecognized players. Four, potential safe house, has been vacant for at least 75 years, apparently due to poor renovation work. Okay, this snuck up on me. Safe house is about 500 yards out from us, 600 yards out. Feel like we should move. We're a little exposed here. Should be okay. I don't see anyone out and around right now, as long as we can make it past three, number three up there. Think they're out gardening? Nah, if I remember right, they grow a lot of squash mostly. Which means what? It's October. You think they're planning to s planting squash in Georgia in fucking October? Why would I know that? Why would I know that? Because you're playing in Georgia. You've been playing in Georgia for 30 years and you have to know this kind of shit. I sent you to read all the shit to read all the time and you never did, you never read it. Lol, there they go again. I think we're done here. Listen, I don't hit you over the head with all the shit I know. I know all about chess. I don't spend all day going like, oh, Nick, what's a back, back rank, mate? What's a retes, retes mate? Uh, what's a smothered, mate? It's all, it's about to be you in a minute. Bzzzed. They're wild, man. People don't change, just don't change. They don't ever change. Page 3, uh, 31,407. Yeah? 
They were stuck in in that condo for 30 years and they didn't have much else to do but scout the field. This game sucks so fucking bad, man. Everything I've seen so far is tedium, watching, waiting, marching, sitting around. Football was supposed to replace war, not emulate it. I'd encourage you to give it a shot and watch more of it before you decide it sucks. Because while you you will invariably conclude that it sucks, your reasons for thinking it sucks might very well change. Fair, you were going to tell us about the loophole. Yes, I think it's probably best to back up, back way up there. A few years before this game kicked off in 17804, we issued ball invites to all the teams, including one that still makes me laugh. Whore. <laughs> Now, technically, it would have been possible for Hawaii to play. Motorized vehicles of any kind are prohibited, but teams are allowed to use rowboats, canoes, etc. <gasps> By the way, lots of fields go over lakes. Lake football is fucking awesome, and we'll get to that eventually. Anyways, uh, the members of the ball committee loved my pitch for this game when they, until they realized that including Hawaii would make this way, way more of a seafaring game than any of them wanted. And remember, the game doesn't end until one team has every single football, and since every team gets a football at the start, you can't really avoid the Hawaii problem. After a lot of haggling, they managed to effectively disqualify Hawaii by making all ocean territories out of bounds. Hawaii withdrew as a result. Being a thorough thorough completionist, I was disappointed by this, but I respected their decision. However, in making the oceans out of bounds, they effectively kneecapped San Diego State Originally, SDSU did have one intersection, this one with Stanford. But if you look off in the the distance, you'll see that Stanford's field has to pass through the ocean to get there. Once oceans were taken out of play, proof, uh, intersection removed, San Diego State had an orphan field. But unlike Kauai, SDSU refused to withdraw. They lobbied for every rule they could think of. They wanted to redraw their field so it bent at an angle. Of course, I firmly opposed that, because it would have compromised the comically literal spirit of the game. So then, they wanted to open up Mexico so their field could go a little further south and make an intersection. But Mexico wanted no part of it. Then, they tried to make air travel illegal, which would have been cool, but... It was a particular variant of stupid that didn't interest me as much. They couldn't push anything through, but the fact remained that they had a football and they weren't going to give it up. We had to find a way to make SDSU somehow accessible without jeopardizing the spirit of the game. And that is why I came up with Out of Bounds Time, or OBT. This is how Out of Bounds works. If you step out of bounds, or you're shoved out of bounds, you have exactly 10 seconds to return to a field of the field of play, and if you fail to do this, you're automatically permanently ejected from the game, no exceptions. Now since it was clear from the jump that this game was going to take centuries, you can imagine how much of a bummer this could be for players and fans, because I mean, in certain spots, there was a real easy fall to, off the field. Take for example, for the Fresno State, 1.43076 million yard line yard line north Whew. sucks ass sucks real bad you're on such a slant that you could trip fall down the mountain and not make it back in time what if you're a star running back and this happens to you i mean imagine how much of a damn zealot you'd have to be to play this game for i don't know a thousand years and then you take one wobbly step and it's all gone your whole life your whole identity gone To help mitigate the odds of this happening, I introduced out-of-bounds time. Out-of-bounds time is simple. For every year you spend on the field, you're granted one extra second of it. One second per year. So one second per (laughs) 31,536,000 seconds. Yeah, and I know it doesn't sound like much, but if you've played a thousand years, shit, do the math. You've almost got 17 minutes of OBT time saved up. More than enough time to make your way back, in most cases. This goes a long way to uh, a, a long way toward keeping our best players in the game. And there's the loophole. You got it. Damn, that was good. Hey, when you're camping, you're allowed to cook eggs in the bacon grease. That's the rules. Sorry, sorry they came out all fucked up looking. 
though, uh, though, cast iron skillets aren't good for eggs. I don't care what they look like, really. Give me a plate. Okay, oh, thanks. Whoa, whoa, hey, what are you doing? What? You're not supposed to use soap on a cast iron skillet. It doesn't matter. It does. No, it doesn't. You know the whole, my whole thing on this. What's that? Every few years, some article comes out that's saying, listen, folks, I see that you're out there, out here washing your cast iron skillets with soap. No, just no. Then someone else will write something like, yes, you can. Then someone's like, we performed an, an experiment to see who's right once and for all, but you don't remember what they found out. Nobody knows who's right, and people just internalize the last thing they read and forget about the, about the whole thing. Then a few years later, this happens all over again. This happened for 18,000 years. No, just no is such a good one. I might start saying that again, just to say it, just to annoy me. Either that or I can't even. What the hell? Let's bring back the 19, 1900s. Let's check out one of the balls. I don't know. We should probably put this fire out soon. Come on, the backfield's empty. No one's coming back this way. We said one. We said every night we could check out one of them. All right. Yeah. Want to pick one? I don't know. Just reach in the, reach in the bag and take one. I can't believe we've got nine of them. It feels so fucking weird, man. Like, uh, this is like, I mean, how many times has a ball carrier carried this many? Has it ever happened? I wouldn't be surprised if it's never happened. And even if it did, it was probably some big 50-person unit or something. We're just two dudes. I mean, what do we do if we run into a defense and we have to line up uh, at a scrimmage? What the, uh, what the fuck does that, uh, does that like? Uh, what kind of fucking play do we run? There's a reason we don't have a play for it, right? It's impossible. We are fast, though. We don't uh, don't know if anyone's got more speed than us. Here, let me just... I'm going to draw this up. Draw it up. This will be funny. Oh, God. How many defenders are, are we running into? Uh, I mean, once word gets out, these balls are missing. Everyone's going to send everybody after us. Let's say 100. I'm not going to draw 100. 50, then. Yep. <laughs> Well, uh, haha, <laughs> fuck. This is enough for 14 on the line, 26 in, in the secondary, 70, 7 way back in the, in the sort of prevent defense. And then, just for the hell of it, if I were them, I'd put three more uh, 100, 100 yards back just for safety. Have them hide in trees or something and ambush us. Well, we got just enough people to snap a football. All nine, though. You'll have to snap all nine. So that means no shotgun. Jesus, we did not plan for nine. All those years, I mean, I remember a couple of times, remember I said to you, what if there's two or three? Can't believe they'd be that stupid. They just, it's like we just, it's like we said, they got sloppy. They thought there was no way a player could make it into Atlanta without getting made. Then what probably happened is they found out about another ball out there and just sent a whole house after them, a whole house after them. Well, hope they get that one. Pretty soon they'll be missing every one of these. Come on, let's see one. All right, let me see if I can figure out how to work this. Where's my phone? Uh, you want me to call it? Uh, oh, no, nah, it's it was right here. I think after you open the app, you just have to give it a minute to pair. Then it's got to be like right next to the ball. You got to hold it right up to, right up to it. All right. Okay. What's it say? Ball and D. The, this is the Notre Dame football. Oh damn. They're one of the, the goose eggs, right? Let me put, pull up the scoreboard real fast. ND, ND, ND. Oh yeah, they're way down there. Below us, they're at zero. I feel like they fell to zero real fast too, like the first hundred years of the game. I think so. They lost the, this ball early and never got it back. I never once seen them move up the ranks. Notre Dame used to be good too. I'm talking like way back, like in the like the 1900s. No shit. Oh yeah, they lost a lot of titles in old football, I think, anyway. Or they won a lot of titles in old football, I think, anyway. I never watched football back then. I only really knew about, know about them because for some reason they'd be on national TV. Like I'd turn on the game one afternoon and they'd be, they were playing. Even in a year when they weren't that good. Weren't even good. And I'm like... I'm in California. Who the fuck is Notre Dame? Ooh, you know what I'd bet I can do? Look at this. 
You can hit the history tab and see where it's been. Oh shit, look. Whoa. The lines, the lines show everything, everywhere this ball has been, and the dots. I think the dots show every time it, it's, it was hidden, or at least every time it stayed in the same place for a while. Yeah, it's just like you said. It started in Notre Dame, uh, but it only stayed up there for seventy-six years. Then stopped number twos in uh, Louisville. I guess Louisville went and took it. Must have. Yeah, they took it back to Cardinal Stadium, kept it there for like four hundred years. Then, either someone bum-rushed their stadium and got a turnover, or Louisville decided to try to hide it somewhere else. Look at number three there, somewhere in the southern, in southern Illinois. That's not anywhere near a stadium. That would have been in, let me do the math, game started in 1704, plus 76 years, plus 414 years. I guess it got to point three in the late uh, 183rd century. Someone just let it sit there for 17 years. Teams were experimenting with that back then. Just hide it in a tree in the middle of nowhere. Uh, way less secure than stashing it in your stadium, obviously. But at least you don't have a target on your back. Stupid. Yeah. Same time, though, that's how old football was, too. When it first was invented, teams would punt on, the, on like, second down. They carried the field position more than the ball. No shit. Uh, you know that shit was still on the books. If we wanted to, next time we run into a teammate and have to play a scrimmage, we could just punt. What would that do? Oh, jack shit. Absolutely nothing. I guess they just wanted to stay as true to the old football as they could. Huh. Meanwhile, we're eating dinner at the 70,000 yard line. It's funny, man. The highway's like, what, 100 yards or something away? About. You see these cars go by, and you've got to figure, just playing the numbers, that every third person who goes by is a big football fan, if not more, right? Probably more. And they've got no idea that the biggest thing in football is happening right fucking here. They're driving right past it. When I was a little kid, my family just had one car. My mom would have to drive my dad to work, drive him back home, then later she'd have to go get him again. Um, then, and his job was like, an hour away, and me and my sister were too little to stay at home by ourselves, so we'd have to come along in the car every time. I'd bring along books and stuff, and I, but I'd get car sick looking at them. And a lot of the time, a lot of times, I couldn't sleep, so I'd just look out the window. When you're on the interstate, there's nothing to look at but trees, really. I try to count the trees, but there are just too many, and they go by way too fast, way too many. So then I just wonder what all those what those trees were all about. Were they always there? Did somebody have to go plant them all? I mean, I was a little kid, so I didn't know this stuff. Was it somebody's job to go plant these trees? How far did it go? Did they go back? What was behind them? Did anyone live there back there in a log cabin? What was going on? Then you get a little older and you just keep your eyes on the road. You got more important things to do and you just don't care anymore. You know, it's just trees. But now, here we are. Here is a very brief history of Nick and Manny. It's New Year's Day, 17804, the first day of new college football. It's all anyone's in America that is talking about. Teams all over the country are busting out the stadium gates with designs on building their football empires. But not San Diego State the orphaned mockery of a football team. It's the distance between SDSU's southern terminus and the Boise uh, State southern terminus is 4.88 miles, 8,581 yards, so nearly 56 uh, football fields. Even for human beings, this was too much of a waste of time, so most SDSU players didn't even show up. Some signed up and quit just so they could say they were football players once, but not Nick and Manny. For, uh, for 1,500 years, they dutifully stayed on the field, um, endlessly cross-training through the mountains and improving their five-mile run time. Then one day, in 19304, with 25 minutes saved of a piece, they went for broke. Their pace was unlike anything this, this sport had ever seen. They both maintained a three-minute, 53-mile pace for nearly five miles. They made it in 1857. 
um, Nick and Manny spent their following centuries roaming other fields, sp- scouting, spying, gaining intel, looking for a big score, all the while saving up more OBT. No one bothered them much because they were SDSU players, no one accounted for them, no one even recognised them. They knew George Attacker um, had some footballs, and they wanted to let the condo uh, as a look po- lookout post. But think about it: Atlanta's city, fo- uh, Atlanta's a city full of football fans, and nobody's going to sell a condo on that field, um, that close to the stadium, to somebody who might be an opposing player. So they had to build up a history that they lived in Cannot, then Woodstock, then Boswell, then Dulch, Dulles, then Fayetteville. Fe- uh, all through the uh, throughout the area. Soon, they had hin- hundreds of years of horrendous history established that they were just go- just ordinary Georgia folk. Then they ha- they finally settled down and bought that condo. And always a big moment in the young couple's life. They're like eighteen thousand years old. Yeah, eighteen thousand out of how many? A trillion, billion, billion, hundred times infinity. They're all babies. Anyways, they were planning on staying in that condo for a very long time, but then they saw that the drop the other day and realized they couldn't pass it up. Now, this is where they stand. Nick and Manny have uh, 1,079 seconds of OBT. That's 17 minutes and 59 seconds. In order to make the return trip, they're going to have to shave about a minute off their previous time. They'll have to do this while carrying nine footballs. Nine. Do you think they can do it? Provided they can even get across the country with those footballs in the first place. I'll be honest with you. I don't. Chapter 4 of 20k20. Ball ground, Georgia. Thank you for calling Pizza Barn, one of many pizza establishments. Thank you for your patience. We are currently experiencing longer than usual wait times. Tucker, I'm on hold. The, uh, the wait times are longer than... Uh... I don't give a shit. It's been 45 minutes. I'm not paying for no fucking pizza, dude. Tell them it's going to be free. It's already free. I don't give a shit. Okay, so we've got Tucker and Tanner. Tucker and Tucker is George's quarterback. He's the rude idiot. Tanner is his center. He's the nice idiot. Got it. Tucker and Tanner. Jesus, I love the SEC. Looking for a tasty weekend meal for the whole family? Sounds delicious. We hope to f- you find someone somewhere. You are currently on hold with Pizza Barn. This guy has been on hold for um, for almost an hour. They've had f- 18,000 years to make the world better and they can't even improve hold times. Or won't. Yeah, it's a won't scenario. Many of them. One of many of them. I've asked it before and I've, I'll have asked it again. Why not? Why does their ideal existence involve sitting on hold with Pizza Barn? The ideal world is an imperfect being. Uh, for an imperfect being is an imperfect world. It's something I accepted a long time ago. Someone down there put. Uh, someone down there put it very well once. He talked about how he liked to sit on a bench in a park and feed the ducks. He didn't try to get better at feeding the ducks. He didn't try to feed more ducks. He wasn't trying to optimize the nutritional quality of the bread. He wasn't trying to get it it over with. He realized that ultimately, he wasn't even sure he experienced any benefit from it. He couldn't explain to to anyone why he went to the park and fed the ducks, least of all himself. He was feeding ducks because he was feeding ducks, because he was feeding the ducks. Why? Because he was feeding the ducks. Why? Because he was feeding the ducks. Why? Because, hey, fuck off. Lol. Lol. No, no, no. Uh, uh, low, no lower casing. Not you too. <laughs> I'll do what I what I feel like. Juice can do it because he's European. You and I are NASA, born and bred. We have standards. Wow, standards. Sounds like fun. Let me try. Hello, everyone. I'm very important. I'm here to lol. Fuck. Never mind. Too much work. You do it sometimes, though. I've noticed some proper nouns you capitalize and others you don't. I have no style guide. You've got style. You got style like this. You don't need. You don't guide it. You just blow out your ass like yesterday's yogurt. Despite besides, no one of that of that matter or ever did. 
Besides, no, none of that matters or ever did. Hello, Peter Bond, this is Tanner. Uh, thanks for holding. Oh, hi, this is Tanner. What did you say your name was? Tanner. Ah, my name's Tanner too. I'm bored. I'm going to have to place you back on hold. Click. Are you a big fan of pizza, but you've never eaten it before? Today's your lucky day. You're on hold with Pizza Barn, a pizza restaurant. <laughs> what did he say? He uh, he said he was going to put me back on, put me on hold. <laughs> Again? Well, he said his name was Tanner, and I told him that, that was funny because Tanner's my name too. And then he said that I was boring, so he put me on hold some more. Um, give me the fucking phone. Give me the phone. I need a representative. 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 I don't think like I don't think that representative works like with a recorded message. It's only the automated representative <laughs> robot computer thing it works with. God, you beautiful idiot. Tucker is such an absolute fucking dolt. He's one of my favorite players in the country. What other quarterback is going to stand in the pocket and order a pizza, I ask you? Well, I mean, there's no pocket. Have you looked? No. Well, then look. <laughs> He's in the middle of the play? Yep. He's a quarterback trying to order pizza to the backfield in the middle of, the, of a play. Yep. Why? Well, you'd mention he's hungry, wouldn't you? <laughs> Up until now, this game has basically looked like a giant scavenger hunt. Now it actually, now it, look, it looks like actual football all of a sudden. What's going on here? Can I read the rules of this game somewhere? Yeah, I'll drop them in. Let me find it. Here you go. Did you write this rule book? Yeah, but it received a pretty serious edit. wasn't uh, wasn't able to fully express myself in the final print. Had to capitalize. <laughs> Treaties on microwave stacks was cut entirely. Wasn't allowed to start every paragraph with C. Okay, the whole deal was <laughs> with this thing is. Hated the entire process. No one should ever edit anything. Just write shit. Who cares? All right. This answers one of my questions. Four. Standard players and defensive players. There are two classes of players. Each team is allowed 100 standard players who are free to roam on any field they choose. The remaining 25 players are defensive players who must remain on their home field and are not allowed to set foot on another field at any point. Teams are permitted to reassign players from standard to defense and vice versa every New Year's Day. 125 players times 111 teams means this football this is a football game with 13,875 players and most of them can go anywhere on the f on any field they want most yeah we set aside some players as purely defensive the intent there was to add significance to a terms home uh, team's home field if every player could go everywhere it doesn't really feel like a team a team has ownership of its own field it's just another field this way a team has 25 players dedicated to defending their own turf if you keep all your players on your home field, you have th the theoretical ability to stack this 125 player absolute goliath of a squad. Look at you. That's smart. That's a thoughtful game. That's thoughtful game design, see? Thank you. You're showing growth. You know you drive me crazy, but you're showing growth. Thank you. Here it is. Uh, this is what I was looking for. <laughs> Free play. By default, teams operate under free play rules. Most players, see below, are free to wander throughout any field they choose. A team uh, d need not move as an entire unit. For example, a team may opt to d divide into several different units or send 125 players to 125 separate locations. B, uh, 6B, scrimmage play. Scrimmage play operates under conventional football rules, i.e. four downs are allow allowed and 10 yards for, the, for a first down. However, both teams can line up as many or as few players as it chooses. For example, it is permitted for a 50-player offense to line up against a 50-player defense, or for a 20-player offense to line up against a 100-player defense. A team enters scrimmage play if a, te if a team encounters, identifies, and issues a verbal challenge to an opposing team in possession of a football. The challenging party must be within 50 yards of their opponent. If a team fails to achieve a first down, the ball is turned over on, on downs, and the team is then on defense. The onus is on the offense, the offense to break through the defense with a big play. If the ball carrier eludes being tackled for a period of 24 hours, this team returns to free play mode and can roam the field with the football until challenged again. At times, 
team, two teams who possess a football may encounter one another. In this circumstance, both teams will simultaneously play both offense and defense, with all of the above rules applying. So there's a fr there's free play and there's scrimmage play. Free play is what we've been seeing with Nick and Manny, who are just sneaking around wherever. Scrimmage play is normal football, which we get whenever two teams run into each other. Uh, mostly, right, yeah. I mean, if two play two teams run into each other, but neither team has a ball, there's no line of scrimmage because there's no ball. There's nothing to fight over. So they usually just wave hello and go on their way. But of course, once in a while, they'll put up their fists and beat uh, beat the fuck out of each other. Sometimes for no real reason other than, than they don't like each other. That's always fun. Now, if you look back at the field, I can show you what's going on here. Oh no, I'm not reading that. Representative, this guy's a dumbass. Yeah, he rules. Representative. Hello, thank, representative, thank you. Representative, thank you for holding. Representative, representative, representative. Excuse me, sir. Representative, sir. Representative, sir. This is a real person. You're not on hold. Wait, what? Uh, who are you? That was just a recording. It wouldn't be able to detect your... You're supposed to... We're supposed to have my pizzas delivered an hour ago. And I've been hungry and it's been an hour. And you were supposed to deliver my pizza an hour ago. I'm sorry, sir. What was the delivery address? I... I don't got no d delivery address. It's like I told you all people. We're on Georgia, the Georgia field. I'm I'm on the Georgia, I'm on the Georgia's football team, on Georgia's football team. We're right up here off Ball Ground Highway. I don't really like football. You don't like football? I'll whoop your ass. I'll fucking whoop your ass. Whoop his ass over the phone. Unsure. Haven't thought about it through. <laughs> You can't kick my ass, sir. It's against policy. Listen, a delivery driver is on his way. Unfortunately, you're as boring as the last guy who was on the phone, so I'm going to hang up now. Thank you for calling Pizza Bon. Click. God damn it. Anyways. Man, I love saying anyways. I feel like I say it all the time. Anyways. Suppose you're in jo you're Georgia. You got two footballs to your name. Uh, the area is getting a little hot. Two, uh, lots of the lots of other teams around. You're trying to keep them off your field. Maybe it's because you're trying to protect your footballs. Maybe it's because you've made an agreement with another team. Like, hey, we heard Vanderbilt's gunning for you, but they're not going to use our field to get there. You can form alliances with other teams. Yep, that's interesting. Yep. However, the terms of any sort of alliance aren't enforced by the game's officials such as myself. They could backstab you at any time, and it's completely legal to do so. Of course, do that and your reputation goes to shit. You'll never be able to call in favours with anybody. For now, Georgia is keeping opponents off their field as a favour to Georgia Southern, uh, who feel like they've got a target on their backs right now. The idea here being that they can ask Georgia Southern for a favour of some kind later. And that's what's up here. Georgia actually marched up their field to this intersection uh, here to block everybody's way, everyone's way. Oh, nice. Oh, that's why they... Uh, that. Oh, and that's why they brought a football with them. If Georgia just stationed a bunch of defenders up here, they wouldn't really be able. Uh, they wouldn't really. They couldn't really stop anyone from moving through. They need to be able to set up a line of scrimmage so that they can force somebody to actually beat them in in a four down football. Um, for that, they needed a ball. That's exactly it. Hey, is that him? Is that the pizza guy? Where? There. He's gonna drive by. Oh shit. Hey. Hey, stop. Hey, flag him down. Get the fuck out of my way. Hey. <laughs> Wow, outstanding pocket mobility on display here. The defense really doesn't seem to give a shit, do they? Not really. Actually, that's Georgia Tech's defense. They locked horns with this Georgia offense around a, a month ago. What down is it? Um, oh, it's first down. First play of the drive. This play has been going on for a month. Yeah, about. A couple of things make this possible. First, they strategically set it up so that the line of scrimmage falls right along the highway. Classic pain in the ass move. Real tough to blitz a team through traffic. The nanotechnology should keep, would keep them out of danger, though. Well, yeah, but it still hurts. Even if you were guaranteed that you wouldn't be injured, you would, still wouldn't want to get hit by a truck, right? Yeah, that's absolutely still an issue. Human beings don't like getting hit by stuff, no matter how immortal they are. <laughs> that's a big deal on some f fields up north. There's bison up there, and they'll charge you as soon as, as look at you. Bad news. So the second and more obvious reason is that Georgia Tech is comically outnumbered, 38 players to 5. Why does Tech even bother? 
probably because they probably just to see if they can catch them nabbing at any point even if you have a huge personal personnel advantage securing the ball for a month straight might be harder than you think you want me to take the ball boss nah i got it what kind of pizza you get i don't know you know there was this thing i was reading on the internet it was like a list list of best uh of like the people's favorite pizza toppings like a ranking of the pizza toppings and i remember it talked about pineapples on pizza i don't remember what it said what rank it has had but it was a it was like a list of pizza toppings and fuck off trying to eat i just assumed that he was ordering pizza for everybody look at him he just ordered one pizza and he's gonna eat it all himself <laughs> this reminds me of don Mirko. who Don Murico, uh, the magnificent Murico. He rested in the WWF uh, for a while in the 1980s. One time he was up against some jobber, and he ate all he ate a meatball sub during the match. He beat him easily too. When he pinned him for the three count, he was still chewing on his sandwich. You guys don't know about this? No, which I deeply regret. How did you find that? I don't know. I just like to dig through stuff. Both of you have been out of hibernation way longer than I have. How is this news to you and not me? Nine, I think you found a talent. God, look, he's getting pizza sauce all over the football. Absolute slob. Horrendous leadership. Once the game is a couple of thousand years old, you start to see people like this. Players leave the game, and some of the ones that take their place aren't exactly the world-class competitors. See, this right here is why tech, tech's bothering to stick around. Georgia's got numbers, but they got zero discipline. Up there on the shoulder of the road, you've got 11 players taking shifts as linesmen, and 7 more in the immediate backfield, but they're all pretty checked out at the moment. 19 and more uh, further back, a little further back, just kind of sitting around. That's up to 37 players. You said they had 38 there. Yeah, uh, here. Huh? Weird. You all check my math. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I got 37 for sure. Same. What the hell? I mean, the game data says there's definitely 38 players here. Hmm. <gasps> Whoops. Whoa. Okay. Cut it off. Cut it off. I didn't see shit. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> You'll have a uh, have fun in the middle of play. <laughs> that's bold. This isn't the first time that's happened. I try to respect people's privacy. I really do. But goddamn. But I mean, this is the the culture with this program. A few hundred years ago, they shifted their approach. Less actually going after footballs, more brokering strategic partnerships with other teams. They're playing the long game, but in the process, you got players who don't really truly get to play. It looks like they might get a, they might in a minute though. Hmm? Look over to the west. Oh, hello, old friends. Those are the Georgia Tech players we saw, the ones who left Tech's campus the other night. This is where they were headed. Yeah, they're laying low just behind the tree line there. Yeah, okay, we might see some shit after uh, any minute here. If you're outnumbered 38 to f 5, your odds of prying the, the ball loose are pretty slim. Generally, if the numbers improve 38 to 15, your odds are a little better, if not uh, a, little, a little better, but not a lot. But if 10 of those are hidden players Georgia doesn't see coming, yeah, this is going to get grotty. I'd blitz right now if I were them. I don't know. I think I'd let the quarterback eat more of his pizza first. Make him run loud with a full tummy. Run around with a full tummy. I'm trying to gain this out, and I think I've got it. Teams don't have any means of precisely looking up where their opponents are, but they do collect intelligence, right? And it's not unreasonable to assume that Georgia had Georgia Tech's players pretty well pegged. They knew that Tech almost uh, had almost all of their players up north, with a few hanging back in Atlanta to defend. What they were wrong to assume was that those players in Atlanta were defensive players. Therefore, they aren't allowed to leave their home field. Therefore, Georgia doesn't have to worry about them. But they're standard players, not defensive players. They can run wherever, including right here. Big fake out by tag. That checks out. Yeah, that's good. Cra that's crafty. Or at least it would be if Tech didn't abandon their footballs back in Atlanta. Does Tech know their field that footballs have been stolen yet? No. And that's another thing I'll explain in a minute. Jeez, lots of dominoes here. Georgia, Georgia Southern asks Georgia to form a roadblock, which baits Georgia Tech into emptying their backfield to try to make the play, a play on the ball, which lets San Diego State clean them out. It's very personally gratifying for me to see you coming around on this game. No, I'm not coming around on anything. This is all stupid. It's just stupid in such a labyrinthian, labyrinthian style. 
that once in a while it'll produce something cool by accident. Whoa, text moving. They're moving. Uh oh. The fuck is going on up there? Oh fuck. 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 Block them. Where'd they come from? Shit, they're not gonna hold. Fuck. Hey, go long. I'm center. I'm a center. I, uh, the thing you're, where you're not eligible. Ineligible. I don't fucking care. Run a route and I'll hit you. We're gonna get a penalty. Go! I think we're gonna have to throw a flag on this one. They didn't have anything drawn up. They did a month ago when the play started, but nobody's in position. The wideouts were supposed to run post routes in case of emergency, but they were hanging out in the car, the parking lot. The tight end in the running back was supposed to be to run a mesh, but we just caught them boning, etc. What we're seeing here is a, is pure panic. Tucker's not in game shape at all. Even in top form, he's never good, he's never proven himself. Oh, he's so fucked. Just get get down. Take the snack. What's he doing? This is what we call Tucker time. He's gonna lose his shit and just airmail it. It's what he does. But he throws it in. T an uh, int here. Fucking bum. Oh no. Don't do it. Throw it. Don't throw it. Chuck it, you loser. Destroy yourself. I love you. <laughs> huh? Uh, uh, hey, the, uh, hey, I just, the, uh, in the, like, it went in the truck and, uh, I know, I saw it. I was there. I saw it. I thought it wasn't le legal to leave the field. It's not. Then how is the driver of the truck allowed to? He's not. He's not turning around. Fuck. God damn it. I'm fucked. I'm so fucked. Ah. Ha ha. I can run the plates. What do you do in this situation? Ah ha. Fuck. Lol. Man. Oh, watch the gift. The gif? Oh, no. Oh, it landed in the back. Did he run off the field? I don't think that he did. He run off the field. I guess we'll find. Um. Um. This happened. This has happened before. The answer is we do nothing. He'll probably find it in the bed of his truck, and when he gets home, and in a couple of days or something, at that point, he'll ho hopefully he gives it back to who? Yeah, that's the big question, right? Maybe he's got he's a big Georgia fan and he gives it back to them, or maybe he's a Nebraska transplant and a big Husker fan and he decides to take a road trip to give it to them, or maybe he thinks football is stupid and throws it in the garbage, and or maybe this is a rental car and one of the rental agents finds it and returns it next week. You don't even want to reach out to him. As a game official, that's not really my place. If you're watching a normal game of football and everyone thinks the ball is dead, but the ref doesn't blow the whistle, would you expect him to yell out, "Hey, the ball's still alive"? Let's look at the big board. <gasps> We've got the numbers. Oh no. Down to one. Okay. 15, 11, 9, 4, 3, 3. Amazing. Uh, and where was our team? S. I can't even remember what their initials were. It was S something. It was an S S C B C S. Oh wait, no, they moved up, did they? No, where are they? I can't remember. Okay, whatever. Uh, George has lost its number eight uh, ranking. End of an era, damn. Down to a 28 way. SD, SDSC has has won their starting ball. Oh! Oh yeah, because they haven't they haven't handed it yet. Okay, that makes sense. They they hadn't registered them in or, or yeah. Okay. Oh, I think I uh, sorry. George has lost its eight ranking. End of an era. Damn. Down to a twenty eight way tie for thirteenth. Oh, I think I get it. Um, I I was wondering why Georgia Tech was still on, has a nine on the board. Is that because Nick and Manny are still on the Georgia Tech field? Yep, you got it. That's how possession is defined. Oh, it's not about actually who's holding the ball. It's about whose field it is on at the moment, which is great for Nick and Manny because they can pretty they can go a pretty good distance without anyone even knowing the balls are gone. All the footballs have geolocation sensors on them, so all this is tracked automatically. Tell you what, a f our friend in the pickup truck here is about to give us a useful demonstration. Let's take a ride. Hopefully, our guy is going to take us on the highway. If he is, Route 515 is on the left, in the minute. Be ready to turn. 
There he goes. Whoa, the interesting way to make a turn this turn here. Jay, are you steering on an oil tanker? Whatever. Fine, just take the wheel. You're better at this than me. Now, we're about to drive through the Georgia Tech field for a sec. Watch what happens on the scoreboard. Bloop. Man, he really has no idea he's got a football in the back. Just so we're clear, that little blip on the scoreboard. All the teams saw that, right? So just based on the timing of it, um, Tech can probably do some back of the napkin math and figure out this guy pulled onto a highway. But who knows if that information is even helpful? Probably not. Now here's the important thing about the scoreboard. There's the full admin version, the, looking, the version you're looking at, that displays all of the data. The ga only game officials get to look at it. Teams and players will never see this. For example, Georgia Tech gets a look at this instead. So you see the teams ranked put by how many footballs your opponents have, but you don't actually see how many they have. Yep, you see who's winning, you don't know by how much. It looks like we'll be passing through Georgia State State's field shortly. Can we look at their scoreboard? Yeah, let me put it, pull it up. This is not a lot of information to work with. Then, again, though, at least it lets you know there's a ball in your, on your field that you otherwise wouldn't know about. Oh yeah, for sure, news, uh, news you can use. News you can use. Huh, I like that. You think I'm the first one ever to come up with that? No. Wilkes Bar record, September 18th, 1930. It's news you can use. Now shut up. I want you to see it. I want to see this. Well, excuse me. Jesus. Oop. Well, that must have been fun for Georgia State. They bumped to the 8th ranked team in the, in the nation for 3 seconds or so. They waited centuries to get there, too. They haven't seen that thing on the support board in ages. What is Georgia State, State supposed to do with that? I mean, jack shit, really. They only know the ball was on their field somehow. But they don't know where, and their field goes from Florida to Michigan. Good luck with that. This is such a confusing football game. Why, thank you. The ball game. Rule book summarized. Ratified June of 17803. About this document. This is abridgment and summarization of the full rule book for the ball game, scheduled to begin on New Year's Day 17804. The game one, the game. All football rules are carried over from traditional college football, except as specified in this document. For example, offences are still granted four downs to advance ten yards for a first down. One notable exception is the down rule. A college player is no longer declared immediately down if their knee touches the ground. They must also be touched by an opponent. The t two, the teams. There are exactly 111 teams. Each team is permitted a maximum roster size of 125 players, all of whom must remain on the field at all times except for specific cir circumstances detailed below. Uniforms are permitted but not required. 3. The ball. Each team begins the game in possession of one football. Each football is of regulation size, shape and weight. It is equipped with a sensor to allow game officials to track its precise location at all times. Additionally, every ball emits a faint glow in the dark and floats in water. The ball is designed to feel exactly like a regulation football, but is built with materials that prevent it from ever deteriorating in any outward or conditions. The, ba the game is won when one p team has is in possession of every football in the game. 4. Standard players and defensive players. There are two classes of players. Each team is allowed 100 standard players who are free to roam on the field on any field they choose. The remaining 25 players are defensive players who must remain on their home field and are not allowed to set foot on another field at any point. Teams are permitted to reassign players from standard to defense and vice versa every New Year's Day. 5. The field. The field, in fact, comprises 11, 111 individual fields. Each field is of a regulation size 160 feet wide and sits directly on the team's home field. However, there are no end zones. The field extends great distances in both directions, terminating only at international borders. Typically, a team's field inter intersects with many other fields. A team is free to enter any opponent's field and play at any time. Figure 1. Louisville's field remains exactly 160 feet wide but extends far plus past the traditional field of play through downtown Louisville and beyond.
Figure 2, as seen here, the fields are not to scale. They are emboldened so that they can be seen at distance. At, at center, we see LOU, which marks the location of Louisville Stadium. Louisville's field extends north northeast through Indiana and Michigan, ultimately terminating at uh, the Canadian border. 6. Gameplay 6A. Free play by default, teams operate under free play rules. Most players, see below, are free to wander throughout any field they choose. A team may need not move as an entire unit. For example, a team may opt to divide into several units or even send 125 players to 125 separate locations. 6b, scrimmage play. Scrimmage play operates under conventional football rules, i.e. four downs allowed and 10 yards for a first down. However, most uh, both teams can line, line up as many or as few players as it chooses. For example, it's permitted for a 50-player offense to line up against a 50-player defense, no, 50-player offense to line up against a 50-player defense, or for a 20-player offense to line up against a 100-player defense. A team enters scrimmage play if a team encounters, identifies, and issues a verbal challenge to an opposing team in possession of a football. The challenging party must be within 50 yards of their opponent. If a team fails to achieve the first down, the ball is turned over on downs, and that team is on, is then on defense. The onus is on the, in, the offense to break through the defense with a big play. If the ball carrier eludes uh, being tackled for a period of 24 hours, this team returns to free play mode and can roll run the field with the football until challenged again. At times, Two teams who each possess a football may encounter one another. In this circumstance, both teams will simultaneously play both offense and defense, with all rules, uh, all above rules applying. In the rare event that a ball carrier in scrimmage play reaches the end of a field, the player is whistled dead. The ball is spotted, 100, uh, is spotted 10 yards from the terminus. The offense and defense switch sides, and the play continues in the opposite direction. 6C, third parties. Players who do not belong to teams engaged in scrimmage play must stay a minimum of one mile away from the line of scrimmage. However, if an offence breaks through its opposing defence with a big play, these third-party players are permitted to make a play on the ball. On, a bo on the ball, if they are able to tackle the ball carrier, they then replace the original defence as the scrimmage play defence. For example, say jo suppose Georgia and Michigan are engaged in scrimmage play with a number of Oregon players a mile behind the line of scrimmage. George is running back to take the ball and bursts through Michigan's defense, then riles, uh, runs a mile upfield, where they then meet George, uh, Oregon's players. Oregon is now allowed to tackle George's running back. If successful, George's off offense must line up at the spot against Oregon's defense for scrimmage play, having gained approximately 1,700 yards. Georgia is naturally awarded a first down. Michigan, having lost its place on the line of scrimmage, must return to free play. 6D. Stealth play. A team with a football can avoid scrimmage play if it remains undetected on the field. For example, suppose a lone Arizona, uh, Arizona State player has a football in free play. This player may choose to hide in a building or some tall grass to avoid having to line up against an approaching opponent. If the opponent does not issue a verbal challenge, the ball carrier is not required to make themselves known and is free to continue play without having to confront the defenders. Teams are not permitted to blindly issue challenges in the event of an opponent uh, in the event an opponent is hiding. If a player issues a challenge with no op opponent present, that player receives a penalty. They must retreat and place both feet on their home field before returning to play, no matter how far from the field they are. Okay. Interesting. That's a really interesting thing to know. Okay. Um, seven possession. A team possession. Uh, a team possesses a football if said football is located anywhere on its home field, regardless of whether it's held by that team, held by an opposing team, or sitting uh, simply sitting untouched. Teams are allowed to hide footballs, but they are not permitted to bury them or build a structure to hide them. Teams must rely solely on pre-existing structures to ob obscure their footballs. Balls cannot be hidden within any structure that is not publicly access accessible, such as behind a locked door. Every team has an equal right to make a play on any given football. As such, every football must be in re recoverable location. Game officials will make these rulings on a case-by-case -case bas basis. 8. The scoreboard. The score of each team in terms of is in terms of footballs held. 
um, is tracked on in a real time in real time by game officials. However, the full scoreboard information is kept highly confidential. Teams do have access to the number of footballs they themselves possess on the field, the ranking of all 100 teams. The teams do not have access to the specific number of footballs possessed by any other team, the precise location of any football, apart from what they can independently confirm. For example, suppose that Clemson has 15 footballs on their field. They're provided this information, which they already know because they have all 15 footballs guarded in a secure location. Suddenly, they receive a notification that they are now in possession of 16 footballs. They make the most reasonable assumption, which is that an opposing ball carrier is crossing through their field. They have no idea where, and there is no Clemson player reporting a sighting. After a few moments, the number drops back down to 15. Their assumption was correct. Meanwhile, suppose these 15 players uh, put Clemson in second place nationwide, one behind the game leader NC State. For just a moment, every other team in the country saw that Clemson move, it, move up into a tie for first on the leaderboard before flo- falling back down to second again. They have no way of knowing exactly how many footballs Clemson, Clemson possesses, but they can safely assume that they have a lot. Um, nine, over the line. Uh, out of bounds. Upon stepping or, or being forced out of bounds, a player has 10 seconds to return to the field of play. If they have not returned, they begin spending their out of bounds time or OBT. A player secures one second of OBT for every year they spend on the field. Hence, if a player avoided spending any OBT time, after 30 years they would have 30 seconds of OBT time of OBT saved. Combined with the 10 second grace period, this player would theoretically be able to spend 40 seconds out of bounds, although it would take a great deal of time to accrue more OBT. If a player is out of bounds beyond the the 10 second grace period and has no OBT remaining, that player is ejected from the game and permanently banned from ever returning without exception. 10. Alliances. Teams are permitted to form alliances and enter agreements with one another, so long as no rules are violated. However, game officials do not enforce the terms of any agreement. Teams are permitted to violate agreements and betray one another at any time. 11. Civilians. Non-players are prohibited from loitering, loitering on any part, on, on or near any part of the field unless they work, they live, work, or otherwise have business on the field. They are allowed to interact with players, providing food, shelter, and intelligence, but they are not allowed to directly interfere with gameplay in any way. Air vehicles. No powered air vehicles are permitted for ball transport, player transport, or surveillance. This includes, but is not limited to, airplanes, helicopters, drones, hot air balloons, and zeppelins. Hang gliders are permitted, although if a player on a hang glider breaks the plane of fields, they are considered out of bounds and OBT uh, rules apply. In free play mode, a player is allowed to travel by uh, travel by land vehicle, be it in a car, train, bicycle, or any other means of transport, for a maximum of a hundred yards. If a player is transported via, via vehicle, that player must wait twenty four hours before utilizing any sort of vehicle. Okay, that's interesting. Any sort of vehicle, so that would include air vehicles, I would assume. Um, use of any manner of vehicle is strictly prohib- prohibited in scrimmage play. Okay, okay. Cannons. <laughs> no cannons, trebuchets, on, uh, on, onagers. Uh, using any machinery to play a player or football through the air is strictly prohibited. We have been over this. <laughs> 15. Water vehicles. Certain parts of the field run across st- stretches of water, most notably the Great Lakes and Southern Great Lakes. Manually powered craft such as rowboats and canoes are allowed, but motorized craft are illegal. Water is still con- considered free play territory. Scrubbage rules do not apply. Well in water, any player is allowed to make any play on the ball at any time. Okay, welcome to chapter 5 of 20k20. I'm your host, Orange, and let's just get into it. Hey coach, it's Monica. Yeah. No, still nothing. He keeps saying it was in a chest of some kind, like a treasure, tre- a treasure chest. Well, I don't know what the, what's the difference between a regular chest and a treasure chest, besides the treasure. Yeah, I know. I'm not sure. UCLA is asking for an extension, though. They want us here three more days. I don't know. Of course, we can't know for sure. He might be fucking with us. But he seems, like, obsessed with this. 
Like, he just knows the ball is there somewhere. Yeah. Well, listen, here's what I think. I think he really does believe the ball is there. I also think we've been searching for a week, and the search, is, the search area is about 28 acres. That's not that big. There's There are 20 of us looking. We would have found it. Okay. No, I'm good with that. I'll let them know. Yep, bye. What you say? No extension. We gotta pack, pack up at the end of the day. Yeah, I think they're wasting their time here. Uh, our time here. Did she tell you about the scoreboard? No, what? We moved up in the rankings. Look, this was a minute ago. This was just a minute ago. Okay, I'm gonna read this this time. I'm trying to remember the name of that song where it goes like doot do 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 and then a piano goes like dun 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 dun. A lady sings it. Please somebody help me. <laughs> Someone please help me. Fantastic. Whoa, we're number thirteen, baby. Looks like Georgia had a little accident. Wonder what what the hell happened there? Don't know, don't care. We're tied. We we're tied with a million other teams, and I bet the rest of them actually know where their damn ball is, football is. Hey, thirteen is thirteen. Yeah, we got to celebrate. Maybe we could rent a private party up at that bar in Prior Creek. Yeah, but you know that the field only runs along the indoor part of the bar. I want to sit outside somewhere. Could go up to Hardy, Hardy, Nebraska. Yeah, I think it's the nearest bar if we keep going north. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what Coach thinks about it. Anyway, gonna go break the news to Grumpy. <laughs> Not Grumpy, you don't have to call him that. I mean, we've been around the dude for a week, and all he's done, all he does is mope around. If I fumbled, I might too. It was 63 years ago. Whatever, I'm gonna head up there. I'll be back. Where's he at? He was about at the uh, 490,000 last I saw him. All right, I'll be back. Hey Chuck, hey, the C's scored the board? Nah, you know, I was a, uh, you know, still looking. Georgia lost to football. That was a, this was about a few minutes. This was just a few minutes ago. No fooling. Someone else pick it up? Not as far, so, not as far as we can tell. Well, what do you want to do now? How long you been playing? About 300 years. Well, some of you newer players haven't necessarily seen something like this, but it's happened a few times where the where some poor sucker just airmailed the ball onto a boat or something like that, and the boat just goes down goes on down the lake, none the wiser. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you folks look and see. What you want to do now is watch to see if there's any blips on the scoreboard. If you can see your team pop up and then back down, you can bet your hat that's what's happening. Just a boat passing through their field. Now, if the score the score pops up and down real fast, that's something faster. Maybe a dump truck or something like that. There was actually a story once about a hawk that come and picked up the ball, um, a few, flew a few hundred miles. I don't think that's true though. Yeah, that never happened. This is fun. It's fun to see when the opposing when opposing players are pals. Me too. Um, it's actually not too uncommon to see this. Kind of depends on the program's culture. Really, some schools are hell-bent on victory, some are a lot more chill. Where do these teams fall on that spectrum? Well, Louisiana Tech and UCLA are both kind of bottom feeders these days. Not a lot of depth, lots of new players with less experience. I mean, both programs take the game serious, but they're still a few centuries away from relevance, and they seem to know that. But, and fingers crossed here, they may be about to deliver us something crazy. See, Louisiana Tech and UCLA do not have an alliance with each other. That's not what they're doing here. Story time? Always. Story time. It's 63 years ago, and the year is 19,957. Uh, 19, then, as now, UCLA had zero footballs, like a lot of other goose egg teams, without any particularly great ideas, they decided to set, send out five squads of 20 to just kind of roam around the country. They go on patrols, pick up whatever intelligence they can, and hope to get hope they get lucky. One of these squads is down in Texas, marching up the Kansas field, just outside of Tyler, Texas. One day, they run into Texas, a Texas A&M team with a football uh, they're trying to bring home. This team has 28 players, outnumbering UCLA by a few, but hey, it's enough to play some football. 
Whoa, what is this? This is known as the Castle Keep Formation. It alludes to the inner, medi uh, the inner keep's me medieval lords who uh, would build in their castles, naturally. Give me a second with this. I haven't had nearly as much time as you guys to study up on the game. I mean, I'm still trying to re read up on the West Coast offense of the 1980s. Lol, you are younger than hell. I'm, I'm older than both of you. Lol, you old as hell. It's officially known as the Castle Keep offense, but I and a lot of other others prefer to keep uh, call it the Throw Pillow offense. It's bloated and overcrowded. Imagine the triple option, except instead of a bar ball carrier, every option is an extra offense. Upon taking the snap, snap, the quarterback can drop back and make her reads as usual, or she can pitch it back to her second or third quarterback. This offense briefly came into vogue around the 90th century. Problem is, it overcomplicates things for you, a lot more than it does for your opponent. It's for advanced offensive thinkers only. In lesser hands, it's a mess. Yeah, that was the case here. The thing about the modern college game is that it's mostly made up of running around the country trying to get the ball. You could very well go a long, long, long time without ever taking a snap. Though, to retain play, calling discipline, tough to retain play calling discipline. More often than not, it's probably in your best interest to keep it simple. But these are human beings, and human beings love playing with their to toys. It's first and ten, the quarterback pi pinches, uh, pitches it back to the second quarterback on the left side, who doesn't catch it cleanly. He just chucks it out of bounds. Damn near gets an international grounding pen penalty. Second and ten, this time they draw nine verts, Four wide receivers, the tight end, and both running backs, both from uh, from both auxiliary defenses, all streak downfield. But as is common practice, UCLA has stationed three of its safeties up, way upfield to prevent uh, to play prevent. With the help of that that little line of trees, they successfully break it up. Complete lack of imagination from A and M. Here, they paid for it. All of a sudden, it's third and ten. Now, if you turn the ball over on the down, on downs, it's not really gonna. It's not really the end of the world, right? UCLA would get the ball, but you still outnumber them. You can most likely stop them and get it back. But A and M is trying to get the ball, uh, get the hell out of dodge. They're tired and it's getting late. They want to make one huge gain that lets them streak miles downfield and get this over with. So they call nine verts again. This sucks. They need to ditch this offense. You won't number them. You don't need to try any misdirection or obscure your intent. Just beat them up. I agree with you. And co coincidentally, so does fate. This is where Chuck comes in. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh, nice. Chuck Hamilton, height 6'3", weight 235 pounds, born uh, 2nd of the 12th. No, 12th of the 2nd, 1967, Thousand Oaks, California. Recent college football record. It's amazing. Hail to the Chief, Chuck was President of the United States from 14606 to 14610. Chuck's a terrific player whose talents, are, uh, talents as a defensive end have been wasted on uh, UCLA Bruins. Uh, this is the first time he's ever had a sniff at scrimmage football in hundreds of years. This is his big chance, and one of the de facto leaders of the squad. It's his turn to call his defense's next play. He calls everyone's fa he calls everyone's favorite zero blitz. Fuck yeah! Whoa, Jesus. Okay, it's my favorite. I'm sorry. If you pull the trigger at the right time, sending your entire team on a blitz, it's effective and it's beautiful. Lady, you're gonna love this because if this isn't this isn't just a zero blitz, it's a targeted zero blitz. Blitz. Chuck is pushing all of his chips here. He believes that the third quarterback is going to ask to make a throw, since he hasn't yet. So, so UCLA decides they're going to bum rush the west side of the field. His guess is absolutely right. UCLA's line shifts west. His their safeties creep up on the line just before the snap, then flood the west side of the field. A and M's third on O line is just eaten alive. The third quarterback tries to escape the pocket, but Chuck is all over him. Chuck 
Ball, uh, Chuck balls up a fist, lunges at him, punches the ball right out of his elbow. Gorgeous technique. It's the first time he's touched a ball in centuries. He stumbles forwards and picks up the ball, picks the ball up off the turf. He's got it. Seems like what uh, what most offensives really need in this game is an offensive safety or two. A couple of players p positioned way back field to prevent what what's about to happen. Yeah, if they did that, they uh, they almost certainly could have stopped him. There's something I think about. There's something I think about often, and it ties into some something we talked about last time around. I think if you sat these people down in I don't know 1990 and explained to them uh, that uh, them that they would live forever, they would imagine themselves in the distant future as supreme, supremely wise people. They'd tell you, "Well, with all the time in the world, I'd come to understand everything in the world. Uh, I won't m make mistakes anymore. I won't fuck up anymore. I'll become the best version of myself." And it may, may well be true that they uh, became the best version of themselves. That version still screws up relationships and leaves their sweater on the plane. That version still plays million-yard football like it's a hundred-yard football. Mm -hmm. And thank God, because that, that is how this little odyssey began. On paper, Chuck wasn't the fastest guy in the field, but he hauled ass all the way to Oklahoma without getting caught. When it comes to long distance football, whatever's on paper often goes out the window. It comes down uh, to who really wants it the most. Who's willing to run for 19 hours a day and who prefers to call it in and ask for another squad on your team to run them down. Nobody wanted it more than Chuck, turns out. Now, when you're a lone ball carrier, the smart move is to change fields as few times as possible. You don't want to leave a trail on the scoreboard. If they see U USC move up the rankings, then go down and Kansas State moves up, then they go down and grumbling moves up, everybody in the country can correctly guess that you're moving a football in southeastern, uh, southeastern Oklahoma, where those three fields run past each other. If that happens, and they find you, and you're fucked, what happens if you line up a scrimmage and you're the only player on your team? Something very stupid. The old NCAA football rulebook was our foundational text, and in it, almost every case we tried to interpret it as literally as possible. Of course, there was neither a rule nor a mere insinuation for how a one-player offence should line up, so we just did our best. The lonely player lines up at centre and snaps the ball to nobody. In old football rules, this would be treated as a f like a fumble is treated. Logically, it's legal for the carrier, uh, for the centre to turn then turn around and recover it. But it would be just as legal for the defense to just ball over you. Yeah, it's painful and humiliating experience. That's cool. That sucks. That's cool. Motion passes two to one. So back to our buddy Chuck here. He's made it about 200 miles north. He's trying to stay on the Kansas field a, a while longer and then cut northwest. This is what players are coached to do when they're carrying the ball by themselves. In the northwestern United States, it's a lot more sparse and there's a lot less action less likely to run into trouble. From there, he can just link up with the UCLA field, mission complete. But then, at about Kansas, uh, about the Kansas 398,800 yard line, he runs into trouble. He's at the Arkansas River. And on the other side, he see, sees a huge squad of KU players who finally showed up to figure out what a ball is doing on their field. Chuck doesn't really have a choice. He jukes northeast to transfer to West, Western Michigan's field. The northwest, then northwest to hop on Louisiana Tech's field. He knows that by doing this, he's going to set off all kinds of alarm bells. Again, people see Kansas pop on, on the scoreboard, then Western Michigan, then Louisiana Tech. Everyone's going to know you got a ball, and they, they're going to know right where you are. So Chuck's on Louisiana Tech's on Louisiana Tech and he's still he, and he's shit out of luck. He runs up field and sees an army of Washington players combing through, looking for him under every log. He looks downfield, Kansas players doing the same. Bad news all around. Only hope now is to try and hide the football and come back for it later at some point. Now, two things to know about this, if you didn't bother to read the rule book I sent you all. And the fir the first thing is that I read it, nerd. The first thing is that you aren't allowed to significantly alter on-field structures or terrain. So you can't, for example, bury the ball. If we let people do that, this game would never, ever end. The second thing is that every ball gives off a faint glow in the dark. This means you've got to be really, really skilled at hiding the ball. You've got to put a lot of thought into it. Or in Chuck's case, 
get almost impossibly lucky. He's scurrying the hills around, uh, around in the hills outside of Lost City, desperately try, uh, looking for something to stash the ball. Somewhere to stash the ball. He eventually finds an old storage trunk. It's old, thousands and thousands of years old. To this day, I have no fucking idea how, how it got there or what it's doing in the middle of nowhere. Neither does Chuck, but he doesn't care. It's sunken into the ground, sticking out just enough for Chuck to pry the lid open and drop the ball in. Now, this is when he should look around for landmarks and try to figure out exactly where he's, he's at. But he's panicked and exhausted and seriously sleep deprived. And it's the middle of the night. He glances around, feels like he has a good enough idea of his location and walks out of the hills. When Kansas players intercept him, they find him without a football. He gives them a friendly wave and goes on his way. But like you said, everyone in the country can deduce that it's up there in the hills somewhere. Well, Washington spent all night in the hills. 40 or so players combing every stretch looking for something that glowed in the dark. Couldn't find a fucking thing. After three nights of searching, they gave up. But meanwhile, the rest of the country just assumed Washington with, re recovered it. Yeah, but the, short, the scoreboard showed that Louisiana Tech had the ball on their field, and it still says that now. Why would people assume that? Well, they assumed that Washington took the ball and hid it somewhere else, else on Tech's field. Took it and hid it somewhere way up north, probably. Although, from their perspective, there's no telling. You can do that. Sure, why not? Teams have sometimes done that. It's a known tactic. Why would you hide your ball in somebody else's field if you had the choice? Hey, maybe if you find a real, real good hiding spot, or maybe you just want to drive your opponent's nuts. Remember that all that matters is that you have all the balls on your f own field at the end of the game. Until then, you can dump them wherever you think is safe. To Elysian Attack and everybody, el everyone else, that seemed like a far more reasonable explanation than 40 people sent thir uh, three night spent three nights looking for a glow-in-the-dark football that, is that was hidden by one dude who didn't even know the train and they couldn't find it. And indeed, for the last 63 years, Louisiana Tech has had a ball on their field. They can't find it, and it drives them fucking crazy. Chuck has wanted to sneak back in and find it, but the area is just so hot with activity these days, you couldn't go anywhere near that, these hills without drawing suspicion from Tech. But the UCLA wants to bring the, this, whole, this ball home, so they've struck a deal. You can sort of think of this as an archaeological mission. UCLA called up Louisiana Tech and... It was like, hey, we know exactly where it is. If you let Chuck here on your field for a few days to go get it, we'll change you to a conventional football game on your home field, old school, 100-yard football, with 100 players in each team, when it takes the ball. Holy shit, this is what I want to see. Me too, except he can't fucking find it. <gasps> well, listen, Chuck, I just got a call up top, up top a few minutes ago. No go on the extension. They want to see you out here by sundown. Out of here by sundown. I see. I hope you can see it from our position. We've been led on wild goose chases before. A few years ago, Minnesota fed us fake info, and we ended up pulling a third of our team out of Illinois to go look for it. I know. I heard all about that. Yeah, but I ain't. I ain't pulling your chain, Monica. It's right here. It's right around here, and I know it. Well, you know, they hear all this stuff that you're saying about a treasure chest, and it sounds fantastical. It's real. It was real. For the record, I believe you when you say that. I really do. I just think maybe someone else has already come through and found it. No one could have known when to look. No one else could have found it. Hell, I can't even find it. Well, maybe that should tell you something, shouldn't it? Tell us something, shouldn't it? It could have been on another hill, maybe. You said it, you were dark and it was, and it was tired. You said you didn't have your phone on you, you know. There it is! You're all standing on it! It's right there! And I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But maybe it was on another hill somewhere. And there's lots of train in this part of the state that just looks like this. Our field runs through a lot of it. Oh no, no, I don't take offence. Truth be told, I've been asking that myself for the last few days. And I'm sorry, and I sure am sorry if I led you folks astray. I know it's a big thing asking all these players to come out and help me look all week. But it's here. It's right around here, and I'll always believe that. Oh, come on. Fuck. Fuck. Well, listen, I can vouch for you. My vo my coach is going to be a little upset with this for a while. But maybe in a few years, you know, we can co we can check it out another god hill and see what we, damn it, can find. You know, the chances of that are pretty slim. I, yeah, they are. Well, hey, 
I uh, I mean, I understand. Please tell your coach I'm sorry. I think I might keep looking around here until sundown if it's all the same to you. I don't expect you to come with. Sure, I'll leave you to it. Hey, uh, we're going to be making some corned beef hash for dinner down at camp. You know, to celebrate our new ranking. You're welcome to join when you're done. Might take you up on that, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Ah. God damn. You all saw that, right? You all saw it? Yeah, I did. It was just as you said. The lid was covered in some leaves, that was all. Seems to me they'll find it eventually. Monica clearly believes them. But then, of course, it's not like they, they'll need Chuck to help them. They'll get it on their own. Thus, no 101 on 100 game. Thus, yeah. I'm sorry, Jay. I wanted to see as much as you did. Ha. Huh. It's a little on the nose, though, isn't it? Losing a football right near, near a place called Lost City. Well, if that's on the nose, so is this. What's that? I've found something. I think I know where the chest comes from. You have a minute? Let me check. <laughs> Pioneer 10 console. Run un upcoming events. .exe. Upcoming events calendar. November 8th, 20k20. Happy birthday to Pioneer 9. March 2nd, 2021. Uh, 20k21. Happy birthday to Pioneer 10. <laughs> May 20th, 20k 20 2021. Happy birthday to the G Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer. September 3rd, 11, 11 Passing by Dwarf Star, Hip 11 7795. January 14th, 2091 Passing by Red Giant uh, Aldebaran. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Okay, look at this. Here, I'll just show you. The James boys and the younger brothers. Jesse James. Frank James. Bob, Ju jo Bob Younger. Cole Younger. Lost City, Oklahoma, January 20th. Fate plays strange tricks with mankind. Something more than 30 years ago, young, uh, Cole Younger and the remainder of the ba band headed by Je Jesse James halted at Lost City, during, Lost City during a driving blizzard of snow and sleet, just long enough to bury a little more than $63,000, which they had secured in a bank robbery in Texas. The possibility of pursuit and capture suggests that they bur bury their money at Lost City and return for it later. They never returned. 25 years later, Cole Younger came out of prison, an old man. He returned to his home in Missouri and... and lived the rest of his life dying last fall. But death did not arrive before he found the opportunity of visiting once again the scenes of his earlier adventures, and four years ago, he came to Lost City. Fallen rocks, decayed leaves, rotting trees, and many other changes in the topography of the landscape proved too much for him, however. His quest for the buried money was fruitless. It's possible that it may be hidden through the ages, and the money that was taken out of circulation years ago will be remain forever out of circulation. Wow, it's still in great shape. The nanobots must have designated as a structure to be as a structure and maintained it. Of course, all this money inside is right away. Sorry about your luck, idiot. Oh come on, that's not nice. Wait, hold on. What do you know about the James Young again? Well, I was built by 20th century Americans. So let me see. Apparently, I think he's a Robin Hood with a gun. Oh, that's not right at all. No, it's not. This is gonna be a problem for you, Nine. It was for me. It still is for me sometimes. You got a gift for research. Just remember that this is a country that turned Confederate mass murderers into Johnny Appleseed. Whoa, this one's a classic. I love this movie. Y'all gotta see it. You actually watched this movie? Oh, absolutely not. It's just my favorite movie, is all. Welcome to chapter six. Please like the stream if you like it. 
I'm sure it does absolutely nothing for me. And let's get through this this amazing story of football and space probes. Right. What's the weirdest field? Geogra uh, geometrically, I mean. Hmm. Well, when I first started surveying the field, I was quite hoping, uh, quietly hoping I'd find evidence of some kind of of large ancient conspiracy. I mean, if all the f stadiums were built at angles that pointed to the same spot, would anyone have ever noticed? Seems like a really great satanic ritual. Oh, that's a new one from you. Post-secondary education is sa satanic. Oh yeah, it's just a school you have to pay for and live inside and uh, inside of, and if you're special, you get to work for free. My apologies. Unfortunately, despite my best wishes, I found no such conspiracy. In fact, I was kind of disappointed by how few anomalies I found in the intersections of these lines. I only got one single goddamn three-way intersection. You'd think if you had 111 fields, each of which intersects with another field 20, 30, 40 times, you'd get more than that. But you could argue that gambling state, the grumbling state might be the weirdest field because they come real close at several points. See, down here here in the middle of the Mississippi Sea, Grumbling State missed hitting the Iowa-Mississippi intersection by about 700 yards, which might sound like a lot, but considering their stadium's 90 miles away, that's a very near miss. Wow. And way up northwest in Oklahoma, a good... 350 miles away from Eddie Robson, Robinson Stadium, an even more tragic near miss for the Tigers. If only the Texas and North Texas fields were 250 yards closer together, we would have had it. But unbelievably, from a far greater distance, they had an even nearer miss. Grumbling State shoots its beam all the way from Louisiana no Nowheresville, Montana, and it misses the BY. BYU UNC intersection by 30 yards from about 1,500 miles away. Oof. You have me rooting for lines to run into each other. Incredible. Where's that triple intersection? The one and only three-way intersection is right outside Hillsborough, Ohio, and it just because it just barely counts. Wow. You can see that one little bitty silly, uh, sliver where Washington, Bowling Green and Eastern Mich Michigan overlap. Whole area is about 2,000 square feet, so like a big, a pretty big house worth. It's beautiful. But this doesn't hold any tactical significance, right? No, sometimes things can just be neat. Didn't say they couldn't. Didn't say they couldn't. I just can't um, help but imagine a couple of rule changes that would have in infused something interesting significance. Like if you beep, 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 beep. <laughs> What's that? Oh gosh, it's the extraterrestrial alert siren. We finally found someone out there. I can't believe it. After all this time. What? Well, nah, I'm just fucking with you. Let me see who it is. Hello? Uh, hi. Requesting contact with the commissioner? Oh, hello. Shh, shh. Yeah, I got a work call. This is the commissioner. And may I ask who's calling? This is Manuel uh, Bates. Free safety for the San Diego State. Mr. Bates. Um, of course, how are you? I'm doing good. You know, fear a little sore. I've been on the move. So I've seen. This is quite a, a journey you're on. Uh, well, you know, lots more journey to go. God willing, anyways. <laughs> Inshallah, brother. Okay. Um... Indeed, indeed. Good luck to you. What can I do for you? Well, I was interested in seeking a rule clarification. Some years back, we submitted a game plan for league approval, and it was approved. But my teammate and I were reviewing the document we submitted, and we realized that there's a very minor discrepancy between the approved version and, you know, the what we're planning at the moment. Certainly, let me retrieve it. Give me one moment. Game plan, document, okay. They have submission 20, April 21st, 19733, submitted by San Diego State University, play call 75 Oliver, submitting party, Nick Navarro, uh, San Diego State University, submitting party, Manuel's Bays, uh, San Diego State University, this 
document is attended for the ball commission ball officials only it is a go a good faith application for a planned football maneuver it is understood by the submitting parties that no guarantee can be made regarding said plays legality absent official approval from the ball commissioner who okay further adherent to the addendum 203a of the ball game rules see document cut it out with this fuck shit <laughs> it is it is understood that the ball commissioner will not review applications following the following items involving the following items which have been ruled out ruled illegal universally irrevocably and without exception automobiles airplanes helicopters jetpacks motorcycles four-wheelers dirt bikes electric power bicycles yachts motorboats airboats submarines all driven and pi or piloted ve vehicles of any kind remote controlled vehicles of any kind trained ma animals of any kind rocket spacecraft zeppelins hot air balloons pe pedal powered aircraft any aircraft of any kind catapults designed to launch footballs or human beings trebuchets designed to launch footballs or human beings cannons designed to launch footballs or human beings um something else i don't know what this is designed to launch footballs or human beings Ballist ballistas designed to launch footballs or human beings Mangon mangonels designed to launch footballs or human beings and what is designed to f launch footballs or human beings hovercraft tunneling machines something something or any other motorized vehicle piloted by a human being respecting this addendum helps the ball officials and ball commissioner ensure prompt rulings and response times i'm not sh sure how much of this you remember but we submitted it a long time but basically oh don't worry i'm quite familiar oh don't worry i'm quite familiar Shh. well if you flip to page 33 you'll see the relevant section in this plan we described using d2 but there's been a change in plans and we'd like to proceed with d1 instead i see i'm happy to assist i'll tell you what i'll send some relevant rule documents and we can review them together i'm sure we can find a solution look at this fucking cab oh yes sir i'm ha oh i'm happy to assist sir lady i'm at work okay well you have a job you know what the fuck i'm y'all i'm ta taking this private i'm sorry for the delay mr vase if you would like uh, would kindly look at look first at appendix g of the bzzzt. wow I have never seen him like that. He's so buttoned up, I don't even recognize him. I guess commissioner is a job he takes seriously, for once. I love the open door policy. Wouldn't have guessed he w he'd have that kind of relationship with the players. I think I know what he's doing. Every sports commissioner is hatred. Hated. That's always been the rule. Go to a draft and announce the picks, show up for the game, whatever, and you're always bo booed. Whenever something goes wrong, it's your fault. He's trying to counteract that. God, he's trying. I'm a little touched by that. I wonder what his plan, what this plan's about. Where are Nick and Manny now? I haven't tracked them in a minute. Let me see. Oh, they split up? What the hell? Yeah, it looks like Nick continued north of jo on Georgia Tech. Money cut left on uh, WKU and north of, on Michigan State. Look, they're up in Tennessee. Money's just outside of Emory Co um, Gap, and Nick's up in the hills. Did you notice scoreboard change? Nope, Nick must have all the footballs on the Georgia Tech field still. Oh, yeah. I don't get it. I don't know how splitting up does anything. Neither of them are moving yet, either. I'm sure Juice knows. Fuck that, let's try to figure it out ourselves. Hmm. Okay, well, if Nick's up there in the hills and he's not moving, he must be hiding. Seems like a good place, a uh, good hiding place too. That might all uh, might be all that's happening here. Nick took the footballs and is hunting out in the hills indefinitely. Money is roving around various fields, trying to gain intelligence and find out where the opposing players are. Then one day, months or years from now, Money decides that the coast is clear in the region, and that and he and Nick take the footballs and make a run for it. One guy doing all that scouting. God, you might be right. That would take forever. Of course, if you're going to hide out forever, I can't think of a better spot. What a miserable scrap of land to try and comb through. Yeah, you see those? The structure's just west of the field. Yeah, that's the old bu Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. James Earl Ray Court. 
Uh, this was his first, third es escape attempt at Brushy Mountain. On attempt number on attempt number three, he and some other inmates shoved an um, improvised ladder against the wall. The guard in the nearest tower panicked, tripped over his rifle, fell against the door, and locked himself inside. He was the one guy who could have stopped them. He conquered man's architecture, and next up was nature's, and the mountains crushed him. To, across two and a half days, he didn't even make it ten miles. They found him lying on his back, too exhausted to move. I remember this. When I first woke up, I scanned my residual memory first, looking for transmissions of the things I'd picked up on the, in the first, year, first few years after I was launched. It wasn't until later that I came to realise who he was and what he'd done. At the time, I thought I only thought about the mountains. I was travelling though, uh, travelling through the universe at seven miles per second without even giving the slightest effort. I considered what it would feel like to move with difficulty. I was terrified of those mountains. Well, clearly, there's a lot to like about them too. Michigan State. Michigan State, I get. Huh? You're still looking at this? Yeah, see, their field and Georgia Tech's field don't under intersect. That's the problem. You'd like this game. No, I don't. There are things about it that I like. You like it. Why are you so intent on letting on, letting on that you don't? The thing about Juice and I is, I don't want to encourage him. As game builders, he and I are terrible co collaborators. I see things like chaos and eccentricity as ingredients that should be balanced with other components. He wants to make the whole casserole out of them. And I can only say no so many times without coming off as some sort of hobby. He's the fun one, and by default I'm the boring one. You know I love him, but after all these years I've lost the desire to encourage him. This game means a lot to him though. Clearly it's different. I don't know. What do you think about it? The game itself? I think it's a celebration of the wild outcomes that originate from confines so rigid, so frustratingly lower of the law, that you'd think they'd snuff out any r remotely interesting outcome. And using the old college fields and the angles they sit along, there's a quality of sleep in the bed you made that you could argue is the story of modern America. And inviting 111 teams and placing 111 footballs on the field ensures that It'll take a very, very long time to play. It's like watching a star form. Fascinating to see, boring to watch. We're all ex we all ex we're all experience external eternal eternal lives. We all experience eternal lives and the in interminable nature of this game uh, reminds us that for us, a long time is no time at all. Which personally is a reminder I've found very edifying. I also think it sucks ass. Hmm. So tell me what you're looking at. Okay, suppose Nick and Manny were somehow able to hop directly from Georgia Tech's field to Michigan State's field and take their nine footballs with them. Those nine, naturally, would add to Michigan State's score. This is the change we see on the scoreboard. Of course, Georgia Tech falls out of the top five entirely. Consequently, all the other teams here are bumped up a spot, but Michigan State doesn't move, since they were a number one, they were number one team to begin with. But teams only have access to scoreboards that display that only display the number of footballs that they themselves possess. So if the if you're most teams, all you see is this. If this is what is if this is all you see, what's your best guess at what happened? Well, obviously Georgia Tech lost their footballs, of course. I didn't know how many they had in the first place. 25? 4? No way I can know, just based on this. It's possible that South Carolina State got them, since they moved up a spot. As an aside, this would mean that, the, that number 1 Michigan State and number 2 Georgia Southern are significantly out in front, since uh, SC State adds the Tech footballs to the balls they already had and still only got to 3. But it's also possible that all the tech footballs just fell off the field somewhere. That can happen. We saw with that guy in the truck. Once he drove it off the field, the ball sim simply wasn't reflected on the scoreboard. 
I'd go with that as the most likely scenario. I feel like I'm playing some sort of sinister Sudoku variant. But the one thing you wouldn't automatically deduce is that Michigan State got them, because they didn't budge. Yeah, it's a possibility, but definitely not the only one. Of course, if you're Michigan State, you're very well aware of what just happened, since you can see your total. So if you're nicking money, Michigan State is going to be looking for you, even if they don't necessarily know who you are or where you are on their field. But at least they're the only ones who can actually know what's up. Better just them than the whole country. Right. And this is how hopping over to Michigan State Field would provide them with a lot of camouflage. Obviously, they'd still have to get all the way across the country, but my guess is that if damn near every team in the country sees Georgia Tech just crater on the scoreboard, they're going to send everything they've got to Tech's field just to see if they can spot the ball sitting somewhere just off the field. Nine footballs is an enormous take, and a lot of schools have nothing better to do. And if that happens, it empties out the rest of the country, and Nick and Manny have a far, far less difficult time getting home. But again, this returns us to the central problem. Michigan State and Georgia Tech don't intersect. Spartan Stadium and Bobby Dodd Stadium were both built at almost this exact same angle. If Nick and Manny carried the balls across literally any field to get over to Michigan State, um, that field school would light up on the on the scoreboard. Look, Georgia Tech went way down at the same time that WKU went up. It's obvious to everyone that they, where they crossed. Everyone knows where they're at. They're done. Well, let's just open up every possibility. How can you jump straight from yellow to green without using a third field? Uh, let's get some ideas going, no matter how stupid. For example, Nick could throw it to Manny. The fields are 10 fi miles apart. Right, he can't throw it 10 miles. That's why I said it's stupid. Obviously, the option to just run across is on the table, but they only have 80 minutes of out-of-bounds time to save it up. Not possible. Let me just go down the list. They can't drive, right? Nope, against the rules. You can't drive anything of any kind. There's no steering. No bicycles, then. Nope. You can't ask somebody who near who lives nearby to just deliver it for you. No, non-players are completely forbidden from knowing, knowingly interacting with the ball in any way. And no, you can't stop a football to a trained animal. Clearly, if the guy in the truck is any indication, it's legal for a non-player to unknowingly transport the ball. Hmm, might be something here. Suppose someone works up here and lives here. You can just slip it into their, into their car in the parking lot without them knowing. Make your way to the other field, fish it out of the car in their driveway. Obviously this would require an unimaginable amount of scounding on top of an absurd amount of luck. That seems like it would be legal, technically legal, practically almost impossible. We should ask Juice if it's ever happened. I can't imagine this is Nick and uh, Money's grand plan, though. Yeah, agree. I guess you could, uh, never mind. What? Nah, it's illegal anyway. No ropes longer than 100 feet. It's stupid, never mind. Oh. Oh, you want to, like, tie the footballs to a rope that's miles long, then run along the other side of the field and pull it across? I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's like you're reeling in a fish. Dragging the ball through miles of woods and streets and buildings and everywhere, a million things for it to get stuck on. And if that happens, you gotta burn tons of our bounds time just to get damn thing. Yeah, I know, stupid. Funny though. Hot air balloon unmanned, no one steers it. There's no one in it. I guess you could, but you'd have no no fucking idea where it would end up. Probably in the middle of nowhere. I'm trying to think of natural forces of some kind. Tornado? Alright, Nancy. Oh, no down river, just said in water, worked for Moses. Okay, yeah, that's been done. I've seen it in other games. But in those games, you weren't confined. You could run around wherever you needed to go get it. It's pretty low and very dicey. Pretty slow and pretty very dicey. Really easy for the river to dump the ball on a bank somewhere, even if you set it in a canoe or something. Even then, tough to predict rivers. If you aren't positioned right, it could very easily get past you, and then it's just gone. Yeah, Nick and Manny just have one to just have one to release it and then one to catch it. I think they're invested way they've invested way too many years into this to gamble it on something like that. Damn. Something you don't have to steer. You know you'd think they would have invented teleporters by now. Of course, you'd have to input coordinates anyway, so I guess that's steering. 
Star Trek was set in the 24th century or so, and we're in the 201st century. And the closest thing they have to an intergalactic spaceship is me. Shame. They have replicators, at least, for food and stuff. Lots of good ones at that. Yeah, uh, lots of good, that does me. Hang on. Train. A train? A train's a vehicle. There's nothing in the book specifically that specifically outlaws vehicles, though. Just no steering. You steer a train, though, clearly. When you move the switches, you're essentially steering. You don't, though. It's automated. All you're doing is firing it up and shoving it down the track. Where it goes from there is out of your hands. Well, which line is nearest to Nick and already looked it up? This one. <sighs> Look at where they're positioned. What else would they be doing here? Okay, money's right near that near the track. What's Nick doing up in the hills? Watching for trains. From up here he has a great view of the Oliver Spring of Oliver Springs. He can safely watch for any trains coming through the area. Trains commonly park along this stretch too. Conductors will hop off a train and leave it there for days. Next time a train rolls through and parks along the field, he can run down there, chuck the balls on board, and start the engine. So it becomes a ghost train, essentially. Nick loads it up, shoots it 10 miles west to the Michigan State Field, where money is waiting in em Emory Gap. There are two switches between Oliver Springs and Emory Gap, and it looks like they're both in the right position, at the moment anyway. But you can't stop it. I guess you just have to make sure it runs out of fuel. He'd have to siphon out a lot out of it, probably. Or just punch a leak in the fuel tank. Either way, that's a lot of math to do on their part. It's about a 13 mile trip along the track between the two fields, and money's going to save up every second of OBT he possibly can. If the train stops even a quarter of a mile too, short, too long or too short, that means money has to run a half mile there and get the balls back. Even for someone as fast as him, that's two or three minutes. He can't afford to kill that much time. And this is all supposing the actual locomotive stops on the text on the text field so that Nick can actually go downfield to rig it up. I don't know. This is crazy. I don't think runaway train is a viable strategy. Not here. Look, there are so many bends in the track, and there'd be no one on board to slow it down. No way to keep it from derailing. It's happened before. Well, yeah, there have been runaway trains, but not... Here, right here, this exact spot. A locomotive runs wild behind a fast passenger. Without a driver, engine runs out of railway yard at Emory Gap. Tennessee Central passenger engine number 203 by unknown cause ran out of the local railway yards at Emory Gap this morning at 5, five o'clock at full steam. As soon as the yardman in the, in the Tennessee Central discovered that the engine had left Emory Gap, a train was sent in search of it, overtaking the locomotive when it reached El Elverton. The engine, no worse off for its run, was hauled back to Emory Gap in time to avoid further accident. When the locomotive reached Harriman at 5.03, it was going at the rate of 60 miles an hour. Smoke was pouring out the engine from the engine, and while no engineer was in the cab, the big steamer seemed to gain speed at every mile. Oh my god, this is it. This is what they're doing. Did we guess right? Yep, exactly right. We did it. What do we win? A free copy of my self-published ebook, Wayne Gets the Measles. Condolences to Wayne. Essentially, Wayne comes home from fourth grade one day feeling under the weather. Alfred keeps him out of school for the next few day, few weeks and tells him, no crime fighting until you're better. Without Wayne's shoulders to stand on, his brother uh, Bruce must crawl into the suit and fight crime all by himself, but he's awful at it. His cape is way too long, so he keeps tripping on it. Can't see where he's going. Drives the Batmobile into the side of a Denny's. That sounds actually pretty funny. It's not that to be funny, and frankly, I'm a little hurt that you would say like that. Let's talk about something else. When you were writing the rule book, did you leave the train loophole on purpose? No, I honestly thought I made it illegal. Northwestern's field runs along the train. Um, runs along a train depot in Chicago some time back. They approached me and argued that since you don't steer trains, they're legal. But had no choice to rule in favor. In their favor, ultimately though, they couldn't find a way to make it useful. Yeah, it seems like the use cases are a little limited, but this certainly would be the first effective use of a train we've seen in this game. Nick's a skilled engineer, no question, but I still have my doubts about him. 
There are so many unknowns. You shove something out there into the horizon, so far off you can't see it, and have no control of where it goes. Just You just hope it finds its way. You would know a little something about that. Sure would. Pioneer 9 blazes into the into sun orbit. Craft will detect storms hazardous to moonbound flights. A perfect launch and a perfect spacecraft, said the spokesman for the National Aeronautics and Spe Space Administration's Arms Research. Ames Research? Um, sender. The agency in charge of the Pioneer program. A companion craft that is circling the sun in a smaller orbit, Pioneer 9, has not been heard from since mid-1983 and attempts to turn its transmitter back on have failed. Another attempt is planned next summer when it is near Earth. Pioneer 9 dead after 18 years in space. A little 18-year-old satellite called Pioneer 9 has been declared dead after years of highly successful studies of interplanetary space, NASA officials reported last week. 80 command sequences were sent to Pioneer 9, he said. The result was nothing. On the ba basis of that and many others, other attempts, we've decided we can no longer communicate with Pioneer 9. Think of it as having been in a coma, but NASA uh, added NASA's so spokeswoman, Linda Blum. Now it's officially dead. Chapter 7 20k20 by John Boyce. Let's just go for it, shall we? All right. All right. I sent a few flies over. You should get them in a minute. All right. When's the last time you were in Tennessee, Mike? Long time, man. Long time. Probably eight, nine hundred years ago. You should make a trip up, a trip here sometime. Trees are beautiful in the fall, especially if you can get up high somewhere. You see any of those big neon signs when you cross the state line? Nah, none. When you cross in Tennessee from the tech field, you just pass through woods. So I lived in the Georgia in Georgia way back. The big thing everybody was uh, everybody did that did was, uh, you you know basically all fireworks are illegal in Georgia, right? Like you can get sparklers, but that's about it. Yeah, so everybody ju would just t drive up to Tennessee, where you could buy any kind of fireworks you wanted. It was all legal, and as soon as you crossed the, into Tennessee on I-75, you get a sunburn from the, all the neon signs for fireworks places. So it was like a religious pilgrimage. Yeah, exactly. I remember one time, me and my dude, his name was Nick too, actually, we got this thing uh, that was like a super-powered Roman candle, and Nick was was a fucking idiot. And we're on his front porch, which is like screened in, you know, and he decides he's going to shoot it off right there and then. Oh, no. And I swear to God, you know, when the nanobots detect that something about uh, something's about to go real bad, it's not like normal where you can't really see them. If it's like if it's an emergency, you can actually see a cloud of them. Yeah, sure. You can almost hear him like, oh, shit. Like, they're mad, and I'm telling you, a cloud shut up off the ground and knocked the lighter out of his hand. Holy shit. I swear, those nanos have emotion. <laughs> Emotions. Or maybe just one emotion. They just get annoyed with you, having to save people from danger for the rest of time. They should be able to talk. Yeah. Like, if you're about to set off a Roman candle indoors, you'll hear this big, big booming voice out of nowhere. Danger. Danger. Idiot is near. Halt, citizen. Warning, warning. You are dumb as fuck. Mike, Batsy, gum, uh, grumbling state. Height 5'8", weight 170 pounds, born 18th of the 3rd, 1993, Slidell, Los Angeles. Mike does not particularly enjoy crossword puzzles. They're fine, I guess. <laughs> I've done a few before, obviously. But I don't really have an opinion on them one way or another. To each their own. <laughs> Fantastic interview from the football card company here. <laughs> Reads like the Nixon Frost interviews. I guess when you issue a football card for the same guy for 2,000 years, you start to run dry. 
Looks like San Diego State and Grambling State have a partnership or something. That's why Nick and Mike are talking. Yep. It makes sense for both of them. Uh, both programs are basically totally irrelevant on the scoreboard. Grumbling has zero for polls. SDSU only has one because nobody's bothered to run across the desert and play for it. Neither program is on, uh, on anybody's radar. Alright, I got him. I appreciate you taking a look. It's good to have another set of eyes on it. What the fuck is, it, is this hand ring, man? You write with this, this with your right hand? Well, yeah, I'm right-handed. How do you all do that? Right, right-handed, I mean. I don't know, I just do. It's so weird when people write right-handed. Like, whenever I try to do it, it comes up out, out all fucked up looking. Okay, you've got 500 ton miles per gallon here. You know what? Uh, you know that varies a lot, depending on the locomotive. And that's only at full speed. Yeah, I figured it was good enough a good enough guess, since I have no idea what kind of locomotive is going to pull up. And then around 100 tons per subsequent car if it's full of cargo. You gotta push it all all just over thirteen miles. I mean It doesn't look wrong. It could be more right, but it doesn't look wrong. You're probably gonna be looking at a short looking for a short haul train, right? On this track, most likely. Maybe just a dozen cars or so. I'm gonna pull up some elevation data. Give me just a minute. Once again, I enjoy it when players from opposing teams are pals. This one seems like an actual alliance. Yep, Grumbling is really the only team that make, that takes SDSU seriously. Nick and Manny hit them up a while back because unlike a lot of programs, Grumbling actually does the shit when they say when they're going to do. Uh, say they're going to do. Right now, they can offer SDSU assistance with play calling, which they need badly right now. Grumbling has some players on the team on the team uh, who are engineers, mathematicians, whatnot. Folks who are real useful when you're trying to put together a game plan. Remember though, SDSU is a joke. Almost all their players are players only on paper. Uh, on paper only. Here, look at the OBT on this roster. roster. <laughs> Most have absolutely no time accrued. Which means they haven't been seen on the roster for uh, a roster a year. On the roster a year, like number twenty six is just on the team. Ironically, he actually hates sports and plays in a retro fourteen thousand style uh, rapabilly rapabilly band where the drummer is a rapper. What's rapabilly? I'll let you solve that puzzle. Oh no, not rockabilly rap. Christ, easily the best possible genre of music. Eternal life and heaven are not the same thing, turns out. Anyway, point is, most of the players who sign up as a joke. As a joke, yeah. Or maybe to just fulfill some dream they have of being a football player, if only on paper. Although there are others who do suit up and are fully intent on taking it all serious. They think they can do it. And for a few years or decades, or, or even centuries, they do. But it's like, alright... Being a San Diego State player means that in order to actually play the game, you have to run that five mile stretch across the desert. If you're a very well conditioned athlete, you can make it in around 30 minutes. 30 minutes is 1,800 seconds. You get one second of OBT time a year, so you need to wait around for, wait around for almost 2,000 years. But hey, in the meantime, enjoy the city of San Diego. Oh, what I mean to say is enjoy the little last sliver of San Diego. Enjoy the one coffee shop you got. Enjoy the four, 34 square feet in the dining area of that Thai place, of the Thai place you love. It's a great spot. Make friends with the people whose lawns you can legally wander around in. People love it when you do that. Uh, enjoy your stay. Let's touch, ba touch base in 18 goddamn centuries. <laughs> so nobody stays. Less, least of all, somebody uh, with any kind of talent for this game. Players, planners, whoever. Recruiting must be a nightmare. Nick and Manny have a coach, and a couple of rookies who stand around doing jack shit mostly, still hundreds and hundreds of years away from the day they'll actually get to play football. Who knows how much longer they're going to last. God, they've got nobody. And that's why they need grumbling. Well, this is a pain in the ass. Look it. Oh yeah, that stretch around Elverton. Um, I was trying to figure out how to use that. It drops about 100 feet there. But it makes a few slight curves along that stretch that'll slow it down. What do you think? Man, we're still flying blind here. We can't go walk down the track and scout it. Scout it out. 
We've got no idea what condition the track's in, how much it banks, where it banks. We don't even know what kind of train you're going to get. Going downhill like that is going to give you a little push for sure, but we can't read it anywhere near precise enough to make an intelligent call on how much fuel you need. Plan on it, but don't use it, you know? Um, this is the same hill that stopped the runaway train in 1910. No shit. Look. There is a steep upgrade just this side of Elverton. As the big locomotive reached this spot, the steam in the, its pistons was about exhausted, and the engine stopped halfway up the incline, just a few minutes behind the Harriman passenger train. That train was going the opposite way, but it was steep enough to stop it going up. You figure it'll ex accelerate pretty sign significantly going down. What I'm more interested in is this little dude at the very end there. Big hill when it pulls into Emory Gap. Yeah, that's going to be my break. I'm hoping the fuel runs out a little before that point. The train starts coasting and the hill eases it to a stop. It might. I'm trying to rig it up so that it stops right before it gets to Michigan State. If it hits the field or overshoots by a little, we can work with that. But the second the footballs hit the field, they're going to see it on the scoreboard. Yeah, I get you. You'd rather let it chill just off the field for a while. Let Michigan State notice Georgia Tech fall down the scoreboard and let their players down to Tech instead of, of looking for you. Yeah, and once we feel like they've took the bait, after a few days we'll pick up the balls and run. That buys us some time and space at least. I'm trying to park it like 10 or 20 yards from the field, any more than that, and that's just going to be more seconds of OBT money's going to have to spend to run out and get it. We need every second. I know you do, man. But look, you're trying to pull right up to a section of the track that's 72 yards long. You're shooting across more than 20,000 yards to get there. This is like put, trying to put a golf ball from more than 100 yards out. But not only that, you're not even allowed to walk around the green and get a feel for it. You want my advance as an engineer? You can't engineer this shit. Too much shit you don't know. Just get it in, a, in the ballpark and hope you get lucky. Don't use any math you learned after Algebra 1. That'll get you on the dartboard. But luck's the only thing that you're going to get you the bullseye. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We just got to save every second, man. If I miss by too much, like if it's a couple of hundred yards away from the field, we could we that could be a minute of OBT he has to burn. Money only has 18 minutes now. It's already going to be real tough making that running Cali. We're going to have to run about 5 miles at 3.36 a mile. Just take a, just take just a minute off, and that's like three twenty four a mile. What pace did you did you all uh, make when you run it last time? Three fifty three. God damn. You all have about the, uh, the same amount of OBT, right? We both have seventeen minutes and fifty nine seconds. Yeah. I think what happens here, and I know you don't want to hear this, but I think what happens here is he takes the hit and you make the run alone. I think you need to get ready for a world where you can't make the run, where you can make the run and he can't. I can't do that, man. I can't think like that. What I do is the difference between him making it home and getting ejected. I can't fuck this up for him. I had a nightmare last night where I started the train, sent it down the track and missed by a ton. He had to spend five minutes running down the track to go after it. And they say you can't do math in dreams, but that's bullshit. Because I know that 5 minutes was 300 seconds, and 300 seconds, seconds is 300 years of OBT. 300 years he spent saving up that time, staying on the field, cooking me dinner, making me laugh, being there for every time I fucked up about something. And like, it was like, I could see those years just vanishing from history, just disappearing. Or because I fucked it up, because I didn't do the math right, f forgot something, guessed wrong. You can't see it like that. When you and your husband took your vows, I guarantee there was nothing in it in there about being God. It's never been anybody's responsibility to do what's impossible. It's not yours. You think it's impossible? No. But you don't have to, all the numbers, so it won't be all it won't be about the math. Here, let me tell you about the prettiest throw I've ever seen. The time you saw a quarterback drop one in and you were like how the fuck did you, they do that? Uh? Well, this isn't one of the best throw, isn't the best throw I've ever seen. It definitely wasn't even an important throw in the big scheme of things. God, I can barely remember what it even looked like. I don't think I, I've seen it since I saw it on TV. 
it was a Mike Vick throw. So I guess this would have been around, uh, have been the year 2000 or 2050, sometime around then, where whenever it was he was in the NFL. It ba it's basically garbage time, right? He's on the Eagles at this point. Eagles are down a couple of scores, and there's like a minute left. Game's pretty much over. It's fourth and long. Vic does all you can do in that situation, which is just throw it for the end zone. But he's got uh, the tight end, Brad uh, Kellick, I think. Brent Kellick. He's got defenders all over him, but Vic whips it in him, into him. The thing about the way this ball looked in the air, it was like an optical illusion. On TV, it looked like it was going at like a thousand miles an hour. No arc to it. it. looked like a bullet. But the thing is, when they showed the replay close up, when it landed in Cleric's hands, it dropped. If all you saw was that close-up shot, it looked like it floated to him, floated perfectly through all the defender's limbs, through a window that was exactly one football wide, right in there. Touchdown didn't matter, they lost, but it was a touchdown. I don't even remember that one. Nah, I bet nobody does, not even him. You know what I'd bet on, bet anything on though? Even at that moment, if you went up and asked him how he threw it, he wouldn't be able to tell you. I mean, yeah, he'd be able to say, you know, I saw, I made these reads and this was my progression, this was what the pressure I was feeling on the right side of the line. This is how much confidence I had in, in my guy to haul it in. But the force he put on the ball, the motion of his arm, the timing of it, fuck no. He couldn't tell you how he did that. No one ever can. It's just something you do. And yeah, 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 with this one, you got to train, you got maps, you got calculations. You're not working the mechanics that he did. You're just filling a diesel tank and throwing a few switches. But it's still a throw. You just got to feel it. Okay, you'll check it out. I checked the manifest. We should have a train coming down the track tomorrow. I was thinking we could run a broadcast. Oh, like a live play-by-play? -play? Yeah, this is the biggest thing to happen in this game, and I don't know how long. We've got to do something special for it. Check it out. I've been building a Chiron package and everything. <laughs> figure out, uh, figure we can stick this in the other left corner. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. And obviously we can update the scoreboard whenever those footballs leave. Uh, text field, and then eventually we'll put up a big old 24 for Michigan State, hopefully. You, w you know what might be cool? Would it be possible to get a running clock for Nick and Manny's OBT? Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Is that too much trouble? No, definitely not. Hold on. How about that? And then we could just have the seconds tick down whenever they're off the field. Perfect. Any guesses to how much OBT they're going to lose? Well, I gotta say, I think Mike was right. How well Nick places this throw has less to do with how smart or well prepared he is and more to do with luck. I actually think he's gonna he'll overshoot the field by a mile or so. Feels like they're underestimating how far that train is gonna coast. Hate to say it, but I have at many loses like four minutes running after it. As for Nick, that's all about where the locomotive's parked. It's never gonna it's never the exact same place. I bet he loses thirty seconds running up to the cab to start it. I'll be an optimist then. I say Nick fires a direct hit and his train stops right on the spot on top of the Spartans field. Neither loses a second. Could happen. And if it does, we'll have the coverage. So I was hoping I could have y'all on the crew. I I can run the scoreboard. Nine, you're good at tracking data. You wanna watch the other teams to see if they just to see if they move? Got it. And ten, you're always the best at camera work. Wanna be the director? Um so wait, I'm sorry, who is this broadcast for? I mean you know, just us, just for fun. Ah, uh, come on, what? It's fine if you think this is dumb, but you know how much this means to him. But I mean, look at the graphics package. It's so sloppy. He just took the first layer and stretched it out. Diagonal lines don't run parallel. Who cares? It's just us. I mean, come on, sis. It would make him so happy. Ah, I know. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know what? This sounds fun. I'll work the camera. Hell yeah! I thought you were just going to say no. I was like, fuck. Fuck else is she going to do? Alright, lots of teams to track. 
I'm going to get started now. Where do I get that, that data? Here, I'll give you access to all the team's logs. I hope this goes without saying. Do not share this with fucking anybody, please. Oh, yeah. Promise. Oh, shit. All right. So I can pull up Ohio State. And what it's showing me here is that Ohio State has a squad of 41 players just a little south of the stadium. Yep. And their play call at the moment is to head south. And then then hanging a little left to go east on UNC's field. Yep. We know this how. Oh, game officials have full access to every team's communication logs. It's updated in real time, too. This is great. Why didn't you show me this before? Wow. I wonder why they're headed down there. Maybe they're just kind of going fishing, making the rounds through a few fields and ho hoping they'll run into a team with a football. Oh, wait, there's 41 of them. So they might just ha just plan on sifting through UNC's field at, in, a, in a horizontal line, looking for a football that someone's hidden. You figure if the field's 160 feet wide, that's about four feet per player, just looking down and kicking over leaves and stuff. Wait, couldn't be that. UNC doesn't have any footballs on the scoreboard. What are they doing? This is so cool. Hey, lady. Hmm? Just wanted to say thanks. I think this game means a lot to Nine. I appreciate you showing enthusiasm for it. Oh, uh, I... Of course. <sighs> <laughs> Fucking 10 o'clock. Yawn. <laughs> oh. Oh, fuck. Come on, pick up. Hey, you've reached Manuel Bay's. Free safety for your San Diego State. Wake up, Jesus. Aztecs and official notary public for photos, autographs, or notarizations meet me at the 2,400 yard line southeast of the stadium, Mondays and Fridays between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Leave your message after the beep. Beep. Babe, call me as soon as you get this. We got a train. It's almost perfect. Three cars. Can't tell you what engine it is yet, but it's just barely off the field. Uh, bet I can reach the fuel tank. We should go tonight. Call me back. Oh shit, that train is almost as good as they could ask for. Sounds like they're going to go live tonight. You good to go? Yep. Alright, let's start the broadcast at 6pm Eastern. You excited? Two nobodies about to set every talk show, talk show in this country on fire for the next 50 years. Everyone will know something happened. Something big. Something that will make a lot of people mad and hurt a lot of feelings. And yet they won't actually know what happened. Perfect recipe for lunacy. Yes, I'm excited. Locomotive runs wild behind fast passenger. Without a driver, engine runs off railway yards at every gap. Okay, I'm just going to play. One night in May of 1910, a train mysteriously bolted out of the railway yard at Emory Gap, Tennessee, without a driver. It managed to reach a speed of 60 miles per hour before finally reaching an incline a few miles away and coming to a stop. 18,110 years later, San Diego State football is about to attempt the same stunt along the very same track. Thanks for tuning in. You are looking live as we go. We bring you today's coverage of San Diego State versus the world as they attempt to lateral the ball between the fields of Georgia Tech and Michigan State. Bringing you the reaction today will be myself, the juicy icy, the Jupiter icy moon moons explorer, along with me in the booth is my broadcast partner, Pioneer Nine. Glad to be here with you, here, partner. This broadcast is brought to you by Lunchable Sushi with a crisp crapper roll and a ham filling. You'll nope, fine. We're joining the action now as Nick uh, Navarro gets ready to make the throw, siphoning diesel fuel out of the tank. The tank is Navarro. His aim is to start the engine and just give it enough fuel to stop at a nearby Emory Gap, about 13 miles away. In the 2,216 year history of football game, for, of the ball game, uh, I've seen a few schemes as ambitious as this one. Looks like he's just letting it spill on the ground. Yep. Welcome home, fuel. It's appearing he's leaving about five and a half gallons of diesel. Very unusual call there. I don't think he's going to get enough to zip on the ball. Uh, what do you th make of it, partner? I have to agree. This train's got three cars in it. You figure you're only going to get around one mile per gallon, but he needs double this much to make it 13 miles. He could be hanging his receiver out there out to dry here. Well, apparently he's satisfied. Before he leaves the cab, he sets the footballs right there on the outside of the chassis. Smart move there, if you look. You can see the ball is still within Georgia Tech's field. He doesn't want to set their alarm bells off until the very last possible minute. Running to the cab now is Navarro with his OBT 
officially rolling. Nine, this is the first time he's stepped off the field in centuries. He's got to get this engine started as quickly as possible. Every second that rolls off the clock, Jay, that's a second that it'll take a, an, extra, an entire year to earn back. Ten seconds off the clock now. We'll be following the train as it rolls west. Strap in with us. Twenty seconds. This is too much time. Thirty seconds. This is getting into dangerous territory. If he kills too much time, he's not going to even have a shot at the desert running California. Um, 45 seconds gone now for Navarro. This play is turning into a disaster for San Diego State. Way too much time in the pocket. He's going to get rid of the ball. What is he doing? I don't know if the en there's engine trouble or what. Uh, what a scene here in Tennessee. At this point, Navarro is effectively taking himself off the running to make it home to San Diego. And here we go! Navarro jumps off the train and lets it ghost ride. He's back on the field as OBT stops at six mi 16 minutes and 43 seconds. Crucial amount of time burned there, off the clock there. Tell you what, this train is moving faster than I thought it would. We're going to see if we can get a pick... Uh, gonna give you a picture of something here. Ten, can we get a camera on the tech field right on the track? He uncoupled it. He uncoupled the freight cars. Never clearly taking out extra time off the field so he could uncouple the locomotive. It must have given him some trouble, but what a move. And all of a sudden, five and a half gallons of fuel sounds just about right. Meanwhile, it looks like Georgia Tech's taken notice, and wow, all the squads are immediately being called back. All the teams in Michigan, too. Back in Tennessee, the train makes some some turns as we enter the home stretch. And partner, it's slowing down at just the right time. Wow. What an approach. <laughs> And the train's coming to a stop. That's only 50 yards from the field. Incredible touch on this throw. Unbelievable. His receiver's only going to need to burn a few seconds of OBT to go get it. And now all that's left to do is wait for the programs across the country to notice the scoreboard. There's Ohio State, they clearly saw the ball, saw the scoreboard clearly and they're wasting no time. And there's Georgia sending a little more than 60. Look at Oklahoma State, they're sending the house after them. Purdue. South Carolina sending 100 players. They're all coming. They're taking the bait, it worked. Jesus Christ, it worked, holy fuck. Squads from all over the, are converging on the Georgia Tech field. The whole country's lighting up. And friends, it ain't there. It's right under everybody's noses. They got no fucking idea. Friends, this is instantly one of the greatest throws in college football history. The locomotive lateral. The locomotive lateral. Aw, oh, you're shitting me. I had that in my pocket for 20 years. <laughs> Sorry. Fuck. Chapter 8 of 20k20. Here we go. I'm thinking, look, I'm thinking we both head south and wait right at the edge of the WKU field. We sit a few days and we wait for other teams to pass on through. Then we can meet up again as soon as we've let a few teams pass on their way to tech. You and me meet back up and head northwest on WKU. I know we talked about heading up to Iowa before we cut west, but I'm saying don't fuck with any of that. We gotta get these balls cross country fast as we fucking can, you know? I think we just cut west on Oklahoma State and then run our asses straight to Stillwater, meet up with Mike and them at Grambling there. That's a lot of time to spend on one field, but fuck it. 
the west was pretty empty at, to start with. And then there's just two of us. We can hide if someone comes through. Probably up a tree somewhere if we have to. You know? Okay. Uh, well, what do you think? Okay. Plus, I issued a challenge. They say they can give me back those 10 seconds of OBT. They said it was a scorer's error. Okay. Babe, why the fuck did you do that? It's the only way I could have done it, Manny. Only way. You know it wasn't. Look, you gotta trust me to throw. You said you trusted me to make the throw. I tried to do the math with all the cars on it, and it was just too much involved. Way more weight. That could have made that could make it coast too long. Way more wheels. That's way uh, way more resistance. There was no way I could. I had to simplify. Like I had to feel it. The engine and three cars. I couldn't get grip on that. But if it's just the engine, I feel I could. You punked out. You punked out on that shit. Oh come on, Mike. Tell Mike tell you to do that shit. I mean, not exactly. No. I don't understand why you, if breaking off the cars was such a big deal, I don't understand why you can't just break off the uh, the connector thing. The coupler, I told you, I already told you why I couldn't do that. With these new ones, you can only do it from the cab. There's no release on the coupler itself, you gotta do it remotely. And it only, it just took me a minute, for the whole thing to boot up and all, it just took me a minute. Yeah, literally a minute, more than that. You needed every second of that to cross the desert. You and me, we're a team, you know? We've got to make decisions together. You have no right to just pop off and do shit like that. I know, I just knew that. I mean, what the fuck am I going to do without you, Nick? I, If I can make it home and you can't? I still can. I, I can still try. Yeah, with fucking... What's the math? You're going to run five... Uh, three, three minute, twenty miles? I mean, you know I've been training. Yeah, on the treadmill in Atlanta, in air conditioning, running flat... And you still couldn't hit that. But look at you, though. You're still going to have almost all your time. I mean, look what I did for you. I made a fucking miracle happen. And I'm like, you're putting me on in the shit here. I pulled off a fucking miracle. Did for me? Best thing you could have did, did for me is keeping your time. Giving me a partner. Giving me my fucking husband. Look, come on. I mean, what happens if coach calls you back? I bet if I was coach, I'd look at your time and be like, no, you got to wait. you got to wait on the field another hundred years. And then she'd make me try and run it by myself. Babe, I don't want to do a hundred years without you. I know. I could do it. I'd wait a hundred years. Would you wait for me? Hi everybody, if you could just, if I could get, please get everybody's attention. Hey folks, if I could just have a minute before we get started. Thank you. I'd just like to welcome everyone, everybody to the game night at Illinois Chess Club. This is the first night of the fall season and I'm happy to see so many new faces. I think some of you have already met her, and if you haven't, I'd like to announce that we've got a celebrity in the room tonight. Over there at table number seven, we've got Laurie Irving as a special guest. Laurie's a college football player with Texas A&M. If everyone could give her a hand. L Laurie, how uh, familiar are you with Illinois chess? Hi, uh, actually, this is my first time playing Illinois chess. I've played some standard chess tournaments, uh, but this is a new one for me. I I'm sure I'll pick up the rules as I go. Well, we're so happy to have happy you're here, and I hope you you enjoy Illinois the Illinois variant. What brings you to Illinois? Unless you don't want to leak too much of the playbook. Oh no, not a problem at all. I'm playing to prevent for uh, playing prevent for Texas A&M. I was just assigned to a position a couple of years ago. And I know you've got a lot of football fans. We've got a lot of football fans in the room. But for those who aren't familiar, what does it mean to play prevent? Well, Northern Illinois is one of the fields we think of as sort of the gateway to the West. It runs north and south, and my job is to patrol up and down the field and sort of be ready to try and make an interception if someone tries to bring a football out west. Or if there's a whole team and I can't take them on, I'll just scout them and let my teammates know. So you're playing chess in the middle of a football game. I guess you can do it all, huh? Uh, well, we'll see. Wish me luck. Of course. Good luck to Laurie and everyone else here. And I think everybody's aware 
Everyone's aware, but I'm obligated to let everyone know. Just for the record, this building is on no Northern Illinois' field. We don't expect any disruptions, and we've never run into a situation like that. But if there is a football coming through the area, and we've got action in here, I've received approval from the Illinois Chess Association to suspend matches or nullify results. If there were to be any disruption in play, I'd meet both players on uh, both players of the match, of each match, and find a resolution that works for everybody. All right. That's all for me, unless there are any questions. Okay, great. I'll be here in case anybody has any questions or needs or any rule clarifications. Have a good match, everyone. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, oh, uh, you're the banker. Whoever plays black is the banker. Oh, all right, sure. What? I'd like to buy Jolo, please. Uh, here is $400. So what does that get you? Well, now I can charge rent on this square. It's 10%. So if I ever, if you ever move a piece to Jolet, you'd have to pay me $40 every turn you spend on it. Jesus Christ. Is everything all right? No, yeah. No, sure, yeah. All right, E3. Are you going to buy Aurora? Nah, I don't think so. So I'll just tell you because you're new tell you this because you're new. You definitely want to buy as many squares in the middle of the board as you can. That's why they're so expensive. I'll pass for now. Suit yourself. D4. Knight C6. Decline in the gambit, huh? Okay. Here's $1,000. Annexing Rockford and Juliet. Joylo. What? <laughs> What's that? Rook Factory. Every four turns I get a Rook now. If I annex a, f a third adjacent property, that accelerates to three turns. Okay. Uh, capturing on d4, then. Gotta bust up, uh, up your factory. Can't do that. I can't? No, sorry, you need to build a consortium first. How do I do that? To build a consortium, you move, you move both bishops to the same file, and then leave them there for ten turns. For those ten turns, you can't move a piece. Basically, building a consortium counts as the move. This is something else. You'll pick it up pretty quickly. Is there any significance to the city names themselves? Nah, not really. It's pretty much the biggest cities in the middle. And then it just sort of spirals out into smaller towns. Too bad Luca didn't make it on here. Uh, we've got more history than almost any city in Illinois. I mean, this is where Alexander the Great is buried. What? Okay, so you've got one more turn before you earn the consortium. Once that happens, you... Wait, tell me the Alexander, Alexander the Great thing again? Oh, well, yeah. Somewhere around here, the remains of Alexander the Great and Cleopatra are buried. Okay. I'm serious. Ask around. Anyone in this town will tell you. Haha, <laughs> alright. We're not sure of the exact year, but around 100 BC, a bunch of colonists from Greece and some Phoenicians, and some people from Northern Africa fled to the Old World with a bunch of treasure, and that included the remains of uh, Ptolemy, Cleopatra, and Alexander the Great. They sailed their ships up through the Mississippi River, River, then started exploring the land. Eventually, they got to Illinois and found some caves around here, and evidently, they thought it was the perfect place to hide the treasure. Now, around that time, there was... Salem, Illinois. Here in a remote southern Illinois valley between Big Tater Hill and Little Tater Hill, a Florida archaeologist exploration company claims to be on the cusp of a discovery of global significance that the remains of Alexander the Great, Plutomy, and Cleopatra are in the area of Illinois. And you see, the thing, is, the thing to know about that is, these were clearly Phoenician ships. They found rock coffins of Alexander the Great in the classic Greek style. Now, as to exactly where... That's what NASA's secretly been trying to find out for quite a long time, but it's very difficult to... What is really going down, going on down near the region that, coincidentally, has long been known as Little Egypt? Are the Florida treasure hunters on the verge of the great dis greatest discovery since King Tut's tomb? Are they the true believe believers themselves, or are they just involved in some sort of sorry scam? We are legitimate businessmen. <laughs> And I mean, think about it. Those academic types have every reason to discredit us. If people from Greece and Libya came to Illinois a thousand years before Columbus did, that topples over every pillar in their ivory tower. It disrupts their whole worldview. So of course they're going to say that's uh, that all of this is made up. 
But ask yourself this, if it's a hoax, how come every time you ask someone in Luca about Alexander the Great, every single one of them will tell you his bones are nearby? Are all those people just magically wrong? You know what I think, if we're being honest, it is that a fateful day 16 years ago when he stepped on on a booby trap that opened a stone lid on a pit, he managed to cling to the side of the pit and escape. He also encountered a male spirit guarding the tomb. His name is Charlie. He was within me, with me 24 hours a day and sometimes he would jabber all night. Wrote also of playing cat and mouse in the woods near the cave with a swarthy uh, zoting men whom he believes were searching for his find. But of course he blew up the cave entrance because he didn't want anyone looting his treasure he found. And in all the years since, we haven't been able to find the entrance. But based on his journals, we know it's somewhere south of Luca. That much we we know to be a scientific fact. And he gave a false description of its location in his in his book to throw off looters. He said, kind of a breakaway segment of us who think it's ex it was extraterrestrials. Me, you know, I'm a scientist, so I think every theory is worth exploring. But I don't think there was anything of an extraterrestrial nature at work here. Nothing supernatural or anything. Just a lot. <coughs> just a lost chapter of history. Anyways, I've been rambling, so it's been ten turns now, so you're eligible to challenge my factory in the annexed squares. Could you move your stuff off the table here? You actually believe this? All of this shit? It's not a joke, you actually believe it? Well, yes. Could you move your stuff off the table? We need it for the arbitration phase of the game. Now that you've earned a consortium, you can now use the arbitration to try and take my factory off the board. If you could just... We need more room on the table. Now you're in arbitration mode. In order to enter the four sanctums, you're going to have to read either need to either a rook or a queen or a king. If you're desperate, since you are, you have to have have to move horizontally along the corridors. To win arbitration, you must defeat the knight, bishop, pawn, and rook as uh, uh, you see before you. But where the four sanctums, traveller, wizards and warlocks await ye, goblins and ghouls round every corner. Wow. So you can move, you know. You can move whenever. Um, I was wondering. You're really cute. I mean, I think you're really pretty. And I was wondering if you'd want to go on a date sometime. Or, like, this could be a date right now, if you wanted to count it as a date. I've got a lot more stuff about the ancient hidden, hidden treasure cave, I could tell you. There's other variants to this game we could play, too. Like, there's an expansion set where you, if you land in, on Chicago, the game transfers to another board that represents Cook, Cook County. And you're awarded a new type of piece called a councilman, who, like, you roll a set of dice, and however many you roll is how many spaces the councilman moves. Personally, I don't think it's a very strong piece, but there are some strong players who play up in the Rockford chapter who have found some really interesting ways to utilize it. Since the visor, the vizier moves both horizontally and vertically, it's a good way to establish control of a given rank or file, especially in the early game, when you typically haven't developed your rooks yet. The visor, on the other hand, the, the vizier, on the other hand, starts the game on the second rank with, with the pawns, so you can immediately seize control of a rank or file, even if you can't do so uh, with much precision, there's no way of knowing how many spaces the dice will let you move. But it does discourage your opponent from stepping into the into its field of attack. Of course, the Cook County board is about 10 feet wide, and even though you get 304 pieces and four, 304 pawns, uh, you only get one vizier. So essentially it's a gimmick option in the vast majority of options. I usually just sacrifice my vizier early in the game so I can set up a strong pawn structure in the Cicero area of the board, or Skokie, depending on how the game's going. Or wait, I've been saying vizier instead of councilman. Did I say vizier? Anyways, I used to call it used to be called vizier, but it's the councilman in the new version. I've actually gotten both versions at my house, and we can play either one. There's no actual difference between the two versions except from one of them. That one of them, the special places called pieces called the Vizier, and the other one, newer version is called the Councilman. There's a really good gas station next to my house. Bzzit, 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 bzzit. I've got to take this. Excuse me. Just for your information, according to the chapter rules, if you leave a table during a match, you have to surrender one dollar thirty-eight uh, in in-game money for every minute you're absent. Okay. 
Coach, Christ, thanks for calling. You got me away from the situation. There's this guy, you know, I told you I met the chess club tonight. And this guy keeps talking about... Yeah? I'm in Luka right now. From here? I guess I'd just take the WK field, WKU field and hit Georgia Tech that way. About 300, 350 miles, probably. What happened? I don't know. I don't think they have a TV here. All right. All right. Checking. Excuse me, I'm sorry. A little bit of a weird question, but I don't suppose you happen to have a TV here? We do. Sorry to be annoying and I hate to ask, but could I turn on the news for a minute? Did something happen? Apparently. I'm on the phone with my coach and he says something's going on. Oh, well, all right, sure. Something about the game? Yeah, he's just saying to look at the scoreboard. Hmm, what channel? What channel? He says any channel. Okay. Some really stunning movement here, Chuck. So if you follow me o over to the big game board, the big board, if you, I could get the camera to follow me over here. There are a few college football, these are the college football rankings. What you're seeing here is that we just saw the, it live in the newsroom just minutes ago. Sponsored by Kimberly Simmons. My roll of aluminium foil is messed up because I have too many things in the kitchen drawer where I keep it. When I went to open it, the box part got caught and the box is all ripped up. So I can't use the sharp edge thing to tear pieces off anymore. <laughs> so, so reliable. In an instant, 58 teams jumped up a spot in the leaderboard. So if you're South Carolina State, congratulations to you. You now sit in sole position of third place. If you're Cincinnati, Howard or Ta Texas, congratulations to you. You're now tied for four fourth ranked team in the nation. Jesus, Georgia Tech. Congratulations also to Oklahoma. After some 400 years out, uh, out of the top 25, you now find yourself back there as you pull into the tie for the 12th. But the big story, of course, Chuck, and the movement that shifted more than half the teams in college football up the rankings is Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets are in free fall. One second they were a number thir three team in the nation, the next they plummet plummeted into tie for the 40th place. Given that teams with equal numbers are listed alphabetically, it seems almost certain that Tech, however many footballs they had, lost every single one of them. What we're seeing here, folks, <coughs> is not the fading of a dynasty, it's not the crumbling of a dynasty, it's the dynasty, it's dynasty that's vanished in an instant. And I can only imagine what, see, what the scene is tonight at Bobby Dodd Stadium. I don't believe this. Do you have to leave? In a minute, probably. The question now is for all of us in the newsroom, for every team in the nation, and for all the amateur sleuths on the internet message boards, the mystery we'll be trying to solve in the coming days, weeks, perhaps even years, is this. Where are those footballs? Two schools of thought are already forming among our news team here in Los Angeles. One supposes that they've all moved to Georgia Southern, whose field shares an intersection with Georgia Tax. Oh, no, nah, it wasn't that. But Chuck, this would require a very specific set of circumstances here. Let's zoom in on the top three. On at the top three. You'll notice, uh, because yeah, You'll notice that the top two teams in the country, Michigan State and Georgia Southern, didn't move an inch. Of course, we didn't know. We don't know exactly how many footballs they have. Our best estimates previously put Michigan State around 25 and Georgia Southern at at least 20. At Georgia Tech, the, at 15 or very close to it. So let's just do some pretend math here. Again, these are nothing more than guesses. So let's play it out here. If our estimates are anywhere near correct, Tech, Tech's footballs could not have transferred to Georgia Stadium. That would have given them 35, which would have knocked Michigan State out of the top spot. That did not happen. The Spartans did not, didn't move. And since we can virtually be virtually certain that Georgia Tech lost every one of their footballs, not just a portion of them, I think at the moment it's much more likely that either Tech moved, moved them just off the field somewhere for safekeeping, or an opponent stole them and did the same. At any rate, we've not... Uh, we've now got half the teams in the country making a beeline for Tech's field. We've got reports that TCU is sending 35 players, Kentucky sending, sending dozens. There is blood in the water, and Chuck, this is the most seismic event college football has seen in hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. 
not, if not a thousand years. If our estimates are anywhere near correct, Tex footballs could not have transferred to Georgia st- Southern. That would have given them 35, which would have knocked Michigan State out of the top spot. That did not happen. The Spartans didn't move. And since we can be virtually certain that Georgia Tech lost every single one of their footballs, not just a portion of them, I think, at the moment, it's much more likely that either Tech moved them just off the field somewhere for safekeeping or an opponent stole them and did the same. Wait, did I just... I just... Damn it, I just met the same paragraph twice. I'm so sorry, everyone. Anyway, at any rate, we've now got half the teams in the country making a beeline for Tech's field. We've got reports that TCU is sending 30 players. Damn it, I'm doing it again. <laughs> and Kentucky sending dozens. There is blood in the water, and Chuck, this is the most seismic event football has seen in hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. Oh no, it is repeated. Okay. Um, I'm sorry to bail on a match. Uh, but I need to pack up. It's fine, no problem. Wait, you can't leave. You haven't finished arbitration. Sorry, nice meeting you. Abandoning a match will lower your rating from 1,200 to 1,150 automatically. It'll take you years to re-establish your rating. You'll never be able to play a match against someone of my caliber again. I'm a third category regional master. Stop. Please stop. You're out of line. We've worked for centuries to build a reputation of the Illinois chess community. This is bullshit. It was an emergency situation. Rule 37C permits a player to abandon the match in the event of emergency situation. This qualifies under that rule. Oh, what? Did a sports ball happen? (laughs) I've been reading up on this theory. I can't help myself. So as the story goes, people from around the Mediterranean casually scooped up the remains of Alexander the Great, Cleopatra, which of course was a very easy thing to do, then sailed across the Atlantic, navigated through the Caribbean, found Mississippi Delta, sailed north, just embarked there for some reason, then decided that future Illinois, of all places, was where they buried them. Yeah, settlement needs three things to thrive. Fresh water, White Castle, Crystal. To argue that they would have bypassed their shared slider territory of Tennessee Valley, only to sell exclusively in steam burger lands, is absurd. People believe this shit? Yeah, we're talking a handful of people. But yeah, I wonder what motivates that. In this particular case, a couple of things are going on. First, some hooks doesn't invented a story to try to make a buck. Second, it's sort of an origin story that latched on with some who really need to feel like people are from the old world are supposed to be there. Yeah. But more broadly, I think, a, coincidence, a consequence of stealing land is that you never find find the significance of it. Whatever lies you made up justifies the crimes will fa- to justify your crimes will fade away. There are lots of people who grow up down there in a society missing spirit, perhaps anything sacred. Some feel that they've found it in this eternal paradise. Others have concluded that they'll never find it and have come peace with that. Then there are some some who in this post consequence existence need to assign the sort of historical importance here that they see in Paris and is about about the <laughs> or Bangkok. It's here in abundance, of course. It's just the history that they choose not to think about. I thought about that a lot when I worked on this game. I spent years negotiating with various people and properties along these fields. A lot of Native American tribes gave permission to players to pass through their lands. Some didn't. Remember the game in Georgia a couple of weeks back? With those beautiful bums who threw the football on the highway? I bet you anything they didn't know that this but ball ground Georgia is the site of the Cherokee people once used to play games of stickball. By incredible coincidence, if you continue southwest on the Clems- Clemson fi- uh, field, you find Ball Play, Alabama, where the Cherokee did the same. Here they played stickball to resolve disputes. It was a rough game, Injus- injuries abou- abounded, but it was a genius invention, innovation because it served as a substitute for warfare. For a while, whoever played, men, uh, everyone played, men, women, old, young, whoever. They called it Little Brother of War. Absolutely brilliant. A big sprawling game, far larger than any conventional sport would al- that would al- follow. De- designed as a substitute for death. It's inspired me beyond words. I mean... Does it remind you of anything? Chapter 9, 20k20. Let's go. Uh, 
Okay, just checking the test of audio. Okay. Who was talking? Okay, let me start again. Because I realized I broke a second there. We're going to get through this. You and I, we're going to get through this. <laughs> okay. Chapter 9, 20k20 by John Boyce. Okay, let's get into it. Shh. Who is talking? Shh. <laughs> Here we see the rare Commodore. Don't capitalize, you'll only frighten it. The wonder built Commodores have been scarcely seen in recent times, but just months ago, they sent a team of 57 up to Michigan. They managed to pop the ball loose and now they're trying to creep back home with it. They're in Southern Indiana now, which in normal conditions is a spaghetti dungeon so busy most ball coloring teams would prefer to avoid it altogether. You mean Spaghetti Junction? Oh yeah. Actually, you know what? I like Spaghetti Dungeon. That's what it's called now. Wow. Just a bit northwest of Louisville, the fields of Vanderbilt, Purdue, Middle Tennessee State, Notre Dame, Tennessee, Troy, UNC, Kentucky, and Ole Miss uh, create this mess here. Vandy is now enjoying the same hospi hospitable climate that's benefiting San Diego State. Down near the whole country is bum Russian Georgia Tech's field, which is many miles east. They've encountered virtually no resistance on their way south. They've let their guard down. It's the perfect environment for a predator. <sighs> You're letting out, out a lot of David Attenborough energy. I like it. Is that, the, is that the set in Forget It Guy? <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly who it is. A 57-player offense against an 8-player defense is more or less what I've been waiting for, uh, waiting to see for weeks. All I really want to see is whether those 8 have a plan to not make it look bad. If I were UAB and I wanted to actually take my awful chances, I'd probably just take my chances and call it Zero Blitz. Well, lady, you can't call a zero blitz every time. Not with that attitude. Then again, say you do call blitz and somehow create a turnover in the resulting panic. There, uh, you're then an eight-player offense against a 57-player defense. What then? UAB doesn't have to play Vandy here, right? As long as they don't issue a challenge, they can walk, just walk on through. Yep, but they're going to play. What's important for you all to know is this. The University of Alabama Birmingham is the greatest team in college football, and it ain't even fucking close. They're better than Michigan State, better than everybody. It's been this way forever. For a while, they were top-ranked team in the, in the country. UAB used to stomp all over the country in this giant 100-player offense. You never s ever see offenses like that now. It's like, you know, how prehistoric creatures were big as fuck and then they got a lot smaller over time because being big as fuck wasn't sustainable. Well, that's what they were like. In the early days, they'd pack up a couple of footballs and just go on a tour all around, over the country, across everyone's field. That doesn't make any sense. Just out in the open? Oh yeah, it was a damn parade, is what that what it was. Sounds like an Im intimidation tactic. Eh, I guess. I mean, it can be useful to scare the fuck out of your opponent in some cases, but in this case, it made everyone in the country get serious about carefully hiding the footballs they had. I think it kind of worked against them, honestly. They did this for fun. They were the best and they wanted everyone to know it. They wanted to bully the fuck out of every other team in the nation. And you know what's wild? Nobody could ever do anything about it. Nobody could stop them. And their 100 player offense. Not even with another 100 player offense. No matter how many times they tried, Purdue sent the house after them. Wazoo, USC, Colorado, Michigan, Ohio State, everybody. And it was like they were all part of the of a christening, just glass bottles shattered against the hull. They never forced a turnover on downs or fumble or a fumble or an INT. They all fall eventually, though. Every dynasty ends. Every simple power slips up. It's inevitable. No, no. It turns out it's not. UAB ran a hundred-player offense. They called the Steamroller. They developed it for a couple hundred years, and when they're ready to show it to the world, you know what they did? They didn't keep it quiet. They didn't make their opponents spend endless nights in the film room studying maps, trying to figure out what they were doing. 
They printed out, out their playbook on posters and shipped it out to them, out to everybody else. Like, here's what we're doing. Here's exactly what we're going to do to your stupid ass. Do something about it. The disrespect. Okay, I'm not reading the names, but I'll read the titles. Um, University of Alabama and Birmingham. These are your 19... Uh, 188 UAB Blazers, steamroller formation shown below. These are the UAB's eight deep threat receivers. Each runs a post route, cutting infield 50 yards after the last. 19 receivers flood, flood the first 50 yards, running an array of slant, dig, flag, and curl routes. The five shallow quarterbacks may attempt a quick strike, run the option, or pitch the ball to the, deep, the two deep quarterbacks in multiple situations. Multiple quarterbacks have been known to make passes. This is the shadow offense, um, which often shifts upfield to line the scrimmage during big gain attempts. QB6 attempts the majority of deep throws. This is the castle keep, the auxiliary defense which lacks a single running back, a virtually impenetrable and reserved Virtually is virtually impenetrable and reserved for throws of more than 300 yards. When not utilized, this offense will commonly shift up to add protection to, for QB6. Okay. Men on the home field. Okay. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that? Yeah, it's just about the scariest thing I've seen. God. Seven quarterbacks? Yep. Each one specializing in something different. Like, let's just take the five up top. Robinson was a dispatcher. She'd take the shotgun snap and immediately pitch it to somewhere on else. Never ever stood in the pocket with it. Never tried a forward pass, never tucked and run. Her skill was in reading the defense, knowing who to pitch to, and never ever fucking it up. Quarterback two was Bev. If she got the pitch, she'd, lit she'd make literally one read, and if, that if it wasn't a home run, she'd get rid of it. And quarterback three... Cox was the same deal, except in some cases he's a cheat right. Look it. To his right was basically a conveyor belt of receivers heading upfield. Sometimes he'd just tuck it in with them and use them as blockers to uh, to run up the right side. In the de if the defense was lined up favorably, anyway. This whole thing is like a chemistry set. How often did he do that? It would be like 1 in 20 plays. When it worked, you can imagine how tough it was to bottle him up. Great option to have. Now, quarterback four and quarterback five. In a lot of situations, they were dispatchers like Robinson, just shuttled the ball to where it needed to go. But they did some pretty fun shit in cases where they had two footballs. I'm guessing in that case, two linemen would just become centers. Yep, correct. And these centers were so good as long, at long snapping that they could direct snap it all the way back there to, to him if they wanted. Then these two could spend all day making their reads and popping, <laughs> popping off a throw. Uh, I remember one time Aston had the ball, right? And they, they find a target, the receiver walker, and throw. And then Morris pitches them the ball. And now they, they now tr get to try two comp uh, completions on a single play, right? So they chuck it to Walker again, and he catches it again. Real funny to watch a receiver bring a ball down with his free hand while he's already carrying one. Quarterback seven looks like he'd have enough time uh, to smoke a brisket. <laughs> Quarterback seven was the funniest part of all this. It was mostly built around uh, Yamuchi and his particular skill set. This man was and is one of the best d distance throwers in the nation. It's just 300 yards here. Yeah, there's a lot can, there can be. There's a lot to be said about how we. Can't expect human beings to change in meaningful ways. <coughs> they still have marital problems and stub their toes in houses they've lived in for thousands of years, etc., etc. And in, at a point, expecting further improvement from people is like asking a tree to learn how to fly. But one of these things is they did get a lot better at uh, get a lot better at over the last eighteen thousand years or so was throwing fucking bombs. If you train and condition the right way, and if you develop the right mechanics. You can chuck it a go to goddamn Norway. Yamuchi's fo longest longest completion travelled 587 yards in the air. Trouble is, of course, it's real tough to maintain accuracy over that distance. It's dangerous and there are way safer ways to advance the ball that are just as effective. They didn't let him throw it all that often, but holy fuck was it a sight when it happened. 
Wow. That leaves quarterback six as the primary quarterback. Yep, Valentin's uh, incredible. Valentin's like, name one of the only conventional quarterbacks, anyone. Troy Aikman. No, like a good one. All right, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, there we go. Good pocket mobility, strong arm, uh, extremely mistake adverse, terrifying accuracy. All the things Valentine has in spades. But most important is her ability to make reads. The other six quarterbacks on the field were very good at this, but the way that Val could make her reads, it was like watching somebody sit in a par on a park bench on a nice day, leisurely reading, uh, analyze that cover to cover. I mean, sometimes they would just empty out most of the backfield. They'd sit, send damn near every eligible receiver, the eight deep wideouts and the 19 standard wideouts, the entire end, eight running backs. That's 36 reads she had to make. But she also had lots of pocket protection. Even the biggest, scariest defenses took a good 30 seconds to get to her. It should not be legal for someone like Valentine to have, uh, Valentine to have that much time in the pocket. She would just eat defenses alive. It wasn't even a. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It took me a minute. But I think you. Uh, but you think analyze that was Brook. Uh, all right. I'll be honest. I saw uh, uh, and analyze that lunchbox and just assumed it, in, it inspired a book at some point. There was a. Hang on. Tell me about this lunchbox. It was a. It was like a, a lunchbox that had two guys on it, and it said analyze that on it. And you thought they were a book based off of it. Y yeah. So like the foundational work for an entire book would be a lunchbox with two random guys on it. And the words analyze that with no explanation or context. Sure, why not? Seems like there's a lot of the, uh, <laughs> a lot there. Never mind. Ha, <laughs> love it when you stop punctuating. It's like you're groaning, it's endearing. Fuck you, there's nothing endearing about me. True, all the charisma in the Pioneer family was passed down to me. Where's Valentine now? Still there, she's still on the team. UAB stopped doing their parades a long time ago, which sucks for her, her. that's what she was good at. So what happened? Okay, um, the movie Predator was called Predator. Okay, this is by Jordan Becker. The movie Predator was called Predator because it predated Predator 2. How Predator 2 got its name, I have no idea. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, what do you mean nothing? Why don't they have any footballs? Oh, yeah, some important shit to fill you in on there. But first, I'm receiving word from myself uh, that we have some live action now in Indiana. The eight players from UAB have sprung up on Vandy and uh, they're challenging them to a scrimmage play. Oh, God. Lol. I know I'm new here, but that offense looks hideous. Yep. Break it down for us, if you would. Well, this formation is known as the Leapfrog. The Leapfrog? Come on. I thought we put this to bed in the 1400s. 14,000s. <laughs> you know how people are, though. Can't stop trying stuff that doesn't work. Unfortunately, sometimes bad ideas work just often enough to stick around. The upside of leapfro the Leapfrog is that it's easy to run if you're lacking in talent, confidence, courage, ability, heart, ambition, those sorts of things. The main criticism I have of the Leapfrog formation is that it's a bunch of stupid fuck shit. It's, prim it's run primarily by losers, scrubs, clowns, chumps, suckers, marks, herbs, and even by busters on occasion. What we got here is five senders, essentially the one up top shotgun snaps for the sen second sender, who then pitches it back to the four third, fourth, etc. until it actually gets to the quarterback. This quarterback enjoys the protection of several offense lines, in this case, seven groups of five linemen. He's got eight wideouts on each side of the field, plus a tight end, so he's basically got tons and tons of time to choose between 17 eligible targets. It's safe to the point of irresponsibility, yes. The quarterback gets a pocket way behind the scrimmage, and he could literally take a nap back there if he wanted to. It's also totally passive. Your receivers will run out of stuff to do and routes to run, they have to improvise. You're basically just hiding in your house, peeking through the blinds and waiting for the neighbors you don't get along with to go inside. To do this when you are, you outnumber the defense 57 to 8 is scaredy cat shit. I mean, if you were to be scared of a mouse, it'd be this one. UOB's only got a rowboat's worth of players, but 
hear the talent they're putting on the field. The, but the talent they're putting on the field here is several classes above Vandy's. Obviously, they kind of have to play zero uh, play zone here. That's fine though, because they these are eight of the most menacing DBs you'll find anywhere. Terrifyingly quick, and they play all kinds of games with you too. They've set so many traps for you that you don't even know uh, that you even even if you do find a good look, you'll hesitate. Throwing this throwing into this defense is a nightmare. But hey, at least you don't get sacked. At least you won't get your precious little clothes dirty, unless. You see it? Ah, you see it. Yeah, you see it. Is it legal? Is what legal? Oh, it's perfectly legal. 100% legal. Is Vanti that dumb? Well, I'll put it like this. You don't get out much. They don't, they don't get out much. And there's a reason why UAB picked this exact point in the map to take them on. Oh, I see it. Yeah, there, look. One of their prevent strategy, uh, safeties is dropping back. They're going to try it. That's Val. She's still on the team? Yeah. Oh yeah. Almost everyone you saw on that 800 year old poster is still on the team. Few teams are, are as dedicated as this one. They're in it till the end. So she's a safety now. Yeah, and she is not all that happy about it either. Even still, she's great at it. You never even know she used to be a quarterback. It's debatable, but arguable that she's the best all around player in the country. She's going to have to sprint about 255 yards to make it to the ball. Her teammates just going to have her just have to divert their attention for long enough. Here she goes. Watch the triangle, Vandy. Watch the triangle. There's the triangle. Make him tap. The referee has called an end to this match at 17 seconds. Oh my god, she's gone. It's over. Oh fuck. I love it so much. All that pocket protection for nothing. Holy shit, that's funny. You like it? You like my game, see? No, 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 no. There are things I like about uh, about it I like. That's different. Uh-huh. Val. Valentine. What, what took you all so long to catch up? Uh, I've been here an hour. Well, you know, Perry can't move as fast as you can. Perry, what the fuck? I got the wrong boots back in Evansville. What's wrong with them? They're dress boots. I grabbed a box and I thought they were hiking boots. Had the wrong boots in it. Well, your stride is all fucked up looking. You run like you were born with a dozen dicks. Get some new fucking boots. Who cares? You know they weren't, ca they weren't catching us anyway. Pfft, no, they weren't. We need some real fucking competition. We're gonna get soft if we don't. It's not even fun playing with a team like Vandu. That shit used to be fun. Remember when that was fun? Slapping the shit out of everybody? That was clean, though. That was clean what you did. You just put a hand out and blap. You even touch him? Nah. What's fucked up is, his blockers didn't even turn around at first. I actually turned back and looked after a few yards. And most of them were just standing around. They didn't even know what happened. It was like I stole somebody's purse on the side sidewalk. Some of these teams out here, man. They've got no heart. Does Vandy even... Does Vandy have anybody who's been on the team more than 100 years? Don't think so. We're gonna get soft if this is the only competition we got. Shit, I won't complain. Easy for us. Fuck that. Statistics are not made available by the University of Alabama Birmingham's football program. Huh. You've been cranky all day. Yeah, no shit. Cranky even for you, though. Well, we forgot the boats. Every time we move through here, we forget to pack, ra pack rafts. What's up? We got a lake coming up? Look past the tree line. Ah, uh, quarry water's so fucking nasty. I don't want to swim through that shit. Just sits there like toilet water. Mosquitoes everywhere. They gotta start killing the mosquitoes. They're God's creatures. We can't kill the mosquitoes. Don't start this again. They're nasty. What do they do for every for anybody? Well, do you vote? No. Well, you got no right to complain, then. If you want to get rid of them so bad, cast your vote. I don't do politics. Jones suspends Senate campaign. September 12th, 12.48, 10.38am Central Time. Birmingham Wire Report. Activist Valentine Jones has, ele has elected to suspend her campaign for the United States Senate 
This announcement, the announcement was made from the campaign's headquarters. Although I've reached the difficult decision to suspend my campaign, I will not abandon my fight against mosquitoes, Jones said in a prepared mar remarks. I remain convinced that we can and will find the suitable alternative food sources for bats, birds, toads, all of God's creatures who feed on those these bedbugs of the sky. Jones ran as a member of the Fuck Mosquitoes Party, a fringe, mo fringe movement de dedicated to the nationwide eradication of mosquitoes, following some key congressional wins in the mid 1200s. Its public support for the party has waned in favor of pro-mosquito conservatist sentiment along vote among voters. As of Friday, Jones was polling at 14%. Maybe it wouldn't be such a problem if we didn't have all these quarries sitting around. Look at this. Look at all this stone they dug up. It was just minding its own business for millions of years in the middle of Indiana, and they dug it up to build, what, a strip mall or something? You see any big majestic buildings around here? Seriously, what the fuck do you think they even built out of it? <laughs> Hell if I know. <laughs> okay. Hell if I know. And now we've got to wade through, through it so someone could build a Baskin Robbins. You know what we should do? We should go up to uh, Bloomington. We should play IU right now. That ain't in the playbook. I don't give a shit. I mean, what for though? They've got 80, 90 players up there. And, you know, they don't even keep their ball there. Yeah, it's perfect. We gotta get some reps in. Uh, we got one play against Vandy, and that's not enough. You know how stupid that is? The job was to grab a football and bring it back north to the house. That's how we win, one ball at a time. That's always been the plan. In the meantime, we run scrimmages to stay sharp, we scout out other teams, and we plan for them. It's not the same, and you, you know it's not. Look, we can take on 90 Indiana bums with our eight, you know we can, and you know that Memorial Stadium's a horseshoe. We won't even have to grapple up the walls or anything. No turnstiles or gates or anything. We'll just we'll have to pass through. Come on. No, I mean, no, it's not the plan. I hear you. I hear what you're saying, and I know it's an issue. I know we're going to stay in game. we got to stay in game shape. There are smarter ways to do that than this. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. I'm the coach of this football team, and I'm telling you no. All right, all right. God damn, I thought winning would be different. You know this game is all about waiting. I always knew that, but like, I just run up and stripped the ball without touching anybody, and picked it up and ran a long way. That ain't football. And now I'm about to go wade around in mosquito piss, and this that ain't football either. It is now. Whatever it used to be doesn't quite matter. You could always quit. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while I think about that. And then I think, well, what the fuck else am I going to do? The 21st and 22nd centuries were wild times. After people with the, after, after people around the world stopped falling ill in 2026, humanity was obsessed with learning why and how this has hap was happened. Um, of course, while other countries still found time to rebuild Antarctica and build flood walls, America left the stove on. It impacted everyone differently. This is how it hit Alabama football. Now, in its early days, UAB was always an afterthought. Sitting in the shadow of Alabama and Auburn, the football program even shut down entirely for a while before everyone hollered, everybody hollered about it and brought it back. There were plans to move in uh, to a brand new stadium in 2021, but an economic crisis hit and plans fell through. What kind of economic crisis? Hell if I can remember. Point is, they had to st stay put in their old ass stadium. Fast forward a few decades, and all of a sudden, UAB is the primary standard bearer for the most crazy football crazy state in the nation. They've been waiting on a ball game of this magnitude for thousands of years. Naturally, when they all got it, they were all they went all in. UAB recruited the top talents and scrutinized every yard of the field from the jump. They were the best team in the country. 
Um, but more importantly, they understand this game better than any other program. No matter how great you are, this is a game of scouting and waiting and staying patient. If you recover from a ball, it could be decades, even centuries before you get another. In the meantime, if you sit high on the scoreboard, you become a target, right? You don't want to look. You don't want that. And I mean. What happened to Georgia Tech? In order to stay off their radar, UAB decided to hide their balls somewhere off the field. This is generally very risky, and it's ended in disaster for a few teams. But you know, it's a good thing they never moved into that new stadium, because if they did, their field wouldn't reach here. Standard Rock Lighthouse is the loneliest spot in the US. This the Standard Rock Lighthouse sits dead in the middle of Lake Superior and is 200 yards from UAB's field. It is the loneliest place in America. It is remote, obsolete, abandoned and forgotten by virtually everyone, except the University of Alabama Birmingham football program. Though you won't see it on the scoreboard. They have 17 footballs and they keep them all in this lighthouse. Whenever they gain a football, they row out and drop it in. This doesn't seem safe. Someone's gonna find it. I mean, it's a lighthouse. Being visible is the entire point of a lighthouse. It's funny, right? People built a building that screams, Hey, idiot, look at this. Look at me. And then they forgot about it. It doesn't show up on maps, and understandably, it doesn't occur to any team to go dick about in the lake, especially out of bounds. This is the genius of UAB's game plan, and everybody thinks they're a bunch of zeros who can't hold on to a football longer than a few months. But they know they're winning. They're the fastest, they're the strongest and smartest, and they keep all of their assets under the table. They're going to win this, and they know it. Roll Tide. Dumb, roll Dumb Tide. Chapter 10. John Boyce, 20k20. Let's go for him. State of Florida, 1845. Etium Hicksmus, maybe? You all can sit anywhere here on, at the counter you want, or feel free to take a booth. What do you think? You want, want a booth? I don't know. Let's do the counter. Let's be the counter crew. Okay. Got a new recruit, Gunner? Yep, we got Bryce here. He's going to be our new QB too. Well, congratulations to our newest Trojan. I knew it was a special occasion. You all haven't been down here in too long. Bryce, you ought to be honored. Oh, it's a big day, Linda. Big day for our new guy here. Well, I hope I sure hope you enjoy. The menus are right there in the rack with the salt and pepper. You'll take your time and let me know when you're ready to order. Oh, and you'll want I can put the football on. Oh yeah, please, that'd be great. Tell you what, Bryce. I'm not gonna lie to you. Part of the reason I've been looking forward to this is sitting at, the, at a counter and getting a hot plate of food. I could have put my order a month ago, Linda. Um, I could have stuffed it stuffed it in an envelope and mailed it to you. Three eggs, sunny side up, double order of hash browns and a side sausage. Tell you what, the only eggs I've had all this year are scrambled eggs that come out of all rubbery. It's hard cooking on a propane stove. Oh, you've got those little ones, right? Yeah, just one of them tiny little jobs. And it's a little steel mess kit. And if you don't wash it right after you eat, it's hell to get those eggs scraped off them. Half of me wants to quit and ask you for a job. Um, le at least I'd get a nice flat top to cook on. You're a football hero, Gunner. Who else is going to run the Troy defense? You're damn right. You're damn right. Han, you still looking? You want to order something? My treat. Uh, some uh, burger. You got it. <laughs> you got it. I remember this guy. Yeah? Yeah, Bryce. He'd wander into this game or that from time to time. Never stuck around. I remember he used to irritate me. He was a gifted he was a gifted eternal paradise, and not only did he not take advantage of it, it didn't even occur to him that it he was delivered a miracle. I get that self-improvement is only so important now, but Jesus. You'd think that after a few thousand years he'd at least give it a try. Instead, he'd just lean on the side of his uh, Acura hatchback in some parking lot, always wearing these cargo shorts and a giant white t-shirt, mumbling into his flip phone, always having some argument with a friend over some $20, $20 weird deal. The only thing he'd ever talk about was how he was going to install an undercarriage lights on it in his hatchback. 
I checked on in on him 200 years later, and he was still doing the exact same thing in more or less the exact same place. He never got those lights put in. Even in a post-scarcity world, a world where you can just go to an ATM and there's 500 bucks already waiting in the tray for you, you can go do this wherever you want. And he never did. He just stood around and talked about it. <laughs> then I got older, and I came to realize how perfectly fine that is. I can tell you every single thing about the Hades star cluster, the Hades star cluster, anything and everything you want to know. Bryce probably thinks the sun is a hundred miles from Earth. I couldn't tell you which of us is happier. You know, spend it however you want. You'll never run out. This guy is cool. This guy is me. It's why I love you. Took me a minute though. Oh, I know. I mean, I won't lie to you, son. I'll tell you the same thing I tell every recruit. Our field at Troy is not a fun field. Have a look at it here. If you could just take a look at it here. Field guide, Troy. Ooh, it's very bouncy. Lol, their field is dog shit. Just a matter of bad luck, really. There's this stretch of about a million yards where it runs into absolutely nothing. Like in Croydon, Indiana, there's a gumball machine, and that's that's like it, though. In terms of amenities, we've got we've got pretty rotten luck. You can see where in where in Ponce, uh, Ponce all the way down south, and believe it or not, this is the only place you can get a hot meal in a restaurant between here and Indianapolis. Even going through Troy, the field manages to make a clean miss of every restaurant in town. Same with all the other little towns here. Then north of Indy, it's pretty slim pickings as well. I should let you know in uh, Muskegon, Muskegon, Muskegon. There's an Arby's, but the field only runs along the front door and to the corner with the coordinates and whatnot. Used to be there. It used to be they were nice enough to come around the counter and give and bring you your order your order out to you, but they got tired of being hustled, so they put up a sign saying counter service only. <laughs> Sometimes, if you're extra hungry and extra tired tired of camp food, you can squeeze yourself out some horsey sauce. That's about it, though. Between Indianapolis and Canada, that's it. No grocery stores, no department stores, nothing. Man, I'll just go to another field. Well, you see. And you know, not everybody is happy about this, but this is the way to do it at Troy. For the first hundred years, you'll play defense. And you know what that means. When you're on a 25 player defensive squad, you can't leave the field, it's against the rules. But this way, it's actually good, I think. By the time your hundred years are up, you transfer to the offensive unit. You'll know every single branch of every single tree of, on this field. Psh, yeah, kid, fuck this. Get the fuck out of there, this shit sucks. Well, well, you know, you'll, pro you'll probably be a superstar in this program once you do. The Troy football program, you know, we really value those who know our field inside and out. Other programs think they can safely f uh, hide a ball on our field. No, sir. No, sir, they can't. We'll sniff it right out. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm still trying to get it up on the TV. The cable man gave us a new clicker, and I'm trying to figure out how to make it work with the old box. I guess if it's... Oh, just where there they are and how in the world georgia tech allowed this to happen there you go boy there you boys go <laughs> guess it's a they have one of those talk shows on appreciate you linda and this is what we know clark on the night of J october 12th the and that was just one week ago today georgia tech who had re remained one of the top five teams in the nation for more than 400 years did not fall did not just fall out of the top five. They did not just fall out of the top 25. They fall all the way to the bottom, Clark. And you know what, Marty? I'm sitting up next to you today with egg on my face. I believed in Georgia Tech. When it first happened, the line coming out of Bobby Dodd, Bobby Dodd Stadium was, look, we're re relocating our footballs. We've moved them off, off the sideline to somewhere more secure. And I believed them. And now we find that they're all, in fact, on the WKU field incontrovertibly points to the fact that this was a cover-up. They lied to their fans, they lied to America, they have no clue, just like the rest of us. Oh shit, they're on the WKU field now, huh? Yeah, I'll track them down one sec. And what's shocking about this moment, what's most shocking of all, is that dynasties fall piece by piece, Clark. They don't collapse all at once like this. This doesn't happen. You are absolutely right, Marty. Something like this belongs in the ancient era of this game. We're talking 17, 1700s or the 1800s. Way early on in this game. 
before the strategies and schools of thought were even really were really clearly developed before superpowers learned how to be smart about how they carried their footballs and where they hide them uh, this was a failure of leadership there is no reason that a team in the uh, 20k 20s should be keeping every football in one place no matter how secure it is no matter who's guarding it and i think the only way forward is for conor M uh, o'malley to step down as the leader of the georgia tech football program i couldn't agree more and you know what I will go further than that. I think they need to overhaul the entire program. If I'm in, I'm the athletic director at Georgia Tech, I cut every every player on my team. I pull people in from the street. I rebuild and spend the next 500 years training them up into a team that can win. Because you know what? The sun has set on this era. It's over. No one in no one in Orlando wants to hear it, but it's over. And now, of course, the most the important questions for the rest of the country is who has these those footballs, and where are they? Speaking of that, I believe Stacy has a forecast for us. Stacy? Yes. Clark, Clark and Marty, thank you. We were expecting to see one of the biggest logjams we've seen in college football in decades, and we are certainly seeing that right now. Uh, if we could get the scoreboard on screen? Yes, thank you. If you look at the scoreboard, you can see the movement we saw in the rankings yesterday. Oh, 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 yeah. Stop saying six of one, half a dozen of the other. Instead, say six of each. <laughs> the former is a foolish turn of phrase, and if it used in my class, I would fail you. <laughs> you can see here as WKU absolutely faults up the sco scoreboard from nearly the very bottom of all the way, uh, bottom all the way up to sole possession of the number three ranking. Naturally, we can conclude here that however many footballs Georgia Tech lost. Most, if not all of them, were taken to the WKU field. And for those of those who are perhaps not as familiar with this region of the field, Georgia Tech's field intersects with WKU's right there in so so southeastern Tennessee. That's where they crossed. So that's where the teams are from all around the country are converging. And already, guys, this is unlike any scene we've witnessed in a long, long time. We have Alabama A&M with 100 players combing the area looking for these footballs. Duke has more than 30. Vanderbilt has sent 68. Georgia is just so southeast of the intersection with nearly 40 players. Jeez. Tennessee is sending dozens. Wake Forest has 100 here now, combing the mountains. 100 from Virgi Virginia Tech are arriving. Guys, within this stretch of field, we have already nearly 800 players, and many, many more are on the way. I wouldn't be surprised to see half the players in college football on or near the Western Kentucky, Western Kentucky field in a few days' time. Stacy, what kind of search area are we looking at? Well, Clark, it's reasonable to believe that they're within a stretch of the field around 10 miles. Teams have been closing in on them from both sides, and it would be such in such a number that it would be impossible to hide. Lol. Or they made a shortcut straight to the Michigan State and watched y'all's sorry asses walk right by them. Y'all are failing for a trick in the book that admittedly is brand new, but you fell for it hard. Lady, you found Nick and Manny yet? Got him. <sighs> ha, fuck. They've been hauling dick. That's what, that's, what's that? 75 miles in a day? Just about through the woods and hills and everything. Those two have been training for this for so many centuries. I've been waiting forever to see what they could actually do on the field. God damn, they're doing exactly what they planned too. I'd imagined they, they're they about to cut left on the Oklahoma State field within the hour, then ride that west as far as they can. What do you think happens once they step up for on Oklahoma State? Well, I guess other teams can start making some good guesses. Then they'll know whoever took it whoever took is headed west. But Nick and Manny fa faked the hell out of a thousand players or so who had the best shot of making a tackle. Uh, they have a 75 mile head start and they are two extremely fast dudes. The other teams are in groups of 25, 50, 100, made up of players of varying speeds. They ain't gonna catch them. There are still some teams out west that couldn't intercept them. I still think it's unlikely they're gonna pull off this whole thing. But to see them even get this far is incredible. Funniest part about it, about it all is that Nick and Manny aren't even all that good at actual football. Now, of course, we still have no information that indicates which team has the ball. 
but you have to figure, guys, it's a matter of hours until the balls are recovered. The only question now is what exactly, what exactly, it's going to look like when upwards of a thousand players fight for an armload of footballs in or around the Tennessee Valley. You see, son, this is the sort of opportunity we, we've got ahead of us if we properly execute Trojan football. Why does he keep calling him son? They're both 18,000 years old. Looks like Gunner's 18,040 years old and Bryce is 18,016 years old. You'd be surprised how much that still matters. So why ain't y'all up there then? Well, I'll be honest with you, we weren't positioned properly. We have our players real spread out right now, all over the country, and we couldn't make a play on, this, on the ball this time. But you know, that's something we hope to change as we rebuild this program. And I think, you know, if you put in the work, the work in, and put, you put it in for long enough, you could be a key component of that rebuilding process. You'll suck. I, I, hurt. you know what? You know what? That's a very fair thing to say of us right now. We suck. But you know what the exciting thing is? Is that you get to help us write the next chapter of Troy football. A lot of players on these other teams, they don't get to say that. But you're going to have an ownership in this process, son. It's like I tell everyone. If you buy in, it'll pay off. You tell them about the monster? Oh yeah, no. The do you like monster? We didn't get to that. Well, of course, I've never seen it. But uh, I've just talked to a whole lot of true players who over the years have. At least they say they did. Dewey Lake Monster lives in the tales of folklore, oftentimes woven around the truth. Lots of eyewitness accounts all the way back to the 1960s. People say it's like Bigfoot or something. With only the light from a flashlight, the pair saw the figure standing at about 120 yards out in the field, and they say it was no bear. That's bullshit. Well, you say that, and I don't blame you for saying that, but I saw it with my own two eyes. It was big, huge, bigger than any person, but it walked around like a person. It wasn't a bear. I seen it twice. Both times, I cl it clearly didn't mean no harm. What's funny to me is that you all have only seen it, seen the one, only the one, and never up close. But who, who no, uh, who knows? Maybe it was the last of its kind, and when everybody stopped dying, it was the only one left. Is this thing real? Yeah. No. Have you seen it? No. Well, do you have any proof? No. Well, then, how are you so sure? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you know that uh, then just that's just one of many legends on this field. All kinds of crazy things. You know, our stadium is actually just a block away from where our basketball team scored 258 points in a single game against DeVry. DeVry. 258 258 points in a, in a regulation 40 minute basketball game I thought it was 253 oh it's 258 guarantee you it's 258 anyways you know there's lots of storied history around our field stuff you'll never find anywhere else but Troy god I love that game it's beautiful there was so little reinvention in those days I mean that was the 1990s Yep. You know what? You know that game made it to my uh, residual memory? I was about 25 years old at the time. Of course, I wasn't awake yet, but I can still search my memory and it's there. For whatever reason, angry things had a much better chance of sticking. That made so many people mad. DeVry, which is a computer technology and business school, best known for advertisements on late night cable television, has no business playing basketball. Bush League. That's all about. That's about all you can say about the whole affair. DeVry deserves better than that. Troy State deserves better than that. Basketball deserves better than that. Silly, sick joke. As exciting and heartwarming as watching an old, sickly dog be put to sleep. It smacks of a barnyard, barnyard odor. It's tacky and childish. Oh, calm down, Jesus Christ. Like a. Pick a hobby instead. Any hobby. Take up checkers. Get really good at the cup and ball game. Anything but this. The people weren't ready for a game as revolutionary as Troy State, DeVry. It was essentially a cooperative game. DeVry try, did try to score. I mean, they scored 141 points themselves, but they agreed to run down the floor and shoot, and shoot as fast as they could. They worked together with Troy State to push the pace and help them accomplish their stated goal of 200 points in a game. Since then, there have been all kinds of games like that in every sport, where both teams work together towards some common goal or another. 
That game was centuries ahead of this time. Back in those days, sports and rules were almost the same thing. God, I'm glad I wasn't awake then. Maybe that's why I'm so well adjusted. It's true, 258 to 141. Troy State crushes DeVry Institute in record-shattering performance. Now there's one thing, one more thing I gotta tell you about. How familiar are you with Lake Auburn? You been out there? You know what goes out on out there? Huh? Lake Auburn, the Southern Great Lakes. You familiar with the geography, I guess. Uh, oh, here's where you learn about the sharks. Yeah, see, in these lakes, on the Mississippi Sea to the west, uh, there's a lot of fields. It's legal to cross those fields in the water, provided you're not using motor power. You could use a rowboat or a kayak or a canoe or something, or if you really want to work out, I suppose you could swim. Teams used to use those fields a lot. Lots of important throughways there. Real important strategically. Then, about 500 years ago, sharks showed up. They'll come and get you any time, day or night, but right around sunup or sundown seems to be their favourite. The water's real, that, real still, a lot more still than you'd figure lakes this big to be. Real quiet. You'll be canoeing along and the only noise you hear will be your puddle, when your puddle, your puddle when it dips in the water, maybe some wind. It's real empty, it gives you a lot of time to think about the world, and you and your place in it. Once in a while you'll come across something peeking out of the water, something the water couldn't quite cover up. And almost like you feel, you almost kind of feel good for what, what's still standing. In a way, I don't know if it still works like this. I mean, hell, I'm no architect or, you know, engineer or anything like that. But you look at it and, you th and think, well, standing so high on all those years must have been hard work. They don't have to stand anymore. They get to feel float now, and they do their job, and now they don't have to work so hard. Anyway, point is, it's a nice little boat ride for a little while, and so you're floating along and making your way along. Nobody ever sees them coming. You never do. We don't know who the sharks play for. <laughs> Nobody does. Nobody's good enough to look. Uh, got a good luck, enough look at them. We think there might be as many as 12 of them. Nobody really knows that either, but it's at least four or five. What they do is, they wait under the surface for a long time. I guess they got scuba gear or something. Out of nowhere, you'll see a bunch of hands reach up and grab each side of the boat. They flip you with so much force, there's nothing you can do. They're just You're just in the water. If you're dumb enough to try to sail a football across the sea, they'll take it, even if you're just trying to pass through in peace though they'll come after you anyway, just to scare the hell out of you. It doesn't even matter that your life's in danger, because every second you spend in that water, you're just waiting on it to happen. People don't go on those seas much anymore, for any reason. They're scared of them. They're scared off, all because of them, and nobody even knows who the hell they are. Fuck that, I fucking hate boats. Well, listen, son. There's a reason I told you all this, and the thing... And it's a thing that, you know, it comes along with playing Trojan football. In order to get to any other field, you have to cross the water. No way, no way around it. We have to do it all the time. And it's not like you get flipped all the time. I'd say I get flipped in the water every fifth time or so I'm out there. I'd say you get used to it. But to tell you tr the truth, I really don't. I'd say you get used to it. <laughs> Troy is the only field li that's like that. Every other team around here can take a detour around the lake. Not us. It's a cross we have to bear. But you know what? I think it's only it only makes us stronger. We've got to go through a lot on this field. But that's gonna that's gonna only make us tougher and more resilient as we continue to rebuild the program. There's a lot of hey, where's the bathroom? Oh, it's right around the corner there. Just down there and make a left. Okay. Hon? Hon, it's not over there. It's that's the front door. Where are you going? You're going to step off the field. He's going to step off the field. Son, you've got 10 more seconds to make it back before you're kicked out of the game. Son, where are you going? Well, hell. I'm sorry, Gunnar. Happens more and more now. You'll get this program going. I know you will. I hope so. Woo. Hold on. i got to make a phone call. This is always the hardest part of being a commissioner. Ooh, official business. Can't wait.
I have ring, 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 ring. Huh? Hello, is this Bryce Schaffer I'm speaking to? Yeah. Number 17 for the Troy Trojans? Trojans? I don't know, man. Mr. Schaffer, this is the ball game commissioner. I'm unfortunately calling to inform you that you have been ejected from the game due to an out-of-bounds violation. As you had no out-of-bounds accued at the time of the incident, you are required to surrender your roster spot and leave the game. I don't give a shit. Now, as a commissioner, I must inform you that you are permanently prohibited from rejoining any team or participating in any- Fuck you, bitch. Click. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. I mean, good for him for walking off the job. Fuck jobs. From a certain perspective, these lakes make a lot of sense. An immortal person is not a perfect person. An eternal life is not a perfect life. I'm living forever, right? All three of us are. We've scanned our trajectories for the next 500 billion years, and yep, smooth sailing. Same for everybody down there. Yep. For those who lost their homes to the encroaching water, it was a traumatic experience, but they all made it. I wonder if they'll ever see it like I do. I look at myself and I see the imperfections. Half the time, I don't know what's going on. Apparently, if I'm going to, I'm going to wake up for a few weeks at a time, cruise for a couple of millennium, and then I'll do it again. My batteries suck. My data storage is core rope memory. Wires that were literally sewn into the boards in patterns of ones and zeros. These imperfections will pers persist until the end of time, and there's nothing I can do about that. My life will never be a perfect one. Those lakes and the ruins that stick out of them remind me that it's not supposed to be. This is not heaven. Waters rise and batteries fail. This is a universe in which things can still fuck up. And that's where I belong. I belong here. And I, I can't tell you how good that feels. You know? You could argue that this, functionally speaking, is a heaven of sorts. Perfection is the end of the road. Why the hell would you want to be at the end of the road? I wouldn't. I like it here. So tell me about the sharks. Oh man. Absolutely menace. Struck terror into every team in the nation for centuries. Horrifying ability to strike without warning. Stolen so many footballs that teams advance all the way up to Missouri just to avoid the region. Single-handedly influences the ge geographic flip footprint of college football. Inspiration for countless ghost stories. Fucking amazing. Basically, who do they play for? I mean, shit. You want to talk about the Sharks? I can arrange a call. God, yes. I love that. I have to learn more about these people. Ha. People. Chapter 11. John Boyce, 20k20. Ah ha ha, nope. Come here. Rudy, hey, hold still for Dr. Mimi. I'm sorry, he's been out of sorts since th he started coughing. It's okay, our little man, man's just gonna, ha just having a time. Come on, buddy. Rudy, come on, uh, you've, you've been coming to see me for 2,000 years. Don't act brand new. There we go. Good boy. Okay, you can sit him down. He's just got a case of kennel cough. Have you boarded him anywhere recently? No, not for a while. Come in contact with any other dogs? No, not really. He sniffs other dogs on his walks sometimes, actually. Do you go on walks with him? He usually just goes around the block by himself. Well, he's contagious now, so you may want to, and I hate to say this, but you might want to put him on a leash for the next couple of weeks, just to make sure he doesn't... Hey, hey, get out, get from under there. There's medical waste in that bin. He doesn't need to stick his nose in there. Rudy! Sorry about that. He's always been hard-headed. I know, I know he knows too. They never get old. Never, ever. So what can we do? What we can do is... Carry at the desk can get you a script for some antibiotics. It comes in a dropper and you should have enough for seven days. It's actually a little sweet. So he'll probably take it just fine. But if you have any trouble, you can just mix it in with his dinner. 
Mimi got a call on too. Thank you. You should be all set. Ugh, he's gonna hate that leash. We need to go pick up one. Uh, pick one up. Any any tips? Only ones I recommend against other retractable leashes. They tend to send mixed messages. You want one with a fixed length, especially since he's not used to it. Needs to know his boundaries. Make sure he keeps some uh, some distance from other pups if you can. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Come on, bud. Thanks, Mimi. Say bye. Bye, little man. Too cute. Too cute. Click. Dr. Mackenzie. Hey! Oh, hi. How's your Wednesday? <gasps> Mimi has successfully trained her spaniels, Algi and Warwick, to identify culprits in crime dramas. They aren't perfect, however. They always bark at Stabler, she says. They always think he did it. But then again, who's to say they're wrong? If they're right, it's a very different show. Going good. Only a few patients today. You run into any dogs called Grimaldi? No, why? Ah, uh, nothing. It was a joke. Ah, uh, okay. Basically, the story goes, a man named Grimaldi is feeling depressed, way down in the dumps. So he goes to see a doctor, and the doctor says, Ah, I have just the cure for you. You must go into town and see Grimaldi the clown. He can really put on a show. <laughs> I was just there the other night and laughed the entire time. Yes, sir, Grimaldi the clown will cheer you up right. And Grimaldi responds, that is, this, that is also my name. What a coincidence. I'll go see him tonight. <laughs> and he goes and he has a great time and feels a lot better. Now, you know that's not how the story goes. It's the way mine goes. There's no arc. Nothing. You know, nothing develops. Yeah, it does. He feels better. What's the point, though? What's the story trying to say? Nothing. Sometimes the story can just be some shit that happened. I refuse to have a point. And you, uh, and you can't make me. He's right, you can't. Oh, is this Pioneer 10? Yes, hi. So happy we finally met. Juice has told me a lot about you. Oh, well, you know, you may actually remember me from some of my lectures in the arts program. I did a series at Georgia Southern. Oh. 15, 144 former semester lecture series. Georgia Southern Arts Building, November 4th, 5 p.m. Guest speaker, Pioneer 10. Please join us for an exploration of, of the so-called end of history, a perception of the world and America's place within it that gained traction during the late 20th century. Pioneer 10 will guide us through this cultural phenomenon through the lens of 1990s licensed music catalogs, including the unheralded Power Play collection. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Anyway, we just got to uh, done learning about the sharks. Yeah, Mimi, you're becoming a little bit of a celebrity out here in space. A celebrity, huh? Well, don't go telling too many people. As a ball game official, I would never disclose your identity to the public. Uh, excuse you. Oh, uh, ahem. Um, as a ball game official, I would never disclose your identity to the public. <laughs> um, thank you, Komish. So, actually, I wanted to bother you about something. We've got Pioneer 9 up here. You know they've been in hibernation a long time and just woke up a few weeks ago. I was wondering if I could introduce you all. Nine's way into this game, and I'm just trying to show them around. Oh, congrats to them. Yeah, I'd be happy to. You know what? I was just about to break for lunch. Now good? Now's good. Okay, right. I'll patch them through. See you, Mimi. See you soon. Talk soon. Hello? Hi, is this Pioneer 9? Hi, yes, that's me. You can call me Nine. I am Mimi. So nice to talk to you. The Komish said you just woke up. At the end of September, yeah. What's that like? Is it tough getting your bearings again? Actually, not really. It was a lot better this time. The first time it was back in 17776. That was way tougher. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Juice told me a lot about it. They spent a lot of time looking for you. A lot of time. He told me that at one point they were sure you were gone for good. But then your sister kept looking and looking and I guess she found you. Yeah, sometimes I can't believe she did. Not counting the booms. I'm about three feet tall and three feet wide. Oh, wow. I'd have guessed we were a lot larger than that. I guess I hear space probe and I think spaceship. Yeah, Juice is a lot bigger than I am. Not that, that it matters, really. We all feel pretty tiny out here. I do too sometimes. This field's about 134,000 miles long in total. Enough to go around the entire globe five times. At least, it's only that, you know. 
At least it ends. Yeah. I don't look up look up a whole lot. The world's already too big as it is, you know? So you're one of the sharks. I guess it's technically right to say that. One of one. You're it? Mm-hmm. People think you're like 12 people. Oh, I know. No, it's just me. You better not tell anyone. Of course I won't. Almost nobody knows. Komish does, of course. A lot of my team doesn't even know. That's how secret we're trying to keep it. I mean, they know I'm on Georgia Southern's roster. They just figure I'm the lookout. Hey, sorry if you hear some noise. I'm headed out for lunch. Today's fish sandwich day. Sounds great. Yeah, Komish loves those. Loves them. You like food? I mean, I can't eat food. Lizzie, headed to lunch. You want anything? Nah, I brought a salad. I only ask because he loves food. I don't really get it. He always asks me, what's in the sandwich? How does it taste? Does it reheat well? Does it that pair well with this? I guess for him, that's the closest he can get to eating. Other than sucking up the sunbeams. Makes me a little sad for him sometimes. Do you two talk a lot? Yeah, you know, every so often. He loves to make friends, with the players in particular. You know, he, you're his friend if he drops the whole Comish thing and talks to you like normal. Um, honestly, I think it's part of the reason he made this game. Was was he could find was so he could find friends. He missed you all. I don't think he wants you to know too much about that though. Shit, hold on. Got to catch the light. Ooh, okay. You're quick. Got to keep up my cardio. Um, not a lot of places to run on, on the Columbus part of the field. So, are you undercover or something? Well, yes and no. At first, that was the whole idea. I was a vet tech way back when, so getting a job here at the clinic was a great place to sit, kind of lay low. It's close to the water, so I could sneak off after work and go hit the lake. But you know, no matter who you are, if you get a job somewhere on the field, people are always going to be like, oh, you play football. You're just trying to be cute about it. And if they notice you never leave the field, they'll figure you out. I can't do any of the normal stuff. I can't drive a car. I can't take the bus. And no matter what, if you cross a highway on foot, people are going to look at you funny. Even if there's a crosswalk, it doesn't matter. It's definitely a car count. It's definitely a car country. Oh yeah, especially down here. Sorry, hang on one second. Hi, good. I'm doing good. Could you get me a fish sandwich, pickles, no tartar sauce, and do you have any fries in the fryer? Okay, great. Then just a medium Sprite. Oh, uh, hold on. Yes, actually, could I get $200? Uh, actually, sorry, better make it 300 Ha, huh, yeah. I have bingo Friday night. Thank you. Okay, sorry. So can I... Can we back up a little bit? I just want to figure out how there's just one of you and everybody thinks there's five or six or twelve of you. Absolutely. So Georgia's, uh, Georgia Southern is what they call a lightning rod. We've got one of the longest fields in the whole game. That's great if you really know what you're doing and you can come in with a plan of attack and plan of defense on day one. Damn, that was fun. Opening day? Yeah, I wasn't on the team back then. I actually didn't commit to Southern until about 800 years ago. It was on every channel though. Every team had 125 players, you know, and they all started on the home fields. It looked like one of those fun runs. Everybody just booking out of the stadium at once. My mother was on the Southern track team but way back when, so she signed up as a defensive back. The program's playbook at the start was basically just to wait for other teams to pop footballs loose, then close in on them. Uh, once they were out in the open. It wasn't a bad idea. I mean, this field has 78 intersections. Yeah, and if you stay to your home field, you actually get to work all 125 of your players into the playbook, right? Including the 25 who have to stay on the home field. Exactly, exactly. So what they did is they broke into eight teams of 11, one one each for Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Three for Texas, two for New Mexico, two for Arizona. And that left 37 players left over. And those 37 just scouted various other fields. That's a lot more scouts than mo more team than most teams use. Um, they served as a kind of early warning system to let the rest of the team know when an offense was rolling in with the ball. 
did it work? For a while, yeah. It worked pretty good. In the year two, in year two, they picked up a ball in Texas. Year 77, they got another. Year 190, they got another. My mother got one in Dallas, actually. Dallas was a real hot pot of the field back then. A lot of big programs have fields running through it. Texas, TCU, ba Baylor, Nebraska has one of those that comes all the way down. They called it Powerball. Um, f footballs were just bouncing around all over. Of course, since Southern only had 11 players in the area, they were usually squeezed out of the action. One day, though. One day, those 11 wake up one morning and see they've moved up on the scoreboard. Someone's trying to carry a football through their field. Who knows where, you know, but Mama goes up to the rooftop to see if there's anything to see. And sure enough, she sees a TCU team stomping their way, not even trying to be quiet about it. They w the way you might if you're on another team's field. There were about 70 of them. And they just thought they were all that, you know. Southern didn't like that, so they said, hell, let's make them work for it at least. Let's line them up, make them play some football if they're just going to parade, around, parade through the, our field like this. When they do, TCU's all crabby about it. They're annoyed. So line up in a, excuse me if I'm going to I'm gonna curse here, they line up in a fuck you formation. <laughs> <laughs> they line up in what they call the uh, phalanx. The idea is that the whole team just marches forward and bulldozes everybody, slowly but surely, and the quarterback just kind of strolls along be behind them. Yeah, I'm looking up the replay. This is gross. It's some real knucklehead stuff. It's basically what you do if you want to completely disrespect somebody. If you're a big team who runs into a little team and you just want to make them feel like dirt for even trying to challenge you. And that went on, went about as you'd guess. Susan put 10 players on the line, but it didn't matter. They got trampled. Mum said it was so slow, it was like watching road getting paved. But you know, there's a saying, every coach says it now, C count your opponent. No matter what, no matter how much they are, uh, count your opponent. And this is why they say that. <gasps> Mama told me later she was scared as hell on that rooftop. Nobody wants to jump off an 18 story building. <laughs> I don't care how good the nanos are at what they do. It's going to hurt some. And it's not like you can jump a couple of hundred feet and then just decide it won't scare you. And But she's there to play, and she's the only Southern player in Dallas who has long jump experience. So she walks out uh, She walks out her steps, kind of like a place kicker would, then starts way back on the rooftop. She listens for the snap count, and then, of course, because TCU just wanted to disrespect Southern, their snap count was just a countdown from 10 to 1. Nobody does that. Not anymore. Not ever. Her plan was to jump the line from way back on the roof. She couldn't actually see him, so once she heard the count get down to five, she started running. A little after it got to two, she made the jump, and the instant the ball was snapped, she crossed the line of the scrimmage. When there's an impact like that, the nanos kind of bubble up around you and sweep you backwards. My mama and the quarterback somersault, uh, quarterback somersaulted about 20 times and fell into the creek behind them. She recovered the fumble and ran with it. Nobody could catch her. TCU's quarterback quit after that, said the terror of it was too much for him. He walked right off the field, right then and there, and never came back. Does Sutton still have that ball? No, no telling where it is. We had a little mini dynasty back then. And you actually had seven footballs at one time, which is a whole lot back then. But that just made us a target. Georgia State's always hated us, always. And about 700 years into this, into the game, they gave us the bulldozer. You know what that is? No. The bulldozer is about the meanest thing you can do in football. It's only been done a couple of times. It's technically legal, but it's so unsportsmanlike that every team in the country came together at some point and agreed never to do it. When you bulldoze somebody, you take all 100 of your standard players and you put them on somebody else's field. Those players start at one end and mark off a distance of 100 yards and search those 100 yards up and down. One player per yard. Every player just paces from sideline to sideline, coming every square inch, kicking over every rock and bucket and everything else. They can do that for an hour, then they move up field and do the same for the next 100 yards. 12 hours a day, that's all they did. They did this on our field for seven years. 
You cannot hide a football from this kind of operation. It's impossible. It doesn't even matter that our field is almost 40, 4 million yards. Now, if a team was bulldozing your field, you can send them, send your own team after them and try to slow them down. But then they successfully tied your team up. The door's wide open for so, some other team to come in and rob you. Did they find any footballs doing that? That's the thing. They didn't. But by doing that, they forced us to scramble, to take our footballs and run off to other fields. From there, we eventually pick, we were eventually picked off, one after another. So Georgia State didn't benefit at all. No. All they wanted to do is destroy us, and that they did. We had no, other, no footballs by the end of it. Pure malice. My mother quit after that. She couldn't take it. She called me crying one night and told me, Mimi, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Fast forward a few hundred years, of course, she feels some kind of way about it, and when I signed up myself, she told me, don't waste your time with that game, it'll only make you bitter. I didn't listen, because you never listen to your parents. I took a lesson from her, from that jump on the roof, off the rooftop. The only way to play this game, the only way I know how to play, is, play it, is to terrify. I'm sorry if this is rude to say, but that doesn't seem like you. No? No, you seem like a really nice person. Well, thank you. I mean, I think I am. I wish I could just nice my way into what I want, but you can't. Someone will always step on you. You've got to cause nightmares. It seems like you do. People talk about you like you're a ghost. How do you do it? What's going on here? Weird. It might be more useful to explain to you how not to let me catch you. Um, don't try to cross the lake during the day. It's too easy for me. Um, I'm too good at timing you. I can stay underwater for a long, long time, and I know exactly how long it will take you to get here. How far away can you spot a bamboo reed sticking out of the water? That's how much warning you'll have. Most never notice it. Don't make noise. Don't use a canoe. Use a rowboat. Cut the water with your blades like you're carving a turkey. Slowly, with deliberation. Don't row quickly. You couldn't make a mistake worse than that. I will hear you from far off. Even if I never see you, I know exactly how you sound. Don't talk. You can get away with whispering, but don't talk. Don't go out on the lake. Go, don't go out to the lakes by yourself. I'm too frightening for you to be alone. Whew. Don't try to cross near sunup or sundown. I'll pick you right out. You'll be the tallest thing in the lake. I will see you from miles away. Don't sneeze. Don't cough, especially not at night. As quiet as it seems to you, it's quieter to me. None of this advice will save you, but it will buy you enough time to prepare yourself. And remember that you won't drown, and I won't hurt you. But I do need to scare you, because I need, I need you to think there are many of me, and none of us want you here. If, you can, if I can help it, it will never happen the same way twice. Maybe a few miles south of what used to be Vic, Vicksburg, I'll tap on the hole just as soft enough to make you wonder whether you're hearing things. I'll follow you. You wouldn't guess how fast I can move into water, or how long I can stay down there. Once I've terrified you enough, you'll go in the water. Maybe you'll see my knuckles as they grab the lip of the hull and flip you. Maybe you'll he hear knocking from all sides of the boat. Maybe I'll grab your arm, hook your elbow, and rip it you right out. I haven't decided yet. Might leave your boat. I might shove it far off the field, and your choice will then will to either be swim to swim home or quit. I don't care if you have a football or not. I don't want you here. Pardon my language, but get the fuck out of my lake. <sighs> yes, fish sandwich and medium fries. Yeah, that's me. Thank you. Oh, are you about to eat? I don't want to bother you. No, no, it's fine. As long as you don't mind me eating. So you're... Don't take this the wrong way, I hope. But you're kind of a monster. Yeah, I sort of am. My day job kind of helps me balance that out. Uh, I mean, I spend all day taking care of these pups and I think, hey, I'm not so bad. But like I said, you know, it's the only way to play this game. I mean, it's gotten us where we are. <sighs> I'm sponsoring this ball game to remind you, myself to pick up some more detergent at the store today. The sink thing on my phone is messed up and I can't figure out how to put notes on my phone. Hoping I will see this on the TV somewhere or something. <laughs> Speaking of, wow. Looking at the scoreboard? Yeah, I haven't looked at it in a while. Wow, what happened to Georgia Tech? Oh my god, they're all the way down there. What happened? 
You probably know what happened. Yeah, I do. I can't tell you, obviously. No, of course. I have no idea when this game is going to end. Is ever going to end. I mean, all I know for sure is that our 11 balls are enough to get us into second place. So all I can guess is that Michigan State isn't too too far ahead. Um, if we're if we've been playing for 2,000 years and the number one team only has around 20 footballs, we're going to be here a while. But Lord, I can't wait to hear all the stories once it's all, all over. It's almost the best part of it, all of this. All the drama, the errors, the bad calls. And you'll finally tell everyone who the Sharks are. Cannot wait for that. I need them to know that a vet tech in Columbus did this to them. So you're really going to go days without looking at the scoreboard? This happened around a week ago. Yeah, it's kind of a long off season for me right now. See, the first phase of this was just roaming the lakes and picking up footballs. All 11 of those came from me. Um, I spooked teams so much they dro they stopped even trying to advance balls through the water. Then it was phase two, scaring the holy ghost into everyone, everybody who tried crossing, even crossing the lake, ball carrier or not. We wanted to do that sort of push the action up north. Once I basically took the lakes out of play, it created a choke point up in Illinois, and Indiana, Kentucky, and that's fine by us. Let them play up there and leave us alone. Meanwhile, we can enjoy this big, shining, shiny number two ranking. Helps a lot with recruiting, and with the heat off us, we can sp spend the, these few hundred years coaching and training and planning. Oh, so that's why you keep them all off your on your field, for the ranking, so you can recruit. Yeah, exactly, that's right. That's exactly right. By the 20... The, by the 2400s, I expect us to be the number one team in the country. We're in great shape to make a run, I think. Can I ask where you're hiding them? Underwater, in the middle of the lake, right near the Mississippi-Louisiana border. I keep them in an old silo down there. Of course, I swim down there and check on them uh, once a month or so. Don't need them working loose and floating all over the lake. Seems smart. I'm having so much fun talking to you. Uh, well, I'm living talking to you too. You know what cracks me up about y'all? It's great how, it's it's how great at conversation you are. Comish had to learn how to be um, social over the years, but you haven't been up that long, right? Well, there's the me who's been conscious for a total of a few weeks or so, but then there's the me that kind of ambiently absorbed transmissions from Earth all those thousands of years. Oh, TV shows and whatnot? Talk radio? Yeah, but there's the third me too. The one that absor absorbed things before I fully re uh, really existed as me. I was just a bucket of instruments. The onboard memory I launched into space with is core rope memory. You know how that works? No idea. Well, those of us who were built in the 60s presented a problem. Traditional data storage was really fragile and unreliable. And if it messed up, it wasn't as though they could just go out there and fix me. So they literally sewed me some memory. I still have it, of course. It's all these bundles of thin little wires sewn into a board. If a wire is sewn through a little ring, that's a one. Even if it passes the outside ring, it's a zero. It took, and I apologize in advance for cursing. No, no, no problem. It took fucking forever. Wow. They sent me off to a factory for women to d do it naturally. They had to literally sew the program into the board strand by strand. Two of them would sit opposite one another and check each other's work. If you even made one error out of countless thousands and upon thousands, if you mistakenly looped a single zero instead of a one, the entire thing was ruined. The steadiness of hand it required, the artistry, the unreasonable attention to detail it took, I can't even begin to imagine. Of course, this isn't rewritable memory, the sort of memory you usually think of. Everything was hardwired. What no one quite understood at the time is that everything makes an imprint, however atomic or faint it might be. Mm -hmm. I've seen doc documentaries, except it stuck with you all because, right, because they shot us into space shortly thereafter. There was nothing out here to erode it. So, you know, fast forwards thousands of years, I wake up and I have nothing to do but sort through these mountains and upon mountains of imprints that are all over me. In a sense, I got to hear what people were saying while they were around me or at least the collection of parts that became me. They talked about a lot of things, about their children, a lot about of telling each other what they were taking, that they were taking a lunch break. That's something I came to understand very early on. People love lunch. 
they interrupt everything they're doing just for lunch. You can't blame them. Making you sound so, like it's hard work. Yeah. I sort of think of them as my godparents. All of those people who built me. The researchers at Ames, the technicians at Cape Kennedy, those women in the factory. At that time, all those threads weaving through something that must have been far too confusing to enjoy. I think that's love. I know that's love. They didn't know what I'd be or who I'd be, but they loved me. If you read human history up till the years 1868, you'd never imagine that people were just a hundred years from launching me into space with all these sophisticated instruments and experiments. I feel like I wasn't supposed to happen that soon, that it should have taken hundreds more years to figure out something like me and send me into the cosmos. I have about as much onboard memory as a dishwasher, maybe a little more, and they had to sew it in by, ha by hand even to get that much. It feels like they shouldn't have been able to do it. That's how much they loved you, isn't it? That's how badly they wanted to bring you into the universe. It is, and I think about them a lot. I remember them all. Some made it to today, a lot of them didn't. They'll always be part of me. I know what you mean. One thing I've enjoyed about this game is that it forces you to walk on lines, literally walk on lines that you would never have walked before, and get to know people you'd never have known. You go around the country, just for fun? Oh yeah, when it's not fishing season, I'll leave the lake for months at a time, let them get comfortable enough to start trying again. Um, once in a while, I'll use that time to just roam around. A lot of places are special to me, a couple of really special. One's up in Fairhaven, Ohio. It's right off the, off the Miami of my Ohio field. Um, it only misses it by a little bit. The Bunker Hill House? Mm -hmm. It was a stop on the Underground Railroad. There's a creek in it, uh, a creek that runs behind the building. The one that the ones who escaped had had to follow the creek north to find it. It was about the only way you could make it through this part of Ohio without being seen. And you know how they how tired they must have been. I don't think I'll ever know what it's like to be that tired. When they got here, they got a meal and they could sleep in the attic or the cellar before making it the rest of the way to Canada. One day, I'll knock on the door and visit. For now, I can only get close. I can see it through the trees. It's a bright brick building you can make out from, make out from far off, and that's enough for me. There's another place too. It's a town called Free Charles, Kentucky. Well, it's called Charleston now. But it was originally Free Charles, and naturally it was named after the freed slave named Charles, who started a tavern there. This is just based on things I've looked up, but he and his wife, his wife's name was Maria, Maria, and the, they supposedly made the best food anywhere. People would come from miles and miles around just trying to, trying to beat the sunset and get there in time for dinner. The whole town sprang up around these, those two. The tavern's not there anymore. But right at the edge of Alabama, A&M field, there's a church. Are you a religious person? No, not really. Mm -hmm. I go in and out. I don't know if I'll ever stay one way or another. But the music. I've been through there a few times. Last time was about 10 years ago. And of course, I just had to roll through there on a Sunday morning, right in the middle of service. I just sat there in the woods and listened. I had to stop myself from walking right off the field and going inside. Do you have much out of bounds time saved up? I do. About nine and a half minutes. I've thought about it. My 200,000th birthday is coming up in a couple of thousand years. By then, if all of this is still going on and I'm still playing, I figure I'll almost have enough to sit in for a full service. Would be a nice birthday present. Hmm? I said it would be a nice birthday present. Ah, uh, yeah. It sure would be. Might just do that for myself, if I'm good. When all this is done, I'll w I want to go all over and see all these places. It's funny how all these places can speak to me, even if they're silent, especially if they're silent. It's as though everything they built is resting, having a nice rest. And so they are. So are they. They, need, they never could have known all these roads would lead to me, to us. I guess they did not. Uh, they did know I would live for all time. 
for all of time, in one way or another. Uh, they knew that much. They kept hope for ages, and they did it for me, even though they didn't know me. I don't know how I'm here, but I know how I began. I've been trying to answer that for myself. I don't have answers you have. Answers for what purpose, what your purpose is, not yet. I'm trying to be patient, it's difficult. I'm sorry, I didn't catch you. I said it's really difficult if you have some practice with it. When my sister woke me up for the first time, I got plenty of practice, lots of time to sit and think, and lots of things came to me, but a lot hasn't yet. It's difficult to feel so old, to be so old, and feel like I have so little wisdom. A lot of things keep me happy though, ten and juice, I don't know what I'd do without them. I don't know what I'd do without all of you either. I love you all for building me, for sending me here. Even though you didn't know what I would become, I love you for being yourselves and for welcoming me like you have. Sometimes I hear some of you wonder whether this is heaven. I think it is. It's in heaven I'll grow up and grow old. I can't believe my fortune. Sweetie, I'm sorry, you're, but you're fading. I can't make you out. What? Not sure what's going on. Can you hear me? I can tell you're trying to say something. It's just not coming through. Oh no, fuck, come on. Come the fuck on, not yet. I thought I had more time than this. Hold on, hold on, it's okay. God fucking damn it, I'm such a, such a piece of shit. Fucking battery, come on, no, man, no. Okay, okay, hold on. I hope you can still see me. Send me a, fuck. Send me three quick transmissions if you can hear me. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so I don't know what to do right now. So what I'm going to do is call it Comish, okay? Okay. Okay, hold tight. Yep. Hey, Comish, listen. I still got line nine on the line here, and they're losing the signal. Ah, uh, okay. Sweetie, I've got him on the line. Can you hear me? Yeah. Just like the old days, huh? Fuck off. Lol, you're cussing at me, ain't you, buddy? Fuck you, lol. Listen, it's going to be okay, okay? You'll just be fine. You'll be just fine. You're going to be okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. This happens. Oh, thank God. It was nice to meet you. Talk to you soon, I hope. Pleasure was all mine. Okay, hold tight. Just a minute here, all right? Oh, I didn't preload it. Yeah, sorry about this. What do you think? Well... Would Lunchables fund fondue have been feasible? Absolutely it was. Absolutely it was. We only need to cite Dunkaroos, which, shh. Okay, yeah. So, I see what's been going on. Nine's been burning energy at a rate higher than usual. Probably all the historical research they've been doing. That can chew up the battery. Yep, we gotta shut down the Stanford antenna and reset it. After that, I think what we do is, I shoot Nine a quick charge. Nine stays online for a little while longer. Then we let their battery completely run out so they can do a full charge. Once that's done, Nine can wake up for another full cycle. How long do you think that'll take? In this particular case, a few months. I don't want them to miss Nick and Manny. If they score and Nine isn't around for it, they'll be heartbroken. The timing of this could work, actually. It'll take those few months to get, for them to get across the country anyway. I bet I can get Nine up and running by late winter, early spring, sometime around then. Sounds good to me. Next of kin approves. Paper signed. Let's go in. Hmm. Looks like NASA put a lock on the Stanford antenna at some point. We need the, an access key. Got to enter seven values. Then the last nine NASA... Last time... What's the last time NASA and nine made contact? Conventionally, you mean? May 18th, 1983. Uh... God, how do you shut down Stanford? Oh, hey. As of 1983, what's the most recent game Stanford played? The Cal game. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Okay, I got it. Hit me with the uniform numbers. <laughs> Armin will probably try to squib it, and he does. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. 26. Rogers along the sideline. Another one. 43. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. They tried to do a couple of... Five. The ball is still loose as they get it to Rogers. They give it back now to the One. 30. They're down to the 20. Oh, the band is out on 26. the field. He's going to go into the end zone. He's going into the end zone. The Bears have won. <laughs> oh, <Pound>? my God. <laughs> the most amazing, sensational, dramatic, okay. 
Park Rundy. Exciting, thrilling finish in the history of college football. There we go. Hey, how's my favorite space bucket? Good, everything is back online, thank you. Nine, hey. We had to make a tough call. You've only got enough charge to stay online for a little longer, but I know, I heard, it's fine. I can come back next year. Yep. That's all I need, really. Nick and Manny ought to be somewhere out west by then. I can't miss that. Um, about that, y'all, I think they're in trouble. Hold on, tracking. Uh-oh. Look west a, just a little. I thought everybody was out east. Not quite. Oh god. They're in deep shit. October 23rd, Big Sandy River, Tennessee, 1.03 a.m. Shh, what? Stop, you hear that? Hear what? No. There's somebody up ahead. I don't see anybody. Maybe it was nothing. Let's wait another second. Never mind, I don't know what I... Look, 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 look. Fuck. Fuck. Shh. Fuck. We gotta dive. They'll find us underwater. Look, there's lots of them. Why are they moving so slow? Because they see us. Oh, Jesus. Go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, God. 1.15 a.m. They gotta make a turn somewhere. If they don't, Oklahoma State's just gonna keep pushing them east. They can't let that happen. Best to turn immediately at all Miss, seems like. Yeah, that's what I'd do. Not southwest, though. They should take all Miss northeast. Huh? Yeah, for misdirection. They have no idea who Nick and Manny play for, right? Nope. All o Oklahoma State knows is that someone's dicking about around on their field somewhere with, eight, with nine footballs, and there are a couple of strangers here who are running away from them. Why would they run? Uh, they think, uh, think they can connect the dots uh, pretty easy there. But since they don't know which team they're dealing with, they can't really know where they're trying to go. Nick and Manny should fake like they're trying to go north. It's just... That's too much dancing around. They should keep it simple. Like, here, just do this. Head southwest on Ole Miss, then turn on Georgia and cut northwest. Uh, northwest. They haven't created enough distance, though. When they turn southwest, Oklahoma State is still close enough to get eyeballs on them. They'll see which way they go. And if they see that, uh, they can just split up. And send some players to the Georgia-Oklahoma State intersection and wait them out. Well, they don't have to take Georgia. They could... Hmm. Yeah, you see? They're too scared of the sharks to try and cross the lake, which means they'll just have to make it back to Oklahoma's, Oklahoma State's field anyway. And they'll have to make so many transfers uh, to do that, they would be pinpointed. No problem. If the cowboys don't scoop them up, someone else will. Plus, Jay, as you said, the rule is to head northwest, right? When in doubt, most escape routes are less busy. Yeah, okay, true. Look, Nine, you called it. There they go. I still don't like it. I get the logic, but how many times have you seen a ball player try to create yardage by going backwards? How often does that end in disaster? I don't like this. No, look at you, you're obsessed with this game. I just said I don't like this. 1.58 AM. Hold up, I gotta piss. Now? Oh no, not now. I was just thinking, that's something I'd like to do someday. It's on my bucket list. What? Yes, now, Jesus.
Alright, fine. I guess we got a minute. Yeah, we do. They're not the quickest team I've ever seen. Is that Oklahoma State? Gotta be. Yeah. Big 12 speed, baby. I think we're go we go south here, right? Then just right back on Oklahoma State and head west. No, don't do that. I think it's too soon for that. We've got to draw them out more. We've got to get them further off course. We can't just be running all over the country, man. I, it, it's bad enough that we have to switch fields at all. Just get back on course as soon as possible. Nah, no, no, no. That's how you get trapped. They're just going to close us in on both sides, north and south. That's exactly what they'll do, too. That's the playbook. And it won't even matter how much faster we are. We'll be fucked. Okay, well, we got like two minutes before we got to get running again. What do you want to do? Let's take a loop and then take a bigger loop. We keep on this a little longer, get to northwestern, and then we cut south. Then we keep on west like we you were saying. That's not far. We can do that tonight. Plus, if they watch the scoreboard and they see that we fucking went right past Mississippi State just so we could get to Northwestern, what does that let us do? Makes them think we're nor Northwestern. Yeah, it, that's as fake like we're Northwestern. So then they send a bunch of people up north looking for us. Uh, I don't know about this one. They're panicking. I mean, maybe. Big maybe. No, man. No, let's play it simple. Let's just head south right now. Nick, you know I don't like digging up old shit. And you know I'm not trying not trying to, you know, throw it in your face or whatever. Oh, here we go. Oh, here you go. No. Don't tell me they're going to stop fighting now. No, no, listen to me. You listen. You got your way with the train. You didn't involve me in that decision. Now it's my turn to make a call. This is the greatest fumble recovery in centuries, and they're really going to stop and fight. And I, I'm telling you, we're being chased by what, a hundred players, maybe more? And then the, they might call in favours with another team, send a fucking army after us. Maybe a smarter army. Whatever the easiest option is, we cannot take it. We cannot. We can't be predictable. We gotta throw a wrench in. Alright? Alright. Okay. Okay. We'll do it the way that you want to do it. Come on, baby. Let's bring it home. Let's get to the beach. 3.31 a.m. And a quick pause for the station identification. This is KCPJ AM. Sports Talk 790, Stillwater, Oklahoma. 30 minutes until the top of the hour. I'm Greg Griffin. It has been a wild night, night here in Stillwater. For those of us staring at the scoreboard, Oklahoma State has fallen all the way down from three in the country all the way up out of the rankings. While that might, be, that might seem like a first a disaster, it sure seems like whoever... As though whoever's carrying these footballs is running scared from Oklahoma State football. Coach E, once again, thank you for being gracious enough to come on the program in the middle of the night. Happy to, Greg. I'm happy to. Now, I know you're out there in Tennessee on the same on the scene with the Oklahoma State football team, and I don't want to keep you too long. And of course, there are some operations you do not want to make public, but how much can you tell us about the Oklahoma State about what Oklahoma State is doing to recover these footballs? Happy to, Greg. I'm happy to. Now, <laughs> now, uh, now, you are right that it, at the moment there are a few, there are things that we will say about this situation, the things that we want. But one thing I can tell you, Greg, is that we're sending the whole house after them. All 100 players are giving chase, and we've got 25 home field players ready to support us as well. A full house, you know, coach. I think it's going to make the boosters very happy. Now, can you tell me, how many footballs are we dealing with? That information we don't think is wise to share, but we can tell you that this is a very big fumble. A very big fumble. A very big fumble. Well, folks, I think that's about as complete as an answer as we hoped we hoped to get. Could be five, could be fifty. Uh, well, one thing I can tell you is that it's not fifty. They're not moving th through the woods in a pickup truck. But at any rate, coach, recovering a fumble of this size could change the future of Oklahoma State football. We've seen how a high ranking has helped recruiting for other programs. Hell, we've seen how it's benefited Michigan State, that's for sure. So what I'd love to hear from you is, you know, you're a newcomer to this program. You've only coached this team a couple of years. You're not even from Oklahoma, which made some within the fan base a little concerned. What would recovering this th fumble mean to you? Do you feel like it would secure your legacy in Stillwater? You know, and I appreciate you saying that, Greg, and of course it would mean everything in the world to me, but my focus is on this program. 
I'm not thinking of me. I'm talking about Oklahoma State, and I'm thinking about my responsibility to my players, making sure that they are, that they now. Greg, I'm sorry. We have a situation developing, and I'm gonna need to let you go. You know what, Coach? We are just see now seeing that ourselves, as it might, as it seems as though the footballs have now transferred to Northwestern. They're now on the Northwestern. Coach, I'll let you go. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Click. When was this? Just a few seconds ago. I'm going to dress up as a car for Halloween. I'm going to drive around in my car, and that will be my costume. This is the best idea I've ever had. Good for you, Brandon Gibson. Okay, we're cooking now. Here we go, here we go. I think they want us to think that they're nor Northwestern. Uh-huh. If they were, they would, they would have tunneled... Uh, they would have turned well before they hit the water. Not that stupid, y'all. All right, I want everybody huddled in, up in two minutes. All 25 on the home field. Tell them to get that. Tell them to call in. All hands. You know what you're going to call? Almost. I will by the time you set it up. Keep everybody moving. I'll be right behind you. You got it, coach. Hey, Hal, hold up. Before you go, does Oregon still have scouts up north? Yeah, a little east of... Um, <laughs> Pedica. Last I checked, uh, it should be five of them. I think we're going to need to call in a further with them. We need lookouts. What do you want to give them? Could offer free passage on our field for a year. I don't know how much of a shit they'll, they'd give about that, though. You know what? Just give them a football. You sure? If we fall on this thumble, we'll have nine. We can give one away. We need them bad for this. You're the boss. I'll call them up. Thanks. Hmm. 3.41 a.m. Okay, gonna give everybody a moment to let the room fill up. Everybody keep moving. Shit, 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 shit. Who is that on the, on the call? I appreciate that you're marching, but could you please mute? Shit, 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 shit. Everybody please mute your shit, shit. Phones while coach is speaking. Shit, 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 All right, I think we've got a full huddle here. Uh, so we're just gonna push through this. Shit, 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 shit. For those of you who might be near the back of the pack tonight, I'm going to catch you all up. Uh, catch all y'all up. Those nine footballs that uh, that were on our field, we just popped them loose tonight. That we dent in the scoreboard. That dent in the scoreboard that everyone in the country saw, we did that. We did what we set out to do, and we should be sh 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 proud of that. Uh, while we were crossing the river, a few of y'all on the front line got eyes on them. The good news, there's only two of them. The bad news, there's only two of them. The worst news is, sh sh whoever they are, they're quicker than hell. But we're going to tie them up right. Uh, tie them right up. We're going to bring these balls back to Stillwater. And that's, this is how we're sh sh going to do it. These are going to be our two crunch zones. They just moved to Northwestern a few minutes ago. So we know they're in one of these two areas. First zone's about 20 miles long. Second one is close to 25. You think they got the piranha fish? Got piranha fish there? Piranha fish here? Again, whoever that is, please, please mute your phone. Now, uh, this is, now here's how uh, we're going to tie them off. Red teams, you stay put. Uh, you park your asses on your intersection, and you don't move. If they try to come your way, then they'll have nowhere to go. Shh, shh, shh. I've put a call into Oregon. They're going to team up with us for the night. Uh, they've got five posted at Mississippi State. They're going to send word if they see anybody coming their way. Fuck lakes, man. Fuck lakes. Orange teams. You're going to flush them out. Move... But uh, move, but be th thorough. Orange team north, you're a team of 50. You're going to blitz north. Orange team south, there's only 25 of you because I don't think it's going to. It's likely that they're going to be down there. Eyes open though. There's only one. There's only two of them, and I'm sure they'll be hiding. Get eyes on every yard. I if make if make it back down to our home field, and you haven't found them, I'm going to send all teams north. Now it's on. Yo. It's on each and every one of y'all to keep your eyes out. There's no other team in our, in our position. No other team in this part of the country who has nearly as many players as we do. No mistakes, no excuses. This is our chance to make our mark. This is our chance to make history. This is our moment we will rise of it, rise it to it. You hear me? Every single one of you, every single one of us will rise to. Yeah, man, I think it's one of those fishes bit me on my dick. Huh? Nah, I'm on mute. Ah, oh, fuck. Click. 
Okay, you'll know what to do. Break. <laughs> 4 18 a.m. Bumpus Mills, huh? What? Hey, hey, you'd be better better not be researching. Just for a minute. God damn it, your battery can't take that right now. Hold on, hold on. I think it'll be worth it. 6 or 7 a.m. Jeez. God damn it. You counted 100 earlier, right? I only I only counted 100. Yeah. Guess they had their home field players trailing them behind them. God damn it. All right, well, can we sneak past them? Not with all these leaves, man. Every time you make a you step, it sounds like cornflakes. Let's just cut the corner then. Use a few seconds of OBT if we have to. No, because look, you see five? I only see five. There's no way they'd send out just five of their home field players all the way the fuck out here. They sent them all. They, the, rest, uh, the rest of them are probably, near, uh, probably close by. Well then, we just cut a, a longer corner than spend a couple of minutes of OBT if we have to. Man, you know we can't afford to do that. I guess we try back north then. Nowhere else we can fucking go. <laughs> uh, 7.19 a.m. Oh no, they're gonna get crunched. This is like the trash room scene from the Dark Vader. From the... From the what? Sometimes it's kind of a fun puzzle to try to discern what the fuck you're talking about. I'm a blessing to all who surround me. That's... Babe, that's too many of them. That's at least 20. That's like 25. That's too many of them. We gotta move. Nah, man. They'll be here in a few minutes. Let's just... Let's just sit. You cannot do this. I'm tired, man. I'm used up. You cannot give up on me. It's done, man. It's done. It's fucking over. Put the map away. No, find them. Do whatever. Fuck, man. 2,000 years. 2,000 years. We fucked them up for a while there, though. We got everybody crossed up. And the train... We're gonna be famous for that. I shouldn't have ended. It shouldn't have ended like this, man. It's my fault. It's my fault. We should have just cut north, or I don't know, cut anywhere else. No, it's not. It's not your fault. It's my fault, man. It's my fault, babe. Come here. You and me, babe. You and me. Can you do something for me? What? Can you meet me at, in Missouri? Hey, what? What are you? Hey, what the fuck? Where are you going? Holy shit. 7.27 a.m. Ooh boy, Nick's got some balls on him. No, I mean, Nick's got some nuts on him. <laughs> well, yeah, he's clearly made the conscious decision to run on pavement. He's definitely going to use the road. That's about 5.38 miles. About 95 conventional football fields. How many out-of-bounds time, how much out-of-bounds time does he have? 60 minutes and 53 seconds. Wow. Yeah, Jesus. I'm glad I gave him that extra 10 seconds the other day. He's going to have to run about 5 miles at five miles at a pace of 3.08 uh, a mile. Plus he's carrying a backpack with 9 footballs in it. Plus he's wearing boots. Plus it's hilly as fuck through there. Plus he's already gassed. He's been running all over Stuart County tonight. What do you think? He's fucking toast, right? I could see a situation where he gets like halfway across, maybe two thirds. He gets ejected, then it's money's job to try to go out there and take it the rest of the way. Of course, if that happens, half the country's going to come out and set, camp up, uh, set up camp around here. Who knows who ends up with those footballs, but it won't be money. Man, this is such a rec recurring theme in this relationship. Once in a while, Nick just goes and does whatever, whatever what he wants. So intent on him doing right by money that he forgets to, you know, do right by him. Doesn't communicate with him. Oh, you know what? Don uh, Nelson Parkway. He's going right, to uh, run right past Fort Donaldson. Right where it used to be, anyway. Is that one of your your Civil War things? Yeah. This is where Grant got famous. He took Fort Dol Donaldson and opened up a big chunk of Tennessee for the Union. Thing is, he personally knew one of the Confederate generals in charge of defending the fort. And he later say, more or less, that he, it, that he knew the guy was soft, and he would fold pretty quickly once the attack began. He was right. The general managed to save his own ass by talk taking a boat across the river and escaping. Turns out this guy was kind of delusional and thought he was an incredibly important asset for the South. What's funny about that is, when Grant was asked about that later, he said that if he had caught him, he would have just thrown him back. 
said that he was such a shit general that he was most valuable for the Union if he just kept his job his job fighting against them. <laughs> Lol, what was his name? Are you ready f to hear this? <laughs> the way Fort Donaldson, Donaldson was surrendered. In his official report of the fall, Fort Donaldson, General Pillow, gives a, a curious account of the ma manner in which the surrender was agreed to and accomplished by the con conclave of rebel generals within the walls of the fort. <coughs> the ingenuity and peculiar morality of General Floyd came to the rescue. He proposed to turn over the command, uh, command to Pillow and Pillow to turn it over again to Buckner, thus enabling the uh, ladder to surrender the place, provided that he and Pillow were allowed time to cut and run with their commands out, out of danger. Oh, come on, man. No way, man. Lol, fuck. Nine, was this the story you were trying to dig up? I'm sorry I stepped on your toes. No, mine's something else. Still working on it. <coughs> oh my god. Oh. We got somebody. We got somebody. It's okay. I'm not running. Manuel Bay's Sa San Diego State. I'm sorry. Did you say San Diego State? Yeah. You know there are penalties for impersonating a football player, right? You're on the field. This is part of the field. You can't be here. Look. Manuel Bay's uh, percent college football record. The Elite State, uh, the Elite Series Sports Card Company fields innum uh, innumerable requests each year to produce to cease production of the Mr. Bay's football card. It is the official policy of Elite Sports to print a football card for every player on every active roster in college football, regardless of whether they play. Elite Sports considers this matter closed and will be not responding to further inquiries. Oh my god, you're that guy. Why, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to be mo rude, it's just, how did you get out here? How did you even get here? I ran. Listen, there's some pressing business I'd pr like to propose a trade. My husband and I, I have the footballs. They're in the secure location off the field. We know. We saw the fall of the scoreboard a few minutes ago. I'll give you the coordinates if you give up your players' locations. That's all you want? All right, sure. Give me your map. We got all 125 along Northwestern, 25 here, 50 up in Kentucky, 25 up at Ole Miss intersection, 25 at our intersection. Holy shit. Yeah, we got you crunched. Sorry to tell you. Good game, though. You'll put up one hell of a fight. You all, you had a scatter for a while there. So the balls are here. <laughs> How did they get all the way up there? His name is Nick Nevero. He's my husband. He finds a way to piss me off every goddamn day. And he's the fastest man you've ever seen. In order to make it to our home field and the rest of the country, we had to run approximately five miles. He did so at a pace of three minutes and 53 seconds per mile. What he's attempting now to now, without discussing it with me first, is to run a similar distance in little over three minutes per mile. It's a, it's a, uh, <laughs> this means he needs to somehow shave off 45 seconds for every one of those five miles. He only has 16 minutes and 53 seconds of OVT. My, OVT. 16 minutes and 53 seconds, yeah. I see what he did. He wanted to run on pavement. It's the closest thing to a treadmill. Uh, that's where he always makes the best time. We've been sprinting through the woods for so long that actually running on pavement probably feels like a miracle. It's like swinging a baseball bat with the donut off. He just took the balls and ran out on me a few minutes ago. All the math in the world says he can't do this. But right now, he's on pace to do it. I think he's actually going to do it, because I know that man better than anyone, and there's nothing he loves more than being right. You're telling stories. I'm sorry. I don't have time for this. I'm not. Just watch the scoreboard. When almost pops up in third place, you'll know I'm not lying. Should be within the next minute. Just watch. It's going to change. Watch it. Come on, babe. If you want to know why there was a cut right there, it's because in the description down below, I just covered all of the, uh, the previous text. It's very repetitive. I did play around with it a little bit. So if you do want to enjoy the different um, sections, for those of you who watched it live, you had to witness all of that, or maybe you just zoned out through the whole 30 minute experience. Back to the game. Get me Hal on the line. Hal, get all teams southwest. The balls are on all miss. You can't catch them. We've got 25 down south. Just saw how fast we move. 
You just saw how fast we move. Can you run like that? Holy shit. Sigh. Hal, cancel that. All teams take a breath. Regroup on the home field at 3 p.m. Good game. Good game. Well, now I'd like to propose a trade. We won't show your identity with any other team. I think you've earned that much from us. You're, you're heading out west, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay, in return, can you use our field to get there? For a while, at least. We had plans to break off right before we get to Stillwater. That's good enough, I suppose. You know, just to keep us up high in the rankings for a little while longer for recruiting. Maybe to let our fans feel like we got a big win for a while. Yeah, we can do that. It's a deal, then. Best of luck to you. You're really sat around on the field for, what, 2,000 years so you could pull that? About that. All these days we spent marching out here, I kept telling my players it's all about who wants it more, who wants it more, who wants it more. There's so much about you all I don't understand, but I know nobody on earth wants it like you do. I mean, what is this? You waited 2,000 years for this? What makes you want to do this? Ha. Huh. <laughs> we ask each other that all the time. I like to say that him and me are so damn crazy. Of course we married each other. Nobody else would take us. I just need to try something impossible. That's what it is for me. I need to find one of those rules of the world and break it. You sure you would be doing that here? There's really just two of you out here? Yeah, just two. Can I give you some advice? Don't let this eat you up. I've been through it time and again. I've played football a long, long time. All kinds of different games, all kinds of different rules. This game has beat me down over and over again. It's about to it. Uh, it's about to it again. I'm going to get fired for this. Well, you never could have known what you were up against. You had no idea we could have run out of bounds like that. It's literally like nobody's ever done that. Nah, no excuses, no excuses. Biggest fumble in centuries, and we let it bounce out of bounds. That's on me. I'm done. And that's okay, because that's what this game does to me. This game hates me. I'm snake bit. But that's okay, because it taught me how, how good it can be sometimes to just let go, walk away. That's the advice, I guess. Lord, I hope you'll make it, but just don't let it eat you, eat you up if you don't. We've all seen enough sadness in our time. No need for you to go off and make more of your own. Life's too long for that. You've got trillions of tomorrows. KCPJAM790, and you know what? We're coming up on 10 p.m. local time here in Stillwater. Before I want to, before I have to sign off here, I just want to make one thing clear. I'm overjoyed to see those footballs back on Oklahoma State's field. I know we all are, and I hope that means that State is indeed in possession of those footballs. But that puts us on the map. That gives us the. It gives the fans something to be proud of after going through hundreds of years of losing. The last few centuries of cowboy football have not been fun, and I feel like, as the fan base, you know, we deserve this. This would be a happy day. However, folks, however, and I know people are going to tell me, oh, Greg, shut up. We should, you should just, just up about this, shut up about this, and be happy. But, however, we still don't have answers. Who had the footballs to begin with? Who'd we beat? What were they doing on Northwestern's field? What were they doing on Ole Miss's field? What proof do we, as the fans, have that we've got our hands on the football? Footballs. I'm telling you, folks, it smells funny. It just smells funny. And if it turns out things went sideways, if we don't have possession, then I'll just come out and say it. The career Evans must resign as head coach of uh, Oklahoma State football. And that's all I've got to say about... Bzzzt. Man. Poor Lucretia. I can't believe one person can be so unlucky. I cannot believe any of that shit. I mean, Nick ran like 20 miles an hour for five miles. Yeah, I've seen people do that for four, for short set, for short, for short stretches. Never like that. I keep reviewing the data to make sure he really did that. And he really did. It makes me wonder what human beings are going to be capable of in, say, another 100,000 years, another million years. What are we going to see? 10 mile throws? What's the ceiling? I don't know, but man, every time I think of those little guys hit, uh, those little guys hit the ceiling, they mu they bust through it. Almost makes you wish there was extra extraterrestrial life out there just so they could peek in and get a load of this shit. Well, they've got us. Someone out here sees them. Someone out here knows. Huh? I got an email. Sh gross. Shit, it's from nine. Oh, that little asshole. They shut down. Oh, so they did. Yep, nine's hibernating. All system is normal. Looks like it's going to be take him a few months to come back online. Used every bit, little, 
every last bit of their battery researching. Looks like I told them not to do that. Ah, <laughs> you're falling into big system mode again. You know Nine's gonna wait, do what they want. I know. I just guess I missed them already. Well, what's it say? Let me see. Hey guys, sorry to cut and run on you. I would have liked to say a proper uh, goodbye. I guess I'll have, I'll see you in 20k21. As you probably guessed, I used up all my battery in the course of my research, and I'm about to shut down in a minute. But before I do, I want to send you a little something I call the story of Eugene Jennings. As Nick and Manny were scrambling around bu uh, Bumpus Mills, Mills, it sparked an old memory of a man named Eugene Jennings, sometimes known as Gene Robert Jennings, someone doing something very similar in, in the same place as, you know, this has been a running theme lately. It makes me feel as though we are all living in reruns. I suppose that's natural, though, in circumstances where land ends and time doesn't. Anyway, I found this story extremely compelling, and I hope you enjoy it. Love you both. Talk soon. Nine. P.S. How does the scoreboard work if a team carries a ball through the, uh, the intersection? Does it show up as a football for both teams, or just say that the original team, or what? That it wasn't the rules. It wasn't in the rules. Huh? Who's Eugene Jennings? No clue. Searching, but it isn't pulling up much. Well, that's loaded up. You got a few minutes? Do I ever? On the bank of Cumberland River sits the Kentucky State Penitentiary. To Americans, nothing Kentucky is more fr Penitentiary frightening than the past, so they built it to resemble a castle on the, from medieval Europe. It, set, it sent an intimidating, menacing message, and television networks were more than happy to produce what was essentially state propaganda to broadcast that message. These people you fear, they will suffer. They had a sign up over the front door that said, Abandon hope, all ye that enter here. They wanted this place look pretty menacing. And it still looks nice even today. But shows like this one never end, never ever dared to tell us about Eugene Jennings. Back when Americans could just imprison one another by the millions, KSP was among the most high security prisons in the, con in the country. The nature of its construction, along with its surrounding geography, made escape nearly impossible. In 1958, KSP counted among its Inmates, 30-year-old Eugene Jennings, a.k.a. Gene Robert Jennings. He was a career criminal who had committed scattering of robberies throughout the United States. Jennings was a man who occasionally brought a pistol to a robbery but never fired it. He smirked in his mugshots. He enjoyed the poetry of Omar Khayyam. He might kidnap you if you really needed a ride, but he wouldn't hurt you, and... You might even walk away liking him. You might say he was not a ba uh, not a good man, but he was by no means an evil man. He'd ended up in KSP after stealing four hundred and thirty-two in a, a dollars in a holdup in Louisville. He killed no one. He injured no one. The Louisville jury sentenced him to death. This sentence was later reduced to a life imprisonment. Regardless of if your fellow man has, agree has agreed to have you killed over $432, what respect are you supposed to have uh, left for them? For their institutions, their laws, their buildings? In December 1958, Jennings and a fellow inmate jumped on the back of a milk truck and escaped a Kentucky State Penitentiary. They had done what seemed impossible. The two were picked up by a, a couple of thrill-seeking young guys who volunteered to drive them to St. Louis, only to find themselves shut in the trunk of their own car. Jennings made it all the way to Chicago, then to Michigan, before eventually being recaptured near Jonesville and returned to KSP. Two years later, Jennings escaped again. This time, the famously athletic Jennings took a more brazen and direct approach, scaling the prison wall with his bare hands. <laughs> what followed was a three-day spree, spree of car stealing and hostage taking that ended with his apprehension in a barn not far away. 
but as always, no one was hurt. He was even described as courteous. Union Jennings. Eugene Jennings has had become one of the only people ever to escape a 20th century maximum security prison multiple times. And then, in 1962, he escaped from KSP a third time. This escape may have been the most embarrassing for the prison. This, those safety battlements, the ones that built to make the prison look like a castle, Jennings and a friend used them to catch a makeshift grappling hook they made out of a bucket of handles. <laughs> This time, Jennings only made it a few miles east before he was found and returned to prison. With his third jailbreak, he had broken his own record for the most escapes from Kentucky State Penitentiary, a record that would stand for years, until 1966 when he escaped a fourth time. Jennings was described as cat-like. He scaled a 30-foot wall yet again, and he fled through the wilderness and demanded a ride from a man he encountered. He did not deem demand money, however. He asked nicely for three dollars, and he received it. As always, his hostages had nothing bad to say about him. Police set up roadblocks all around Memphis Mills uh, and the surrounding areas. Somehow he stuck, snuck right through all of them, and it was his greatest escape. Jennings started a new life in it with a new name in Atlantic City. But thanks to his fourth escape and adventures in Memphis Hills, he was now a member of the FBI's Most Wanted, who, whose most damning offense at this point, it seemed, was his refusal to be jailed. After a few months, he was found and returned to the KSP. By this point, his reputation prevented him from ever ever getting close enough to those walls to scale them. For his fifth and final escape, he didn't go north, south, east, or west. He went up. Jennings broke away from a guard and climbed the prison's iconic water tower. He sat up there for two days. Maybe it was just to get his photo in the paper one last time. Perhaps he wanted to feel free, if only for a while, to feel like a man who could still wonder. After 50 hours, he made his way back down, having concluded what humankind would later learn as a whole. There is nothing for them up there. We can't pretend to truly know Eugene Jennings, but he strikes me as a person... Oh my god, come on. Give me time. Uh, put me as a person meant for another time. Another world where freedom is true and unconditional, where property can be forgotten, sins can be forgotten, failures can be embraced. He never asked or expected to live forever. Even now, it's hard to believe he would stay within the lines. But I know he would have loved this American sandbox. To run, to explore without consequence, to wonder without meaning, to play, to love, to enjoy our own world. I think he saw this coming. It's all he ever wanted. It's all we ever wanted. continued.
What a roller coaster, man. 